Christina, you need to unmute. Yes, that will be helpful. Um, okay, five minutes, and I don't know if I'm counting, so I don't know. Can we see the timing? Um, Mas Ari. He, Mas Ari will keep will keep time, and he will I just okay. he will just he will just yell at you when it's time for you to finish. Wonderful, thank you. <laughs> no, right. um, let's go, let's go. Um, my name is Christina. I'm a PhD candidate um, for peace and conflict resolution at Science University in Malaysia. My background is in international business and international relations. Before I start the presentation, I'd like to say thank you to ICTP for granting us the opportunity to broaden our thinking process and also to thank all my dear colleagues for being so enthusiastic and the diversity of all the languages of the ICCTP August 2021 is represented there with all the um, um, oh, piece translated in all the different languages. If I have missed anyone, I humbly apologize. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, sorry. My um, uh, five minutes is very, uh, oh, very fast. The title of my presentation is Constructing Universal Humanism. And the best way to start talking about humanism, next slide, please, is um, a it through, next slide, please. So, um, um, there is a song. There is, um, is I would like you to see it on the dove. The dove is the symbol of peace according to um, Christianity and Judaism. Um, and you can see here why the dove came back to the Ark of Noah after the dilute. Um, but the sound of that dove in that song tells us how sad the song is, uh, how sad the pigeon, the dove, is because when he cries, the sky trembles. Tells that it is the peace of the state that is the country of confusion when he talks about the harmony triadic composed by three factors, heaven, humanity, and earth. Earth meaning nature. Next slide, please. So, when, next slide, please. Please, next slide. Hey, on internet sometimes. All right, okay. So, um, so when we talk about nature, there is um, a, a buzzing word now called Anthropocene. Anthropocene is the, is the current geological age in which uh, it is believed that the human activity has been the dominant, dominant influence on climate and environment. And according to um, current um, scholars, um, they say that human imprint on the global environment has now become so large and active that it rivals the very great forces of nature. We have to remember that nature is not just an environment, it's part of all of us. Uh, next slide, please. So how do we connect with nature? Perhaps through education. But um, with education, we have seen that uh, Conventional wisdom tells us the universal uh, structure is being industrialized. It started uh, in the Industrial Revolution 300 years ago, and it was to teach the workforce in the factories to be more productive, to be more profitable. 300 years later, we still continue um, educating our people in that structural industrial system. However, when we see the unconventional system with the aboriginals, the origin is not 300 years, is the origin of our humanity. The structure is truly connected with nature. We see here in us from the ICCTP group 2021, teaching the children out in the open, connecting with nature. When we connect with nature, we inculcate ourselves real peace. 
I myself, I did an experiment with children. I took them out sailing and where we were sailing. It was our survival to understand mathematics, astrology, medicine, and humanity. So next slide, please. So this is like a marathon, five minutes. Uh, on the next slide, we will see that when we talk about cultures of peace, that is how we are told that we connect with nature. But according to Oliver Richmond, one of our current scholars says, the concept of peace is often dismissed as binary concept, uh, where there is an absolute division between peace and war, and, abs and also dismisses the uh, harmony and calls it the Ethiopian harmony, is an Ethiopia, um, utopia, sorry. Um, so what is the new discourse that I would like to uh, suggest? I'd like to suggest a new discourse is starting with Mahama Gandhi's statement, peace to be real must be unaffected by outside circumstances. Next slide, please. So um, during the course, uh, we have learned that, um, hello, next slide, um, different approaches. I would like to take a holistic approach because the more we relate violence, the more we legitimate is ontology. We talk about pro protective conflicts, conflict resolution, conflict transformation, later access, conflict is the engine of change. But Alpha de la Topia, our ICCTP August 21 member says, um, to Lederach, engines break, love drives change. Again, peace psychology uh, deals with case by case quenching fires. Even Galton talks about positive and negative peace. And when he talks about transformation and transforming conflict through uh, this um, creatively, creatively, it talks about development. And we've learned to be very careful with that word. So what do I propose? I propose to harmonize. And harmonizing when you are with nature is about fertilizing the ground. So then harmony becomes deep and deep means generating the process that is opposed to conformity and superficial stability. And I'm quoting uh, Eastern philosophers. Next approach, next approach, next slide, please. Um, just two seconds. Oof. How do we do that? Well, we have learned through Pac Alberto Gomez from ICCTP or is 2021 uh, to take a peace ecology approach, leave behind social economic developments, political developments, also take, also I would like to ask that moral pragmatic approach using the Eastern philosophies um, in Korea this time. And also with Pac Alberto, we have learned that um, uh, the Samaritan cultures make fun of violence, and that is what we should be doing rather than keep talking about violence. On the next slide, please. So, just two seconds, but on the next slide, um, how do we approach deep harmony, uh, or how do we get um, on the road to universal humanism? Is towards is using deep harmony, and you will see here. I have lived in these places, Middle East, these are the circles of harmony. Um, the moon, the sun, look at Africa, look at the animals, look at Asia, look at Malaysia, the sun, the moon. Um, again, I refer to India and obviously uh, the Indians in, in America. So for me, peace circles, the ultimate goal of peace circles was to communicate in order to have a better understanding. But the, we know that understanding this misses personal, regional, and state interest. Next slide, please. This is my last slide, sorry. Um, deep harmony is what I will be writing about on my paper. I will be contesting Western ideology and, and driving towards real peace with deep harmony. Thank you very much. Next slide, please, is the last one. I just would like to say thank you. <laughs> thank you, Christina. Ole. Oh, <laughs> okay. Congratulations, Christina, for the presentation. So uh, we can move to the second presenter. Is that fine? Dr. Lydia. Yeah, uh, can I start sharing my screen, please? Yeah. 
can you can you share screen um yeah i hope is this visible yeah wait uh, let me put it on slide show mode wait, wait. yes i can see that all right all right okay um, Start everyone. um i have started with peace building uh, and media my topic uh, relates to what uh, we had in joanne's uh, session since I belong to the field of journalism and also into the education of mass communication journalism. And I see media as a platform which can bring about change in the society if used wisely. It can, uh, why I say so, because it can also turn to a Frankenstein. Um, we have seen in India, we have seen in other parts of the world, especially with the democracy, uh, as we call it, social media. Although we celebrate social media as democratization of information and participation, but uh, what I have seen is that uh, it can also be a harbinger of change in the society, uh, but if we have right controls at the right place. So let me start with what is peace. Peace is not merely an absence of war, as quoted by uh, Shaw. Um, I would say peace is, as uh, Christina also said, and others also said, peace is one, the society is at harmony. Peace does not mean that you just have uh, no wars, but there should be rest in the civil society. People should be satisfied, happy, and they should have opportunities and uh, spirituality, mind, body, soul, at whatever they're doing. So peace is about harmony in every sense. And this can be disrupted well by media and um, you know, warranted information and the uncredible information which can lead to the dis disruption of peace in the society. Okay, what is peace building? Here I like to quote, efforts to build and sustain peace are necessary not only uh, has broken out but all long beforehand, preventing conflict and resisting to its root cause. We must work to better together across the piece, focusing the dimension of the conflicts. Uh, I'm quoting UN Secretary General Antonio, who said this in one of his speeches in 2019, and I really liked it, that it is the efforts which reflects peace building. And the solutions or resolutions towards peace building should be in togetherness of countering every dimension of conflict from the very root cause, from where the source, the information has come. And if we do that, that is the real process of peace building. I'm sorry, the internet is taking time. Now what we have to do and what we have learned for this course is and we need to understand peace within the social struggles. And we would be able to do it only if we go to the local people and we learn what is their needs requirement, what peace means to them. We cannot have a universal definition of peace and just force it on to them. It is the way they want to see the life. And now this, uh, with the new media, new digital era, this 
whole new generation of social and virtual life has opened up, especially since this pandemic. Now we have our public spheres, our digital platform, social media and networks, not only our social gathering, physical meetings. So we have to take them into account. We cannot ignore them. We may love or hate them, but we have to take them in account whenever we are thinking about peace building processes. Because even if we tend to ignore them, we choose not to include them, they would be disrupting the society in their own way if we do not take them into account and make them credible. And media is haunting us all the time. You know, as uh, UN uh, General Secretary also said, it's not pandemic, it's infodemic. That misinformation, the fake news, uh, the various uh, versions of everything are coming. As Joanne also said, I'd like to quote her, that uh, by the time the truth comes to us, we start disbelieving it. So many versions have already come through media and we lose uh, as track of it what is credible, what is right, what is wrong, because we have started we already had so much information that we are confused. It's like an information overload. We are lost in this information pandemic. So media needs to understand where they need to put a limit on information sharing and how they would make it. Uh, they should not run for the news. They should not run for the information every time. And it's time that we should rethink public sphere. As I said, that new virtual spaces have opened up and we need to understand that we, whenever we are thinking about peace, conflict, transformation, we are thinking about anything in the society towards peace building, these digital spheres have to be taken into account. Public spheres, as we conventionally define them, were the spaces where social actors, group, people would deliberate about their common efforts. But this news media has maintained something new. I like to quote here an example how social media created a havoc in 2013 in India. There's a city in Uttar Pradesh, one of the states, uh, Muzaffar Nagar, where uh, the communal rights broke out only because of social media misinformation and fake videos were shared and two societies, which is uh, two communities, Hindu and Muslim, uh, started having violent uh, clashes and it turned out into a big riot only because there was unresponsible sharing on social media. So as I said that this is the Frankenstein which is, uh, started dancing in the society, it's time we need to control it. And we can uh, use, we can redefine these challenges and the conflict divisions and we can rather uh, you know, use this Frankenstein as a tool to uh, bring change in the society, harmonize the society, bring peace in the society. Only thing is we need to redefine, contextualize, and transfer the conflict to other issues. Media and the conflict transformation. Media, uh, I would say, as I have analyzed, has reached to people. It can um, you know, democratize, uh, democratize the information, it can reach to the masses, it can bring uh, a bridge between the policy makers and the people. But we need to, as I also go for the holistic approach, as Christina has said, a holistic approach to media interventions. My approach here would be that we need to have a complete approach. We cannot see that in isolation. So that, that is what my take here would be. Then what is uh, what are the strengths of media as a tool of peace building? Reach and impact, it has great reach. It uh, can bring uh, things into the houses of the people, mind of the people within seconds. You know, the Me Too, the big campaigns world over. Weaknesses, it can be misused and it is biased at times. You know, the power of the media can be misused. And threats are uh, the fake news, the information overload, uh, you know, unresponsible sharing is there. 
And the opportunity, as I said, is democratization of information. And now we are not at the receiving end. If a newspaper is printing, we can react on social media instantly. We as people, uh, masses and information consumers, we have now power to react and ourselves share our reactions or our information on social media but we need to think over it. Media needs to rework the professional issues, ethics and sanctions, address, of, uh, address forms of ethnic and communal censorship, economic, political interest and ownership. Here I would like to say that uh, media knows that they have the power, but uh, they have to weigh in their ethics whether the ethics are more important or uh, their own biases are more important. This is an interesting cartoon which I found on Indian media. The, if you can see it clearly, I hope that the pen, which is representing the media, is being put in by money, uh, you know, is controlled by the money that is, uh, you know, paid media that we have to uh, sort of do away with such unethical practices in media if we really want to use it as a tool of conflict uh, transformation and peace building. Uh, uh, these... Excuse me, Dr. Nidhi, it's more than five minutes. Okay, just I'll uh, conclude. These are the rules that uh, media can do. Uh, not only it can define and bring up the issues of conflicts, it should encourage, analyze, it should uh, give confidence building, it should communicate with the party is, and it should bridge the gaps. I'll just conclude, this is the road, road maps media should take in future to use it as a tool of conflict transformation and peace building. These are some of the references I'll uh, Thank you. If you have any questions, I'm open to them. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Thank Lee, you. so much for your uh, share, uh, you know, experience and comments and uh, yeah, regarding the media and peace. Okay. So, Sal, we're going to continue to the next presenter. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Neha, time is yours. Is Dr. Neha around? I can see from the participant list, Dr. Neha. Okay. Should we skip for the next uh, presenter? Yes, I think we we'll just go on, uh, okay. Mas Masari. Okay, the next kind of uh, kainat Saif, sorry. I uh, guess I am here. Yeah. Can you start? Uh, can you share screen? Okay, so I'll let you know when one one minutes left. Yeah, just so that you can just make. Quick. Okay, so everyone can see my screen, right? Yes, yes. perfect. Okay. So, Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is Kaina Atsaf and I am from Pakistan. So, my key learnings from, uh, I am actually presenting my paper because I wasn't able to make a PPT because, my, uh, because of my ongoing exams. But I will try to convey my key lessons. So, um, after going through this course, I was able to analyze the situations, situations of peace and everything defined in this uh, course, uh, you know, I was able to analyze how the peace situation and how the instruments that have been described, such as negotiations, um, non-violent communication is working in Pakistan, in my home country, and in our neighboring countries, as well as in different countries. So um, from peace and its types, I believe that 
the positive piece and negative piece in pakistan the negative piece we uh, emphasize on negative piece more rather than positive piece so inclusion here in uh, here at home is um, not something which uh, which is considered uh, while making pol uh, while making policies and while making laws while you know while uh, while doing the state machinery work so that's why in pakistan the peace situation is not very much better not as it should be and about restorative uh, restorative justice system and peace circle i think the peace uh, the concept of peace circle was very new for me and i i totally subscribe to this idea that when you uh, sit in a peace circle have a deep heart to heart conversation and um, i i think that way one person individual or community is able to uh, get access to peace in 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 a in a cheaper way and restorative justice system is um should be int uh, introduced at larger level because when the proceedings like uh, between the victim and criminals with the representative of wider communities uh, this this ensures peace and conflict transformation to talk about conflict transformation i think that the conflict habituated system that is converted into peace system all the things required for uh, for the conflict tra uh, transformation is something that i will be going to talk about next okay so a uh, relationship between peace and development for me is directly proportional to each other so for example if you talk about peace when there is development there is peace when there is no peace there is no development uh, as in uh, in developed countries we we see that they restore peace and in un, uh, in undeveloped or develop uh, developing countries uh, the absence of peace lacks development and uh, obviously the role of um, community based organizations uh ngos and public private partnership is uh, very much important to uh, fill this gap okay now um i am talking about all the instruments that can be used to um to have a peaceful society and to have a uh, and to conflict uh, management you may say and conflict resolution conflict transformation um that that all word uh, words are synonyms to each other and uh, importance of dialogue is the first one i think that my uh, in my very personal opinion that dialogue can resolve so many things um in pakistan or in urdu we say baat karne se baat banti hai which literally means that when you start talking you are able to uh, you are able to have better deals and you can not you know you are not ballooning the uh, conflict and you are uh, you are able to find some solution now we have uh, another mechanism which we call as non violent communication and there are four major components of uh, non violent communication the first one is observation the second is feelings the third is needs and the last one is request Sorry, so this that one minute left okay okay okay, okay. now i will talk about peace ecology and indigenous indigenous community indigenous community plays an important role to restore peace ecology and psychology of peace is something that is a uh, psychology and as well as uh, um, sociology of a uh, social uh, social nature of uh, peace restoration strategic building okay uh, empathy love and com uh, compassion they they all are directly linked to peace because they um, when you have all of these components you are in better position to um, to to talk about peace strategic building is a constructive and productive personal group political relationships across religious class ethnic national and racial spaces and is uh, and the goal and the goal is to resolve injustice in in, uh, in non violent ways now i will talk about media and peace building media plays an important role uh, but media can also play a count play a counterproductive role for example when media is biased it is um, it is 
you know instigating uh, violence in the society in the youth and that is uh, that is very much, that has a larger impact and long standing impact for example in pakistan we have newspapers the one is talking about like one is talking in favor of government the other is talking against the government so these these things impact uh, the audience the readers very much and thank you i am done if you have any question please let me know well done thank Ma you <laughs> Okay, so we'll continue to the next uh, presenter, Sarah. Yes. Yeah. Welcome to the ECCTP Peace Circle. Please close your eyes and take a deep breath. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. We are here to give ourselves and others a voice to begin a restorative, transformative dialogue. Please take a piece of paper to, to write down your reflections. The reflection will be for you, but this is a space of connection. We are all one. We are human beings. Please close your eyes and take a deep breath. We will start by thanking each of us for making this possible. Thank you. You all for being here. Thank you for trust with me. Thank you for believing in this possible and real peace. In the next few minutes, we will try to answer some questions. The first one is, who are we? It is very easy to define ourselves by the names on our identity card, but I'm Sarah, but I'm a really touch or, or I'm something more than letters. To learn who we are, we must deconstruct ourselves, deconstruct the paradigms that classify us since our birth, the inherited culture and society. It is about deconstruct our minds, questioning whether whatever the way we relate to each other is an imposition, prejudice, or a, or a deshumanization of the others. I'm European. What does that mean? Do I have to accept European culture just because I was born on that con continent? No, we are human. We have the capacity to think and change. Questioning our context, it is the first step. Reflecting on how we contribute to, per to perpetuate inequalities and how we build our own space, open space for dialogue and acceptance where the concept of racism or development do not exist as a way of perpetuating violence, but create a space where regenerate our individual and collective identities, where the world resilience co-create and improve our words that define us better than our names or, or colonizing and or colonized culture. After learning how to de de define and re recognize ourselves, we could do the same with our context. What is your community like? Your community can be your immediate family, your neighbors, people with the same religious ideas or hobbies as you, or your ancestors. In short, someone with whom you identity, identify as an equal. The way we related to others is built from education where reconstructive empowering approach is important. This way of learning promotes the decolonization and redefinition of our values. To get closer to these objectives, social media are a tool for, reject, re, for projecting new realities, more participatory, inclusive, and peace promoting thought, the organization of civil society, and the visibility of the difference ways to making pieces, but our relationships are not limited to humans. We also related to, to nature. I would like us, uh, us all to sincerely apologize to nature for the damage we caused it, for belief we are better than the nature and not part of it. So excuse me, Pachamama, thank you, nature, for everything you give you give us. Now, 
that now that we are aware of the necessity for equal recognition, recon, recognition and peace, we must think about how we can transform conflicts. Conflicts are an opportunity to build peaceful realities. To transform them without violence, it is essential to empower the local people because they are the ones who know the conflict and the society. The locals through non-violent communication can find a space of dialogue where empathy defines the way we relate to each other in community based on love and equal regeneration. In this new reality, the world peace could be people, environment, acceptance, communication, and evolution collectively towards a peaceful harmony. Breathe in and down. Thank you for your active listening. Thank you for, your, for sharing your time with me. Well done, Sarah. <laughs> Okay. Muy bien, Sara. Muy bien. Okay, we go to the next uh, presenter, Katarina. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. I hope you are all doing well. Uh, so, uh, everyone is seeking peace. And maybe is a common sense affirmation, this one. Uh, but uh, although we come from different cultures, we have different ages or speak different languages as human beings, the idea of, peaceful, of a peaceful reality continues being present. That doesn't mean though that peace means the same thing for everyone or that's why peace cannot be imposed uh, because there is not just one definition. Actually, it's exactly the, the opposite in the sense that each person perceives conflicts, violence, and insecurity in diverse ways or levels. Therefore, is it conflict always negative or as Lederach defines, are normal in human relationships and model of change? And also, is peace an achievable value? Is it a goal or is the own path? And finally, is real peace uh, build outside of us on the social level or actually is a more profound process that of course first inside the inner, inner self. Although uh, as academics and practitioners we get used to think and construct arguments about ideas, it becomes more difficult when it comes to the topic of peace building and conflict transformation. The central characteristic of this area is exactly the fact that while a person studies or works with peace, it is also necessary to experience uh, on the personal life. These steps are in fact the most difficult because it is about changing in a profound way some maybe violent lenses that we, are, we all use sometimes to be able to actuate with peace uh, at any level or uh, any uh, work. So those were some of the first reflections I made while I was participating on the ICCTP course, uh, specifically uh, on the, during the peacemaking circles and uh, made sense through all lessons during the two weeks. In the end, it's about connecting with our own feelings, ideas, values, understanding, so we can connect to the other, listen to the realities and build a relationship. At the same time, there is another idea that came out for me, for me during the talks. And that's about the fact that the separation we make between me and you or us and them, they are not real. Uh, the connection between individuals, groups, and with the nature around us, it's constant and actually necessary. Somehow peace cannot be built just in an individual way because it's always about exchanging and uh, living together. It calls for our sense of family, tribe, community, and reunion, which is essential for every human being. In this dynamic of relationships emerges a central value, which is humility, 
in order to actually listen to the others. The prerogative that everyone has something to say and an important point of view help, helps exactly to understand why all solutions are always a red inside the, uh, the local community where conflict happens. Maybe sometimes the ability to make peace needs to be cultivated as small seeds, but the potential is there, it exists. So to conclude, I would like to bring a last aspect. So looking at, the, at my politics of location, which per se it's already a decolonial way of looking at this topic, which I really liked when uh, it was presented in one of the uh, lessons. Um, my politics of location means that I'm situated in Brazil on a city on the countryside in the Northeast, which has always been a very excluded part of the country and which has suffered uh, and still suffers actually with a structural violence and a lack of presence from the, the central government. So my way of looking at the world was also, or comes also from the fact that I was raised just by, by, by my mom, since my father was not around and also as the only child. Uh, and uh, also my, my way of, of looking at the world was shaped by the schools I studied, by my friends, and after by the international relations course with the practical experiences inside poor communities uh, where I try to work and in order to reduce violence on the scholar environment. Sorry, uh, Sarah, it's one minute left. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, so what's necessary to realize, uh, and I'm just finishing, is that we continue to be humans with all our history, all our uh, lives, understandings, mind, body, soul, and feelings. And this needs to be taken in account when we act or when we are in the midst, in the midst of a conflict. And thank you so much, you all, for all these amazing days and all the exchanges. And it was amazing, uh, a great experience, and I'm really grateful for each one of you. Thank you for the presentation, Katarina. Okay, well done for it. Uh, we're going to continue to the next presenter, Conception. Concept Conception, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Conception. Conception, <laughs> Naomi, yeah. Gracias, Naomi. Sorry. <laughs> Gracias. Gracias. I try to present. Mm. Yeah. Can you see the presentation? Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is uh, Concepcion Amin Martinez Real. Um, I work in the University of the State of Mexico in the center of Mexico. I'm a teacher in high school. I work, I work with, with teenagers. I love it. I love them. And I remember uh, very much the words of Vicente Martinez Guzman. When I studied the master in the UHI, our dear doctor led us the task of investigating the different ways of building peace in our cultures and write about it. I'm doing that in his lovely memory. I want uh, to introduce you uh, to the topic conflict, conflict transformation and peace building in Mexico, the case of original groups in Chiapas. Uh, Mexico is a multicultural nation with 66 indigenous groups, all of them with a rich culture. I want to talk about the case of Tocolavales, Etzales, Otziles. Uh, they live in the south or 
of my country. The Toholabad culture has uh, the conflict prevention inside the education system. Uh, their world view allows them to conceive all human beings like part of the humanity and subsequently they, we are brothers and sisters. This is an example of mutual respect. The culture of peace in the indigenous people in Mexico is um, very clear to me. In fact, they origina originally have a culture of peace, as we can see in the following characteristics. They respect nature and name her mother nature and all their actions to obtain some resource from nature are preceded, preceded by a ceremony for which they ask permission. The language, Tohulaval, includes a strong sense of democratic relationships. For example, when they have a problem inside a community, they say, we will talk. This includes peace ability, the knowledge and common practice of dialogue between they and the existence of horizontal relationships manifest in the existence of the General Assembly made up all the members of the community. General Assembly is the social and political structure that allows them to organize the community life and discuss about community issues to find solutions to them together, including men and women. In this structure, we can identify general equality and elicitive method, methods of conflict transformation like Paul Lederach uh, present to us. Philosophy of life of the Tohola Valles uh, is very rich. They say, everything for everyone, nothing for us. This way of thinking show us empathy, altruism, and reciprocity, because they not only think about what they need, but what other people need, and at the same time, they recognize their human rights and defend them. The philosophy of life of Toholabad Tohola Valles is issue of investigating of very important uh, social scientific. So sorry, the time is one minute left. Okay, thank you. The conflict in Chiapas is a very extensive topic and I don't have time to present in detail. Um, I want to talk about the process of peace building. They handed down their weapons peace dialogues, and creation of autonomous communities called caracoles. Um, I, um, I know uh, I have to work more in the reflective part and in my final paper, I will do. Thank you. Thank you, Concepcion. Well done for this presentation. So enjoyable. Thank you. So, we going to the next presenter, Irang Bam. Yeah, Manoj. Yeah, Manoj. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good morning from India and also good morning from Manipur. Likely, before coming to the presentation, I likely to thank and make the good warm gratitude to all organizers. This network and ICCTP and volunteers that that guide us the whole ten days this for this online course on the peace building and the conflict transformation. So it is a great pleasure for me, actually, and uh, it is a first time online course for me um, that uh, first time international online course. Uh, actually, unfortunately, this course is uh, colliding with my university exam right now, master uh, PG exam. 
right now so they uh, it is very hard to me to um, to make the uh, program very successful one but uh, i am very glad to learn a lot of lessons and a lot of part from the uh, different resource persons that uh, have been guide us actually uh, yes coming to the presentation uh, actually i have to present my own views from for the course and the anything um, that i have learned from this part but uh, all the detailed part that i have learned throughout the 10 days uh, will be reflect to my reflective paper uh, and uh, actually uh, i i am as uh, i i am a learner i am a student right now so actually i am very junior to every one of these participants so there i am learner and i student also as a youth also i learned uh, many perspective many perspective or many innovative one that that had been uh, that have been differentiate me to differentiate me in different ways so um, also i had to thank to all the resource persons yeah to align us in a better way to bring our uh, to bring our society or to bring our world a uh, peaceful way and, uh, and to learn about this uh, different part of a conflict that have been uh, that have been uh, that they have been arise in different parts of the different corners of the country so also uh, and also uh, thank to all the colleagues and friends and the senior ones that discussed throughout the break rooms and the breakout rooms and discussed about the different perspectives that are given by the resource person so i have learned many things which explores a range of form approach to country and peace building to eliminate and the potential of violent conflict so it fo it focuses on the for uh, fostering dialogue and empathic relationships and exploring uh, nonviolent means of communication and engagement and interaction between us discussing on cases of the violence discussing on cases of inequality poverty racism discrimination oppression so this course enhanced me uh, more knowledge and understanding on country transformation dialogue and the debate and discussion between us and different part of the country also i have learned uh, many about this how to we make a peace how to we build a peace and how to uh, we elaborate it throughout the uh, society or throughout the country or throughout my uh, school level or uh, university level or society level so as a youth participant as a youth coordinator of my organization so i likely to uh, say you know innovate i i i likely to learn this part to enhance my uh, my knowledge that having that having got from this course to my junior one from a grassroots level to school level college level and university level as well so how to bring this one how to make a chain to bring a peaceful society between us right now so in this conflict time we have been learn about this uh, peace building one uh, through the we have been uh, so elaborated through in education also uh, through media also and the communication between us by sharing i ideas between everyone so we have a learn we have a chance to uh, elaborate as we have been um, say we have been uh, uh, conduct in uh, in, uh, in this uh, platform in the zoom platform also we have been sharing lots of knowledge between us so uh, also i have learned many various ways and effective strategies in conflict transformation and fostering my uh in peace and social justice also it can change uh, it can change in our communities also positively by elaborating to grassroots levels and school levels college level and university levels also as a uh, as youth i have to do uh, i have to do any action toward this one toward this achievable one uh, through this uh, act of uh, uh say like kindness compassion and uh, empathy uh, throughout the towards the youth and uh, there will be a impact of uh, youth through throughout the uh, country or throughout the society sorry so one minute the, left one minute yeah sure sure yes thank you and uh, also uh, so to spread this impact of youth throughout the sector and generations so to build the act of kindness uh, we have to have a mutual coexistence between us mutual respect between individuals and come together achieve to achieve peace so lastly as youth i think there is a solution uh, in bringing up peace by innovating nonviolent communication through dialogue 
debate and discussion. Thank you for giving me a presentation of five minutes. That's great to all organizers and have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, Manoj, for the presentation. Okay. So we're moving to the next uh, presenter. Alejandra? Hermana? Hey. <laughs> Hermano, gracias. <laughs> so you can see my my screen. Yes. Okay. Um. So I'm going to write about the ethics of care and COVID nineteen. This um, this reflection started. Um, this this uh, thinking started when when um, Dr. Micheles asked us. How has the world changed since the arrival of the coronavirus or SARS-CoV pandemics? After a year and a half, what has the pandemics left behind? So trying to recover all what we have been learning for this uh, two wonderful weeks and trying to, to uh, sense uh, what the courses has left in me, I changed the, the questions. So what I want to explore is how we can transform this conflict and help reduce the implicit violent potential of this unprecedented global virus. Can we humans, in spite of everything, use this pandemic to help building peace? The coronavirus uh, pandemics have, has highlighted numerous problems in our society, exposing, I'm sorry, exposing human fragility. Of course, death, grief, loss, and misunderstanding at all levels of society, economic crisis, increasing levels of poverty and malnutrition worldwide, health crisis, social crisis, political crisis, ecological degradation, sorrow. Of course, the world is temporarily closed. Racism and xenophobia, exclusion, hatred, intolerance, distrust, it has evidenced the deterioration of society, increasing the defensive left of the marginalized and social injustice, inequities among the most vulnerable, and increasing structural violence. Uh, we have seen poor hospitals and the global inability of a health system to manage and control the pandemics, shortage of medicines, respiratory devices, unavailable beds, structural violences, as Galton points it away. Um, depression, anguish, unequal power relationships between the South and the North, evidence in disparate vaccination processes worldwide. And most importantly, the loss of the other, the other one, the hugs, the caresses, encounters with family and friends are still prohibited. Contact with others became synonymous of terror for fear of contagion. Even funerals are banned. We're seeing a dehumanization process. We have become modern Antigone because we cannot bury our dead. Uh, we have to resign ourselves. We have to uh, accept humbly that that small box of ashes belongs to uh, our dead loved. And we have denied the, the, um, the right to give uh, an good grief and uh, um, mass for our, our dead beloved, or to be buried in the anonymous uh, tombs and graves. So the humanization process uh, is what we are seeing with uh, this uh, pandemics and coronavirus. And yet there are reasons to believe in humanity. COVID-19 has shown the underlying structural causes of violence. It has developed creative capacities in the face of the conflict. It has generated new scientific knowledge. Uh, the vaccines have been um, proposed in record times. Education and awareness, common learnings from pandemic crisis with all learning from each other, from community, uh, from communities and from the crisis. Generosity, of course, dialogue. Strengthening empathic relationship greater commitment and solidarity with the others, nonviolent interaction process, family time at home, precious family time at home, caring for the others, and of course, peace. 
So I want to make the relation between the ethics of care and um, COVID-19. Um, the ethics of care is, is um, a proposal from philosophy of peace from Irene Cummings, who talks about a relational ethic where what matters more than duty is a relationship with people, considers that rationality must be mixed with emotions. It focuses on direct and almost personal involvement and commitment with others. The ethics of care, uh, a knowledge that the needs of the most vulnerable people requires a sui generis approach, one who claims for our own social representation results from the relationship with the others. It invites us to recognize the fragility and vulnerability of others. It combines the well-being of human beings and nature. The ethics of care exalts empathy with those migrants, refugees, foreigners, poor, different, alien to our culture, the other ones that we reject all the time. Sorry, it proposes, it's one minute left. It proposes listeners, compassion, indignation in face of suffering. The ethic of cares rescue the importance of emotion, no matter the gender. It exalts relationship as a source of construction of our identity. So I believe that tenderness, kindness, compassion, collaboration, resilience, empathy, caring is a political act. And it finally is what makes very deeply human. And I believe that humility and generosity, finally love, is uh, what we need to change and transform this conflict and uh, to be what we were before, what we still are, human beings. Well, that's a, a picture of me of my family, which uh, is very important in this um, sorrow condition of uh, COVID-19. So thank you very much. I, I, I've been very grateful for um, sharing with all you know, these people from all these nationalities and uh, knowing to each other and hoping we can hug each other sometime. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alejandra. So we're going to the next presenter, uh, Abdullahi. Yeah, ready. Yeah. Time's yours. Okay, sorry. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, I think it's working. So, and sometimes I, I feel, yeah, I feel some problem with my connection on my computer. So, I think my screen is working. Yeah, my name is uh, Abdullahi Ali Adam, uh, and I am from Somalia. Uh, just uh, I live in Malaysia. I am doing my master's degree in uh, in sustainable development practice. Uh, so, can you? I think you can see now. Not yet. Hello. Not yet. Not yet. I don't know. I have a problem. Any progress? I think it is still is not working. So yeah, it's on process to show up. Yeah, you are sharing. It says yeah, stop sharing. I don't know. <laughs> it's a connection. I think it's the yeah the, maybe uh, yeah. It's the connection of mine. Maybe it's the connection.
Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the for the connection. I think I have a, a network connection a problem. So. Or maybe uh, if connection still, you know, becomes a problem, you can just open it in your PC, then you just explain it maybe, Abdullahi. Yeah. And you can agree. share it later in the WhatsApp group, you know, your presentation, okay. maybe. Okay. So uh, today I, I, I want to discuss about uh, about uh, international course on peace and transformation and peace building. So. Uh, what I am going to focus on is to, to more focus on the yeah, B circle. So as we all already know, yeah, B circle is one of the uh, tools that we can use for our B building and B uh, conflict uh, transformation and resolution. Uh, at the same time, also it is not uh, a new uh, a new method that we can use. Yeah, already yeah. Have been hundreds of years. Yeah, have been used. Yeah, to make conflict resolution. So at the same time, uh, what is called uh, Nelson Mandela is is one of the yeah because one of the leaders. He was asked because how can you get this uh, leadership? Then he answered that he used to go with his uh, father because his father was a community leader. So he said. My father, uh, because the the participant used to come together and to sit, uh, to sit uh, as a circle, and he said my father was the last person talk. So uh, we know that this B circle is very important. It's a method that we can use. At the same time, I want to discuss about something related to B uh, B ecology, uh, as I am from uh, Master in Sustainable Development. So B. Uh, ecology is very important because when we use our resources, our environment, uh, for example, we make overfishing, for example. Yeah, if we make overfish and, for example, a particular fish or a, part, a unique uh, fish, so we are going to, to, to finish all these uh, kind of fish. So at the same time, we will get, yeah, that will be limited fish or the value, the valuable fish we already finished. So at the same time, this also, uh, this also leads to co conflict, yeah, conflict and war, because we all humans, we are competing, yeah, for each other to take, yeah, the resources. So, yeah, most of the conflict is based on resources. So uh, the second one is like that deforestation, yeah, deforestation is one of the main issues on the ecology, because as we make it more deforestation, yeah, because it causes like, uh, clear cut for the deforestation by using two bubbles. The first bubble is like household use and the second one is yeah, uh, commercial bubbles. So the household use is like a peaceful way because these people only take a limit of resources yeah, for their consumption or for their household where the commercial use is like uh, commercial because they are getting benefits. So, the forest, the forest, the trees, everything, every resource, not only trees, also in other other resources. So it is very important, yeah, because uh, also at the same time, if we do, if we clear cut of our forests, so we are left in, we are left, we are leaving nothing because so we at the same time we are the people those are creating the conflicts and such these yeah, yeah and tensions for the resources. So. Uh, and next, I'm going to discuss about uh, the a case study, which is uh, a conflict transformation uh, through dialogue as a case study in Somalia. Because in 1991, yeah, there are oppositions uh, or, or clan leaders, those come together, they divided each other based on clan. So they tried to destroy the, 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 the government that was controlling uh, in Somalia. Uh, at the same time, the president was uh, Mohammed Siad Bre. He even he took uh, he took the Baba in 1969 as a military military cop. So they destroyed the country in 1991. So what I am going to discuss about from 1991 to 
to 2000 in, until 1990 until 2000 there were conflict uh, resolutions and transformations those uh, uh, facilitated by neighbor countries like Djibouti, Ethiopia, Kenya, because the, because the, 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 the purpose of this uh, conflict transformation and coming together with dialogue, it was to, to make peace or to build peace and to disarmament yeah, for, the, for, the, for the clans, tribes, those have been fighting each other. So uh, it's also, it was very important conference. I think from 1991 until 1990, until 2000 or 2004, uh, there were more than 11 uh, conflict, uh, co 11 conferences, yeah, for peace and building, yeah, coming together with uh, different clan leaders, the world lords of even, yeah, because those the leaders, those have been leading the conflict and the war in the in, inside the country, so. They come together to talk, to discuss the issue, what is the main issue. So at the same time, in 2004, yeah, they elected a president, a president which is, was uh, Abdullah Yusuf Ahmed. It was a very, a very beneficial, a very important uh, conference because, yeah, at the, in the, from 19, uh, from 2004 until uh, 2012, it was like. Uh, we have a government which named transitional federal government because if as we can see the the title of our program is like transformation our government was from 2004 to 2012 like a transitional federal government then from 2000 to 2000 until now it's a, a federal government so yeah you see that coming uh, yeah. it's one minute left yeah yeah, coming together through dialogue, uh, sitting, talking about the issue, what is missing you, what is, yeah, so coming together is a very important, yeah, technique that we can discuss our, our people, our community, our subgroups, even uh, individuals. So, yeah, because that is very important. Uh, uh, although sometimes if you look uh, for these processes, it was a wonderful, but at the same time, the the result that we get is like a good result. But at the same time, we didn't go deep because as our program, our committee is like a deep, deep network. The, the solution was not deep. It's like uh, some transitional or transformation to get better, uh, better, to better until final. Yeah. So uh, that is what I decided to contribute with you even i will share with the powerpoint uh, through whatsapp group thank you that is all from me thank you abdullahi thank you well done for the presentation okay, okay. for the next friend center we will put a timer so that you know uh, you can see as well the remaining time uh, zikri Zultan, you will do it yeah, for the next presentation. So we're going to the next presenter, Mahda. Yes, hello. Hello. Can I share screen now? Yeah. Uh, can you all see my screen? Yeah. yeah. Is it clear enough? Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Manda. Uh, today, I'm going. Uh, I'm going to explain more on the peace building process in the case of uh, West Papua. This was been uh, addressed by Ibu Priska and Ibu Yanti on the peace building, as well as. Uh, Miss Aisha did mention a little bit about uh, Aceh as well. So this uh, this peace building was interrelated between West Papua and uh, Aceh. Okay. Uh, next. Okay, so basically, um, what I'm gonna explain now is uh, if you can see here, Indonesia. Sorry, if you can see here, this is the the 
the map of the province of West Papua. And this is, uh, and this is the, the, the current maps of West Papua. And this was the last map uh, for, of uh, West Papua. This was somewhere in 1949 which you can see there, uh, the upper side of uh, Indonesia was uh, was handled by the British and all those in red was handled by the, the Netherlands. And however, those uh, on the right hand side, you can see the Netherlands, uh, they are in different color because the Netherlands, uh, I mean, the, the Papua's was in different color because the Netherlands was supposedly preparing something for uh, West Papua. However, since the outbreaks coming up and Indonesia was uh, announcing their, um, the independent days and they are asking Netherlands to uh, pass all the, all the territory back to Indonesia, including the West Papua. So this is the background, sorry. This is the background from 1949 to 1940, uh, 1950, where the Free West Papua, the Dutch is in this uh, pass it to uh, change to Republic of Indonesia. And then West Papua was transferred to, uh, was under UN provision in, in 1962, and it was given a chance to do act of free choice. It's either in 1969, it's either West Papua wants to be belongs to Indonesia, or they are they may decide uh, themselves whether you want to be a uh, part of Indonesia or yourself. So, but if you can see in the picture there. The, Picture. Can you see my screen? Uh, in the picture here in 1969, even though the title was Act of Free Choice, there was an army there putting gun to whoever footing. So for me, the issue is still uh, going on as even though the government of Indonesia has, has been given a special autonomy, however, the special autonomy has been uh, failed due to lack of transparency. And this is a problem statement. I prepare all this. Uh, I make sure I prepare just like how we prepare our thesis or our paper. So for me, it will be easier for, uh, for me to break down uh, from the, the, the main issue, from the problem statement, and then break down to the solutions. So from the problem statement here, the Dutch is in this uh, transferred all the uh, move to change to be a Republic of Indonesia. And then uh, at the time, Dutch uh, pursued to place uh, West Papua under UN supervision. And hence, the West Papua was given the referendum of act of free uh, choice. However, the root causes here is uh, self determination and then political violence impact and recognition of the indigenous uh, Papuans. Again, uh, uh, last time, uh, we also talk about the indigenous uh, people. So here as well, uh, in the case of West Papua, we combine three, which self-determination, and then uh, political violence, and as well as the recognition of the indigenous uh, Papua and indigenous people. So uh, moving forward, it goes to the outbreak, which uh, Free Papua political movement, or uh, we normally, in, for Indonesian, we call it uh, Operate, Operasi Politik Militer, OPM. And uh, moving forward, this still happening, but the outbreak uh, changed name into the, another, another uh, uh, the army movement. So the last, the last thing was the agreement. So in 2001, the West Papua was granted a self-rule by the Indonesian government in Jakarta. The self-rule legislation agreement is well known as a spatial autonomy, which never fully implemented. The spatial uh, autonomy is uh, something like the, the regional side of, because Indonesia have like 33 province or something. So 
uh, each of province they are able to they are given uh, roles uh, self roles to manage their own uh, province so from there uh, in 2011 the unit of accelerate uh, development in Papua and Papua Barat uh, or West Papua province uh, was established. This was uh, given by the government. And then this, uh, this agreement was done by the Indonesian government and uh, West Papua. And in 2013, the spatial autonomy plus, this is another, another spatial autonomy, was offered in order to replace the spatial autonomy which had failed because the spatial autonomy, the first spatial autonomy was uh, never been fully implemented. So they given a spatial autonomy plus, which the, the, the form, it, I mean, the point inside is similar, but they just ensure that this is gonna be a, a how we call it, a transparency, which until now they still suffering, the, the indigenous Papua as well as the people in West Papua are still uh, suffering. So, and this is the uh, theoretical. Sorry, yes. Mahda. The time is, uh, you know, uh, finished more than five okay. minutes. You can just make it quick, please. Okay. So basically, I just uh, want to explain more on the peace building. So, uh, because we having an issue uh, in West Papua, we having an issue on political, military, economy, and territory. So I use this peace building uh, concept in order to achieve uh, the the whatever uh, agreement in the future so uh, thanks thank you that's all from me thank you so much Bari. thank you but mahda uh, congratulations for your presentation we moving to the next uh, presenter irfan Irfan ali Hashi. Hello, Irfan. Um, hi there. Um, Hello. Okay. Can you, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just hold on. Um, um, let me put my cam on. I don't know. Yeah, I can see your video. Okay. So, can I start now? Yeah. Okay. So, my name is Irfan Ali Kazi, and um, I'm, I'm doing uh, Master's in Chemical Engineering. <clears throat> so, the reason I have joined this course is because, you know, I had this thing in my mind that um, why, why is there conflict all around the world? I mean, at first I thought that maybe, you know, there is conflict in my own locality or the neighborhood, and then I saw this, you know, when, when I was getting older so i saw that you know maybe yes uh, it's only in pakistan but then i saw that you know it, there is conflicts of conflict all around the world so why is that so i mean what are the reasons so this drive me to join this course and you know after having such one of my best presenters which, which i have seen so far so this has clarified uh, you know uh, the, the reasons and how to transform peace so basically I'm working on the factors of all the conflicts and way to transform peace. So conflict is like, it, it, it's difficult to define because you know, it can be used in many contexts, contests, contexts. You know, it can be disagreement between goals, emotions, and you know, so on that can result in antagonistic interaction. But you know, conflict is not always uh, negative. It can be positive as well. For instance, like the current Olympics, which are going on, or the competitive exams, you know, um, everyone tries to get the specific position and it's positive, you know, it's healthy. Um, to know the reasons of why the conflicts evolve, you know, it's, it's because of uh, like, you know, they're if in, internationally, if you see that, you know, the world is divided into countries and, you know, every country has a global position. This position is basically based on power. And you know, the power is again based on economy, military strength, human resource, location. 
and in you know so on for example if you take an example of united states of the location you know when I, firstly united states is very far and secondly you know it is covered by sea on two sides with having two weak neighbors you know it, it's it's a kind of a strength which gives a us a power and secondly the states are run by humans so automatically i mean states have adopted you know one basic nature of human that is selfishness so hence it makes states as selfish and you know they worry about their own survival and this is this is the reason why you know like war emerges if you see the war on terror like what happened you know the the world and the great powers wanted to survive and that's why you know this war you know started so the world again is divided into you know different countries or the power structure with us on the top and then p5 countries like you know us um, um, china france and you know so on and then it com- becomes countries which have like you know less power and then it comes country uh, there are countries which has no or very less power you know so hence some countries try to align itself with the powerful countries for example some countries in the african continent or the asian continent you know why because they want to have their say on the global politics you know in the same way again countries have adopted one other nature uh, of humans that is to be respected globally and to survive for example pakistan and india if we take an example you know pakistan aligned itself with china why because you know uh, after the first decade you know pakistan went into a security dilemma when us aligned itself with uh, india in order to you know have any uh, a country in the south asia so which can be a partner of us to come to china so this drove pakistan into a security dilemma and pakistan wanted uh, a country which is like one of the p5 countries and which can veto anything which which comes against the interest of pakistan so pakistan aligned itself with china and you know us uh, india aligned itself with uh, us similarly in a society you know everyone wants to be respected and given importance and this also causes some sort of conflict uh, everyone tries the same because you know it's a human nature i think that you know everyone wants to be you know uh-huh. sorry if i Uh, the time is all finished uh, can you make quick your presentation please okay okay so i'll i'll just go through it you know i'll um, uh, in the same way you know the the tribal enmities you know why does it start it starts also because you know one wants to be respected and another you know it's the fear you know which results in conflicts for example we have an area in uh, in pakistan you know it's a tribal area called chaman you know where people you know um, uh, people get killed because of fear the fear is like you know if i have a tribal enmity with someone else and you know uh, all of a sudden we 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 come to see each other un you know intently so i mean like um, i don't have any intention to kill that person but that person will think that you know i came to kill him so you know in that way in the, it is the fear which which would result in a conflict and you, you know one of us would get killed and another one is like you know the other factor is the intersectionality you know it includes class race and gender and you know the equality is not why is not why the equality has not achieved despite all this we have it's because you know the uh, the gender class income ability etc has called you know um, inequality for example we have a patriarchal society you know it's or we we, we call them you know uh, the white men's burden you know which started that you know um, um, back in the 1500 so you know and the 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 third one is that you know the conflict relationship with the history you know if 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 we see that um, you know Uh, the recent black lives matter it's not about you know it's not about just george floyd or something you know it's it has its deep roots connected in the past such as you know the abraham lincoln and the civil war or the voting rights of the 
uh, uh, blacks when we when it were given in 1920 you know uh, still the black women were not able to vote it just because you know they, uh, they were not given the priority and the they did not have their names in the voting registry so another examples of conflict um, of uh, related to history is that you know the war of independence in 1857 you know it was not just because of the fact that you know it started suddenly it had its deep root connected like you know when the britishers came to um, subcontinent and then you know their harsh policies and and their exploitation resulted in this war i have another example but due to less time you know um, uh, i'll have to move on so in order to stop or the minimize the conflicts you know we must understand the dynamics its history history is re- very important uh because the real issue lies in the history so if you go on to uh, back in the history and you try to search the real reason then you can you know transform for peace because but if you look for the solution of the or the resolution of the conventional issues you know um, uh, peace cannot be transformed so sorry um, irfan <laughs> the time just, is just just yeah. 30 seconds and i'll just you yeah. know i'll just wind it up you know so one one may think that you know why conflict transformation is important because to some it it seems like it seems like you know it's a win win situation but uh, to most of them it's not like a win win situation it's like um, the, the reason is that you know um, um, even if the peace has been uh, peace has uh, peace has resulted you know uh, it cannot be the exact the same as it was because you know some things have been transformed into uh, have been changed so um, you know no one takes all, all all the cake so it's like you know win lose or something in related to that so i think um, i have a lot to say but you know due to less time you know i'll have to stop it uh, okay so thank you thank you irfan for the presentations yeah it's very insightful uh Well, sorry, may I yeah, just yeah, yeah, quickly, yeah. Yes. quickly interrupt here? Uh, can I just please urge the participants to keep to the time because uh, the more time you are taking, you are at, taking at the expense of uh, your fellow participants. So please uh, try to keep to the five minutes and so that we can finish um, before midnight tonight. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm sorry for taking a bit of a time. So uh, my apologies. No, it's it's no, it's okay. But uh, this is for for everyone, so that you know, uh, yeah. we we have to keep. Unfortunately, we would love to keep every one of you as much time as possible, but we have to keep to the five minutes. And my apologies once again to kind of restrict your expression, but just. You know, give the nutshell of what what it is that you would like to present, and yeah, you know, and for the sake of everyone else, so that yeah. we can at least try to finish as quickly as we can. Yeah, thank uh, you very much. Uh, yeah, Prof, uh, I have a question. Uh, can we uh, have a presentation from John Fong and then take a break a bit, then continue? Yes, it's up to the uh, participants. The yeah, what, yeah. Are you all okay with that? Yes, professor. Okay, yes. we can take yeah, we can take a short break. But the unfortunate thing is that we are uh, quite behind time. So think think of uh, you know think of it as if like we are in an airplane and we we have got a destination and we're trying to to go as quickly as possible, but not at the expense of your of your presentation. Okay, so that I want all of you to have the most of it. So how long a break, Masari? A uh, ten minutes. Okay, wonderful. So we will have a ten minute break, and um, once again, Ir- Irfan, thank you so much for your presentation, and okay. we will continue. Yeah, in ten yeah. minutes. My yeah. pleasure, Prof. My pleasure. Thank you. We will come back at ten eleven twenty Indonesian time. Is that okay, Prof? Yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay. Zikri, Idam, can we go to? So I am I okay? Say okay.
Okay, I start. So, can I start? Uh, wait, John. Okay. Uh, you want to take a break? Oh, minutes. take a break. Is that okay? Now. Yeah. I thought yeah. it's after me. Yeah. Oh, uh, no. no, no. Oh, okay. Uh, take a break first, and then. Oh, take a break first. Yeah, ten twenty. We come back. Eleven twenty. We come back. Thank you. Sorry okay, for no this. Problem. Thank you, John. Okay, no problem. So okay. we continue. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Time is yours, John. I'm being disabled to share screen. Okay. Oh, you cannot. Uh, I cannot. Uh, Zikri, Zulfan. Uh, uh, you should be able. Okay. Okay, before I present this uh, course, uh, this presentation is meant to be educational and not meant to criticize anyone or the government. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, uh, before this, uh, I'm John. I would like to present my uh, presentation on conflict resolution and politics of location in Malaysia racial tension. So there's a, actually a lack of conflict trans transformation within the racial violence until the present time. So I use the case of Sorry, before that, I used the case of uh, May 13, 1969, a racial riot that happened in Malaysia. So I have already looked through John Lidrak, uh, article by, uh, by Dr. Jenny. So uh, basically, conflict, resolu conflict resolution perspective is very simple, and then compared to conflict uh, transformation perspective. So conflict resolution is actually more... Uh, direct compared to transformation and it requires less time and it can actually relieve pain and anxiety and difficulties within a short period of time com compared to transformation uh, conflict transformation. So conflict transformation is more uh, relationship centered and requires two two way participants. Then while conflict resolution do not need uh, much uh, relationship centered. Okay, the next thing is um, uh, I would like to go on on the May 13, 1969 incident. So it happened during our Malaysia general election in uh, 1969, where the opposition parties, uh, mostly on Chinese political parties, are uh, actually gaining more votes at that time. And there was a uh, racial tension at that time uh, between the Malays and the Chinese. So there was a provocation to the extent that the Malays and the Chinese were provoked to kill and fight one another. So there are actually many people died actually, and until now it's under the Official Secrecy Act. And then uh, there are up to probably hundreds and hundreds to a thousand actually died, but we, we have no idea actually what, what the actual numbers are. So that at that time, 1961 was our first lockdown. No, 2020 wasn't our first lockdown. So at the time, this was actually our very dark moment for, for Malaysia history. So for conflict resolution, so the government just came out with Majlis Gerakan Negara. So it was known as National Operation Council. It was a conflict resolution. Then it was a function as a, the whole council, it was uh, function as a caretaker government and sought to restore rule of law and to steer country towards national reconciliation. So the next thing is that um, because of the Chinese party, they were going strong. The government has also taken in uh, has taken in the uh, the Chinese party to be part of the government. So that was the conflict vision. There's no conflict transformation that happened at the time. So the next thing is, uh, because there's no conflict transformation uh, for our racial riots, so the thing of racial cuts that are often being used in uh, in the current events. So right now, like, like, uh, thank, thankfully, Alberto is not in one of the pictures in uh, Operation Lalang. And then, of course, in 1987, so the Ministry of Education uh, decision to appoint some of the 100 senior assistants and supervisors to Chinese medium primary schools. So they are actually, uh, these people are not trained in Chinese. And then there, were, there was miscommunication within the Chinese schools' uh, principals with this uh, employment. So there are protests by the Chinese school and some of the politicians that actually went against the government at the time. So the, then the government decided to invoke Ops Lalang and then they were all detained under ISA. But again, this was actually a main, it was actually an excuse, racial issue was actually an excuse behind all this. It was actually, at the time, it was an AMNO election in 19... 1987, uh, UMNO is one of the largest Malay party in Malaysia. And then it was an internal crisis that happened at a time where Mahathir and Tunku Razali Hamza was actually competing with the press uh, in the election. And Mahathir was actually, the, the party was deregistered to the point that 
it was a lot of internal conflict. So Martin need to silence his opposition at the time. So just it was a racial cut issue. It was a racial issue that was brought into into this problem. So as for now, currently, um, again racial issue again keep appearing every day now and then because right now the government is now threatened again. So they have used uh, they have used uh, the they have used the racial card again over and over again. So we have the ICERT, the International Convention on Elimination on Racial Discrimination. It was said that it will threaten the Malay's uh, privilege. And also we have Muhammad, uh, the death of Muhammad, Adib Muhammad Kasim, because he was actually killed in a, in a riot, in a very small riot between the Indians on over a land issue. So, and that, then it's over time. This is actually what Dr. Uh, Joanne was actually telling us about. And then of course we have uh, actually, the good thing about thing about social media, we have memes, and then this is actually one of the songs that they actually dedicated to to our government. And yeah, uh, if you are familiar with uh, Backstreet Boys and Brooklyn Nine, you can just sing it. And then of course, and we have more memes that to reflect on what is uh, on the government right now. So this is all the positive side that the social media has evolved and memes that we can use to counter the government. Uh, uh, yeah, the come to the government for now. Okay, thank, thank you. Thanks all. Thank you, John, for the presentation. Okay. Okay. It's enough. Uh, five minutes. We're going to the next presenter, Saddam Hussein. Uh, yes, sir. Can I continue? Yeah, time's yours. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the entire uh, ICCP team for putting in so much effort for uh, such during this hard time of COVID-19. Uh, in this course, I have learned uh, many ways how to solve the conflict and how to avoid the conflict. Uh, the topic which I have selected for my paper is basically the conflict between the two states uh, which create too much tension for them and uh, for the entire South Asia, insecurity for the entire South Asia. Uh, basically, I'm talking about uh, the issue of Kashmir. Uh, the topic which I have to, uh, to present in my paper is that uh, the diplomatic response toward the equation of the special status of Indian occupied Kashmir uh, uh, in 2019, uh, basically a equation of the special status of Jammu and Kashmir uh, but illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir into the two union territory can diplomatic response from the international community. Uh, in this way, as most of us know that uh, during the period of uh, uh, from 1947, uh, uh, from 1947, uh, the, there is uh, a conflict between Pakistan and India uh, and the uh, disputed territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Both countries considered as is their parts, but uh, t uh, they have fought many wars on the Kashmir conflict, but uh, till they cannot handle it. So after the uh, 5 August 19, 2009, uh, when the issue of the uh, Indian has uh, illegally uh, abrogated the Article uh, 370, so this is why uh, it has created so much tension in the Indian occupied Kashmir area people. So I will try to highlight uh, the historical context here of the, the conflict uh, and also that why the reasons behind abrogation of the article 370 and what are the main causes about these some. Um, and I will also uh, try to explain that how the diplomatic response of many country uh, toward this conflict, such as Pakistan, China, Turkey, Malaysia, Iran, United States, United Kingdom, European Union, that how can they play a role, uh, their diplomatic through dialogues and peace circles? Because this is the conflict uh, which has uh, created too much tension for us. Uh, that uh, in this way, <clears throat> as we have studied in this uh, course, that uh, dialogue is the only solution uh, for any conflict that we can solve. Uh, if we take the example of Afghanistan, uh, as the U.S. has started war on terror after 9-11 uh, in Afghanistan, and till they are now going toward the dialogue with Taliban, because the, uh, 
uh, dialogue is the only solution for any conflict. So I will try to highlight that how diplomacy and how dialogue uh, can work to solve the uh, conflict uh, of Kashmir issue between Pakistan and India. And uh, I will try to uh, highlight the main issue there. Uh, so that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Saddam, for your presentation today. Thank you so much. So. Yeah, Nur Alia. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, great. Um, uh, I think I can start now. Okay. Um, hello, assalamu alaikum, uh, everyone. Annyeonghaseyo. Ni uh, hao. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and hello. Um, so today I'm just going to be very brief about what I've learned and throughout the two weeks course. And as you can see on my screen, I hope it's large enough. Uh, I'm not really sure or understand how to. Yeah. So today I'm just going to review on what I understand and why I joined this course. Similar to Irfan, and I believe I could also take how Dr. Jenny um, view. Um, her approach to towards the conflict in the world, um, I view the same. I always see um, the issue, the breaking news uh, in the world. Like I, I, I question, you know, I question myself whether or not um, we can stop these negative events, you know, and if so, how? And if it's possible, um, uh, is peace achievable? Um, and every time during my class, I always, uh, sorry, during the class that I have in my university, I always question my lecturers on, on how we can approach this. Um, so the issues such as um, the oppression of Israeli forces towards the Palestinian is really what triggers me into joining this course. Uh, I really wanted to understand on how to peace build, on how to make peace, on how to build peace. And, um, Throughout the course, I noticed um, that everyone is approaching on the same idea, which is peace or even conflict transformation. Um, but um, there's a lot of um, networks, I would say. We've all learned, already learned that on the previous two previous classes. Um, I would say a network of peace. I, I believe deep network is also um, one thing to achieve that, right? To have dialogue, engagement, empathy, and, and peace building uh, on resolving issues. And this is how I see it. Um, the input would be, uh, I am triggered by the events that's happening in the world. Um, and I came across this course from my friends and I just thought like, oh, what can we learn? Um, to, uh, on the uh, list, we've seen that oh, there's a lot of approaches into, into, into peace building. There's a lot of, of things to learn um, about peace. You know, there's not only about, oh, how, uh, how, how can we do peace? We, we, we need to learn about the historic factors as well. Um, and all of the classes, um, when we have discussion, um, I've learned on the perspective of the people in this class about the conflicts that is happening in, in their own land. And that goes the same in Malaysia, which uh, I believe John have already highlighted that. Um, so the output, I believe uh, we wanted the same. We wanted this world to be a peaceful world. We wanted this world to be a place where we can live uh, harmoniously. That's why I highlighted that although we are diverse, we are united in some sense, because um, believe on the same thing we wanted to achieve on the same thing to which I sometimes question like what can we do on the operational level you know what if you guys here uh, academicians or not or, um, um, you know like we know Irfan is not coming from the background of international affairs for instance and Inas is also, um, Inas is also focusing on the uh, operational level of, of peace for instance and uh, maybe what we, what can we do? You know, what can we do to influence the people? Can we can we implement what we've learned here 
um, into the um, political arena, for instance, because um, as what Bu Ines has already mentioned that the political arena is a, sometimes people who have the power, people who have the knowledge, they forgot the values. And I believe the, the, the thing that needs to be highlighted are the values. So we go back uh, into one word that I really love most of using is love. Um, I believe this is highlighted by Pa Alberto uh, that um, throughout the class, I think that um, apart from my brain, apart from my thoughts blossoming, I feel like my heart is blossoming too. Um, I believe we have to touch on the empathic um, views and um, I think I have 16 seconds left. Um, I just wanted to conclude that what I've learned is there's a lot of stories to tell. There's a lot of narration that um, people would give and we have to see it, you know. We have to see it to understand it. We have to listen to understand it. Hence the reason why active listening is important. Peace is feasible, uh, peaceability can be done. And um, there's more than one approach to applying peace. And I guess that's all. Sorry to take a lot more time. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Ayla. Okay. Uh, we're going to the next free center. Naurem Roji, Roji. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mas uh, Park Airy. Okay, so uh, as my friend Alia has talked about the whole course, and I would like to reflect on it also a little bit more, because it would not be a word, it would not be word enough for my side if I didn't mention, uh, you know, all those uh, valuable insights that we've uh, gone through throughout this course. So in those 10 days of the course, the various presenters from the different field have profoundly guided and engaged with us, bringing all the possible dimensions of theoretical and practical framework on conflict transformation and peace building. Whether it is a peace circle by Dr. Gloria, conflict transformation of Dr. Jennifer Murphy, the role of dialogue of Australia and its relevance by Dr. Michaelis, this education and its importance by Dr. Sophia, the importance of Nonviolent communication by Dr. Vedavias, and not to forget the epistemology concept of Pat Alberto. The role of race in creating conflict and decolonizing peace by Eisen and Dr. Carlos. Key conceptual frameworks in peace psychology by Dr. Xu Feng Lo. The moral philosophical part of the course, which are empathy, love, compassion, and peace, beautifully presented, you know, by uh, putting important elements of peace building were beautifully presented by Dr. Izzy Dio. Also, conflict prevention framework and conflict resolution within peace building in the case of Indonesia by Dr. Nuryanti and Dr. Priscilla. Certainly, you know, it dwells uh, in depth on how sustainable peace can be achieved in multicultural condition in Indonesia. And of course, Peace Culture and Culture of Peace by Dr. Alexander through the lens of anthropological concept of ethnographic methods and contributing to develop on an equal peace system. And last but not the least, Media and Peace Building by Dr. Joan Lim, where Dr. Joan focused on how peace can be significantly distorted by mainstream media and how we can use the new or social media platform as a tool for peace building. During this course, various case studies on indigenous people of different countries, such as from Indonesia, uh, from Philippines, from Malaysia, uh, from even from the uh, remote areas of Africa have been analyzed. Presenters were able to make us enjoy a lot from letting us to perform certain exercise and making us to share our part of stories and experiences also. These activities have met us to engage uh, one another, forming a harmonious and a healthy environment. So the various theories and the concepts presented in this course are interlinked and interconnected in some way or the other. Coming and as I'm from a, uh, as I'm from, the, I, I belong to the Northeastern part of India, it's a very conflicted zone. The course has helped me to acquire deeper knowledge and clarity that will help me able to develop uh, various uh, viable conflict management framework in building peace in my region. Maybe I can start from uh, through literatures or workshops from the grassroots level in my area. 
In this regard, I would like to put one of the most essential component of conflict transformation and peace building, that is nonviolent communication. So I'll begin uh, with the definition and the term, uh, what it means. So the, the term nonviolent communication means communication match using a language that does not hurt people, respectful and thoughtful communication, communication that shows love, compassion, and have empathy for others. This, uh, the means of communication should be open and flexible. Active and deep listening is an important element to develop nonviolent communication. And it should further st avoid stereotyping, uh, moralistic judgments, evaluative language. It should avoid negativity and anger while speaking also. The, con the conversations we had should be positive and progressive. The flexibility of ideas by integrating with other people's view should be inculcated to have a better and profound result on the topic we had discussed. Another important element is the constant showing of gratitude while speaking. This will not only feel positive, but also a powerful engagement for reconciliation of any bitterness towards each other. The important objectives of nonviolent non communication is to connect with people empathetically by empathizing one can touch the humanness of others. And another important aspect of nonviolent communication is to have compassion and empathy for other living beings also. To sum up, if we indulge in nonviolent communication in our daily lives, we can avoid the maximum stress, negativity, conflict, hatred, and all the elements of ill feeling, thereby promoting a healthy mind and soul. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Roji. Well done for the presentation. Thank you. Hi, Teza. Okay, we're going to the next center. We have uh, Raninta Salwa. Ranita, are you around? I, I can't see Ranita's, Ranita's in the participant list. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. So we can skip. Uh, Salwa, because he's having PCR test. So mm -hmm. the next will be Ayat. Param, param. Yes. Okay. Okay, I will share my screen. I don't know if you can see it now. You can see? Yes, I can see. Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ayat, and I am from Jordan. I will talk about the peace, which is uh, one of the sustainable development goals of the UN. Just a minute, I want to avoid this one. ICTP uh, prepares us to search for solutions to situation of conflict and violence in dialectic manners, for example, solving the problems dialogue, taking into account new development techniques. Ready for dialogue, ready for positive change, transforming violence, uh, for inclusion, democracy, and dialogue to the youth is essential for securing a strong future for the world. Dialogue, no, sorry. Oh, no world peace without peace between religions. Every year in Jordan, we participated in multi-faith activities such as prayers and uh, gatherings, encouraging multiple understanding and a common approach to moral and social issues. Um, People often think that they are in dialogue, but mostly it's a discussion or debate. The goal of the most discussion sorry, is to improve some points to others. So it's all about communications. Working side by side not only help us to get to know each other better, to establish friendships, but also results in improving uh, a community we share. I will give you one example. Uh, a hand with five fingers. From an error view, we can only see one finger at a time. Each of the five fingers exists independently. However, from a wider view, we can see that the five fingers are connected to each other, even though each finger is different from one another. So all of us from different countries, different communities, different backgrounds, but all of us, we want peace. 
Conflicts arise from misunderstanding, which arise from miscommunications or lack of the communication. So it's all about uh, communications and active listening. Technology have been two edges of world. If we use them wisely, they are great servants. On the other hand, we could, uh, we could become salvage to them. Social media is about creating a dialogue, not a monologue. Learning, from, uh, learning for peace aims to transfer relations uh, at three levels, policy, community, and individual levels, using multiple elements for, of education as um, entry points, such as uh, gender, youth, uh, teacher uh, training, uh, access, uh, conflict-sensitive education, early childhood developments. And we need to remember the hashtags that we used yesterday. Women are caring uh, for peace, peace, peace. We want peace. Uh, we must have peace now. And thank you. I'm done. Thank you, Ayat. Is it finished? Yes. OK. I just go through all the points that we okay. went thank through you. them. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to the next uh, presenter, Liliane, Akiki. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Buenos dias. <laughs> Buenos dias. Ni hao. <laughs> Calimera. That's Greek. I'm a... Okay, I can start uh, by talking about peace is uh, talking about everything, uh, about something that we have every day, every minute with us. It starts with uh, when we greet people, we, we say peace upon you, assalamu alaikum. So it goes with us every day, every single minute, every time we meet people with communication, with everything, it's, it's a way of greeting all along our life until at the end uh, when we die we also have peace with us because we wish people to rest in peace so throughout this uh, course um, I'm, I'm gonna like uh, uh, um, talk about something that to take home like uh, things from the course we learned uh, uh, the uh, peace circle is a virtuous circle it's a transformation. Uh, we follow pedagogical principles, the seven C's as taught by, uh, by Pat Hari, uh, cooperative, conciliatory, considerate others, uh, committed, uh, critical, cooperating, conciliatory, and uh, all the other, the, those one. The peace circle, um helps us uh, uh, get our balance balance in all components uh help it helps us how can i remove this uh to reestablish to to get recharged with energy to get connected to the other peacefully connected and to uh, get to our healing process um we also talked about conflict transformation this is uh, this is through dialogue for sure it's a win-win situation how can i remove this psychopolitical diagnosis and uh, and and dialogues uh, to get to action to get to collaborative actions uh, introspection understanding, uh, learning, uh, communicating, active listening, and all of that. So all that uh, through non-violent communication. So this will help us uh, um, um, a value uh, other people, respect them, accept them, uh, appreciate them, uh, compassion. Um, sorry. Get my laptop battery, and um, 
and, and understanding with lots of openness and flexibility and a constructive way of treating uh, the others. As for peace ecology, uh, it's very important for people to have really access to uh, all resources, uh, healthcare, education, economic, and, and all of that. Cross fertilization is an important component, protection of the com communities and culture. Uh, for it to be sustainable, uh, to get really to, uh, to the social justice and for all people to meet their needs, uh, and uh, to reach a ecological generation. Um, uh, in peace psychology, uh, we have to understand our emotions to, to be able to prevent violence and promote peace through empowerment of the others, accepting uh, uh, the others with uh, total equality, without discrimination, uh, respecting the rights uh, and uh, managing conflict. Peace is love, peace is empathy, peace is compassion. So through all of that, it's a, it's a cultural communication. Um, uh, through this, um, this is one of the sessions I was giving to the refugees. And you can see people are just laughing, just being happy, just expressing their emotions without restrictions, with like, um, they are boys and girls. They are doing same as we all are doing, and this uh, this really helps into um, uh, like uh, uh, stepping forward in in the process of uh, uh, conflict transformation to accept ourselves because this uh, we all live on this planet and we are breathing the same air. We are, um, we are also uh, um, under the same sun and we're gonna be buried uh, in, in, the same, uh, in the same ground. So uh, I think it's better for us to be really uh, peaceful in, in, on our daily basis activity, just communicating with the others with lots of uh, respect um, and value the others and um, diversity, I love, I love colors and you see all the colors are different, um, diverse colors, but they are, they are coming all together. This is how people should be regardless which ethnicity they come from, uh, which uh, social class, which is education background, uh, which nationality, which uh, race, which all of that. So diversity is key to a peaceful. When, when we accept the others, it means that we're accepting ourselves to be in relations with the others. And thank you for being, <laughs> I don't know now how to get back to the main screen. <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Lillian. I'm taking over from Mas Ari, so thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, I have to, uh, sorry to. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Zikri, can you, yeah, you just go down to the share screen in the bottom and you stop and you click stop sharing. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So the next person we have on our list is Kaf. Kafil Rana. Are you ready to go, Kafil? Hello, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, you are. So yeah, I please, thought my turn would be after two, but uh, unfortunately. Oh, so sorry. Are you, are you okay to go now? Obviously, obviously, I would go. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I should probably point out to you that what we are trying to do is to, uh, you know, we just have the list and and we decided not to follow the time as, as close. Sorry. Sure, sure, sure. The, the allocated time, I should say, but the, uh, you have to follow the time. You can see the big five minute there for it's, you. It's perfectly fine. I, it's okay, perfectly thank fine. you. Thank you so much. Okay, Kapil. So let's get started. Uh, am I audible, everyone? So 
I would be highlighting four dimensions uh, that I think are important if we want to deconstruct the idea of conflict and peace. So that would be, uh, the first one would be fragile global political system. The second one would be economic disparity. Third one would be climate annihilation. And the fourth one would be cognitive dissonance or, or mental dissonance from the society. So first of all, how I perceive peace, I would be very honest, I think peace is, is more like a utopian idea. But what we can do, we can mitigate the chances of conflict, we can reduce the possibilities of the conflict, and we can try to shrink the area of conflict, right? So how I uh, perceive conflict, I think conflict is, 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 human history is full of conflicts, right? So, but I'm convinced that uh, in history, throughout the course of history, we have seen that the conflicts only served a minority of the faction or, 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 or a particular faction. So the conflicts have nothing to do uh, with a majority. So, uh, and now I would be highlighting uh, the four dimension that was, uh, you know, first one would be fragile global political system. I think after uh, the Treaty of Westphalia and the rise of nation, uh, nation state system, every power or every so-called superpower must respect the territorial integrity or the sovereignty of the other nation. You just can't barge into someone's home and telling them, hey, we are here to save you. So I think this nonsense must be condemned uh, as we have seen that how US uh, invaded in Iraq in, in the Middle East, in Afghanistan, in, in, in various uh, parts of the world. So what they have done to the humanity we are aware of that. So now I would be uh, highlighting economic disparity. I think neoliberal uh, model of uh, economy is, is just a disaster. Uh, as Karl Marx has said that those who work uh, for, uh, for their, uh, you know, masters or for those who control the means of production, they get alienated from their own product. So due to economic disparity, the people uh, get alienated from their own surrounding so they don't care for each other they don't care for society they don't care for this world and they, they don't care for the nature so i would be uh, connecting my this point with the climate annihilation when you don't care for each other when you don't care for this world when you don't care for your surrounding obviously you are going to hurt as dr uh, alberto ardier has said that nature is being consumed as a commodity or nature is being considered commodity so we think that nature is something like slave and the nature should uh, you know serve the us so i think this area or this thinking pattern must be changed otherwise there would be conflicts as we we are uh, we have been uh, you know observing in africa on a grand renaissance dam so what we have done to uh, 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 maritime ecosystem it's it's more like horrifying so i think we should change our patterns how we look towards nature. So my last point would be cognitive dissonance. I think human, humans create a picture uh, on the basis of their past experiences. Unfortunately, we all have uh, very bad experiences uh, in our lives. So we create a picture and we start, you know, uh, hating each other and we start, you know, uh, this hostility uh, towards other people. So I think we must, uh, we must try to uh, repaint the picture that have been created, that, that has been created by the, you know, our early experiences so that we can have, uh, you know, more peaceful or more, uh, you know, uh, beautiful world as doctor. Uh, and we should communicate with each other. We should promote, uh, promote communication. We should promote love and we should, you know, but that love as Dr. Uh, Veda Bias explained that the communication is as important as we take food. So take food, uh, you know, uh, in a better way. Otherwise, there would be a disaster. And I think uh, we must stop listening to Trump. And uh, otherwise, uh, you know, uh, what the, what uh, this world has been going through. So stop listening to him. Uh, stop listening to him and have a good time and have a good day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kafir. Um...
we will move on to the next uh, presentation, which is by Diting. Diting, are you okay to go now? Okay, I have it after lunch break. <laughs> yes, of course you may. So you can come back later. And I think Alex, who is after you, is also away. Uh, Mohamed Salman, are you okay to go? Salman, are you? Yes, sir. Is it audible, sir? Yeah, yeah. it is perfect. Yeah. All right, sir. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. So let me just talk on um, a bit about dialogue which uh, our respected presenter, Dr. Michaelis Michael has already done well about on the topic. So I'm just trying to deep into the relevance of the topic called dialogue in resolving the conflict that is going on in between Manipur and Nagaland in the Northeastern part of India. So as far as Dr. Michael is, Michael, you know, he, he said dialogue is bringing together of two or more conflicting individuals or groups in order to, you know, uh, find a common language so that they understand, appreciate uh, each other. And then, you know, giving more values, adding to truth and betterment. He also said that dialogue is not restricted to human spaces. It can be with the animal world, uh, with the natural world, even with the even with the cosmos. So dialogue is not exclusively anthropocentric or dialogue is visible in non-sapient places as well. Um, he also said three fundamental uh, underpinnings of uh, dialogue that, that is truth, freedom, and respect. Why I'm digging into dialogue is because dialogue can do lots of wonders uh, considering the uh, conflict that is happening nowadays. The, uh, dialogue can exactly, you know, uh, avoid the pitfalls of reaction and reactionary politics. Dialogue can also build more solid foundations or community growth, development and empowerment. Dialogue can be uh, also used to develop more effective communication between and within um, communities. So going further, you know, uh, who exactly can implement dialogue? The, the answer to this question is dialogue is an ethical approach and so can be implemented by anyone who is guided by the spirit of dialogue. What is important here is not the person who is implementing it, but the sustainability of the dialogue. There are certain key requirements of dialogue. Let me point out some, uh, a few of those. Faith in people and respect for the dignity of the human, enthusiasm and energy, perseverance, contacts and connections, people to people skills, organizational skills. So these are the few key requirements of dialogue. And there are also certain key principles of dialogue. Those are search for truth, listening as well as speaking as pointed out by Katami, discovery of the other and self, valuing what we hold in common, but also our differences, sharing the memories of the past, a past, experiencing the pain of the other, working together to meet social needs. These are key principles of uh, dialogue as uh, pointed out by Dr. Michaelis Michael. So uh, let me just uh, come to the conclusion. Let me just come to the conclusion by um, saying that, you know, uh, going into what Dr. Michael is Michael has said about dialogue, you know, I'm now trying my best to uh, find its relevance in, in, in resolving the uh, conflict that is going on in between our state and our neighboring state, which is um, Nagaland. So I'm in the process and I'm also looking forward to reading the book, which is yet to be published, The Art and Craft of uh, Dialogue to be uh, published by Dr. Michaelis Michael. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Salman. Sorry, I'm just trying to get myself uh, comfortable in my, in my chair. Now, we have um, Akbar. 
Akba, are you ready to go, Akba? Akba, are you there? Anugara Akba? I think Akbar is not here, sir. Oh, he's not there. Okay, that's fine. Um, then we have next on our list. We'll, we'll come back to Dilabar. Are you ready to go? Yes, I can go for it. Okay, thank you so much, Dilabar. But so someone you know, has to help me out to share my screen. Um, Devia? Bisatolo? Yeah, please, wait a minute. Okay. Have you sent to us, Dilawar? Should I send a presentation to you? Yeah, you have to send yes. the slides to us. Maybe you Just. can send the WhatsApp. Just give me a minute. I'm I'm right now. I'm sending it. Okay. While while you're doing that, Dilabar, is it okay if we go to Najiba? Uh, I'm not sure. She 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 was having a meeting in office, okay. so I don't know if she's okay. Okay. Um, so, sorry about this. Uh, what about Michael? Are you okay to go next? Um, I shared my presentation. Yes. Sorry? I have shared my presentation. Oh, you have? Okay, sorry about that. Sorry, sorry for the... Uh... So... Should I start now? Okay, Debian, are you ready? Uh, please wait a minute. I have to download it first. Okay. Just a moment. Sure. No, no worries. Yeah. And Michael, are you there? If you can go after deliver. Okay. okay. Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay. Just, just wait for. Okay. I'd actually thought of um, presenting when it's um, around 8 a.m. or 8.50 a.m. in Nigeria, because now it's about 5, okay, 6, 6 a.m. Oh, sorry. Um... <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, don't, don't worry. We, we will just uh, go on to ones who can do it, and then we'll come back to you, okay? So don't, don't oh. feel pressured. Okay. So, uh, so, hi, so everyone. Del so, Delavar? Oh, yeah, no. yeah, I'm ready. Hi everyone, and this is a presentation uh, uh, that I will try to complete it within five minutes. Is uh, I have already taken around one minute. So this is the outline of presentation, <clears throat> the course major learning and how I will be applying. Uh, why I, I choose this course, uh, why I, I put myself in some of like uh, between, uh, Although it was very difficult for uh, for professional person that if he or she has already commitment with an organization to work and despite of that that the family stuff and something else that that is very difficult for some at least in our context it's difficult but why I I choose to be part of this group because of my ambition towards peace professional commitment which is also related to the peace building. And my uh, academic plan, plan for future, which is the most important thing that I was uh, trying to be part of this course. And second interest, my interest was to acquire new skills, knowledge and expand my network uh, between the academia and also with other people uh, around the world who are working with a similar uh, theme. Why the third why is because we are living in conflict surrounded uh, area. <clears throat> mainly within uh, the area that I'm living in Pakistan, but with the neighbor countries, both of the neighbor countries, uh, we, we have a conflict. So it is better to understand, the, uh, to expand my origin on the conflict team and conflict transformation and peace building. That is, all, of course, a baby step towards my plan doctorate degree. <clears throat> Although uh, it was very difficult for me to 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 extract what should I share, but I try to to take uh, some of this these uh, points. So the first that the the first thing that I, I wanted to share that 
although I was working, I have been working with uh, the uh, around the uh, concept of peace, but it was first time for me to to understand the co concept of positive and negative peace. <clears throat> uh, even in uh, today, uh, if I, we are living in the arena, so uh, uh, although I can say that I'm living with a peace, but it has been ignored uh, and a neglected perspective that it is a negative piece that because we have been forced to be peaceful uh, and somehow and not to raise a voice for the rights. And uh, the medicine wheel was a reflective uh, tool for me because it helped me to reconnect to myself and to the nature and other people in the nature as well. Oh, uh, it was uh, one of my weakness that I, I could not focus on the entire four areas of the, uh, the medicine wheel. <clears throat> but after learning the medicine wheel, so uh, now oh, I'm trying to, to reflect on it weekly basis that where should I put my more time and should reduce. The politics of education uh, location expanded my worldview, like engaging locally and connecting globally through values conflict styles. So uh, earlier than that, uh, I was thinking like uh, any one tool can be uh, applied for every kind of conflict, but but I understand that every conflict is its own key to, to be uh, transformed. Practice of dialogue, <clears throat> why my earlier fellow already uh, uh, highlighted the importance of dialogue uh, in the peace building. Peace education edu and education, uh, peace education and education peace uh, on the critical perspective. Uh, although it was earlier in my perspective that we 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 have to to be more concerned in Pakistan, especially on the content that we we have uh, in schools, uh, which which may somehow I can say promoting uh, less peace or maybe uh, opposite to it. That that we have to be critical on it. <coughs> Sorry, non-violent communication. Uh, the the importance of non-violent communication. Although it was uh, in the professional life, we we practice it. But in the pa 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 patriarchal uh, society, uh, I, I personally I I speak for myself that I have to be every time to be conscious on this that my communication should not be violent in any perspective. Being a male dominant society, I will be more careful and more conscious on it. And, and the most important thing that, that which was a neglected perspective for my side, <coughs> I'm sorry for that, the, the interconnection between the peace and ecology. So uh, I, I was thinking like peace is only related to the people and the human being, but, but now I, I'm thinking in the other way that peace and ecology are interconnected. Uh, and the conflict uh, prevention, <clears throat> the, the role of, uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, the Indonesian case uh, of conflict prevention, uh, that I guess there was some uh, doctor from uh, the Muhammadiyah University who, who said. And uh, the, one other point they, that create, now I am critically analyzing the social media role. <clears throat> and also, I like the idea of peace games. And yesterday, I, I, I just discussed with one of my friends who were working with the young people, and they were having some support for young people, around 500,000 uh, for a youth group. So I, I shared this idea with them that they can go for it and have a peace games. They can, they can have this idea. So I will be working and trying more for it. And uh, the, this is one of okay, the idea um, that I might my, take. Michael, uh, sorry, uh, not Michael, uh, Delavar, your time is up, but uh, can you make but, the last? Yes, 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 thank <laughs> you. I'm sorry for that, I, I took much time. These are the future uh, steps that I will be, the peace circle concept will be, I will be trying to replicate uh, air with the young prisoners and madrasa student. Yeah. And possibility of uh, initiating a dialogue with the traditional values for conflict transformation and regular reflection on medicine. And thank you so much. I'm so sorry. I took so much time. Yeah. That's, that's okay. Thank you so much, Dilavar. And Michael, are you okay to go next? Yes, please. Are you sure? Okay. So um, you, you had a strong cup of coffee, I'm hoping. That's my. 
Okay. Um, okay, I want to share my screen and I'm saying that you cannot start screen share while the other participant is sharing. Okay, Dilawa, could you please stop sharing your screen? So can everyone see my screen now? Yes, we can, yeah. Okay. So um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Uh, I'll be presenting on the topic, peace, not just peace, but just peace. Um, this actually is a um, uh, taking me to uh, conceptualizing peace as not mere peace, not merely peace, but something that has to do with, you know, um, more, more ideas, more concepts than ordinary peace. Peace is not just ordinary peace, but it has to do with peace uh, with reference to justice. Okay, so, and uh, that brings me to the conceptualization of peace. As we already may have known that peace has to um, two distinct forms, the negative piece and uh, the positive piece. Excuse me. So negative, okay, negative piece and positive piece. Uh, where negative piece is the absence of war and positive piece um, is popularly and usually referred to as the structures, institutions, and attitude that um, create peaceful atmosphere. And according to Galton and Grewal, they actually, uh, support this notion of negative peace and positive peace uh, with their own distinction of negative peace as the absence of violence and negative peace as pessimistic, curative, and um, they believe that peace is not always by peaceful means. And uh, for positive peace, where positive peace is a structural integration and positive peace is optimistic, preventive, and they believe that uh, positive peace um, is is a concept where you know you get to achieve peace by peaceful means. So this brings me to the pillars of positive peace, as propounded by the Institute for Economics and Peace, where they believe that there are, there are eight pillars on which peace, positive peace, is built. And if these eight pillars are strengthened, that uh, positive peace would be achieved, and uh, of course would have sustainable peace. And as you can see in the, in the image, you have a well-functioning government, some business environment, equitable distribution of resources, low levels of corruption, free flow of information, acceptance of the rights of others, high levels of human capital, and good relations with neighbors. Um, so this is the basis of positive peace. And of course, if you uh, look at critically at dialogue, which is a fundamental aspect of um, conflict transformation and peace building, you see the relationship between dialogue and uh, the um, and uh, the acceptance of the rights of others, uh, where you are able to and, and free flow of information as well. Uh, the, the the relationship between you know these eight pillars um, uh, cannot be overemphasized because all of them are intertwined. While you are building one, you are also indirectly building the other. And if you are able to successfully build these eight pillars, then you must have achieved positive peace. So uh, dialogue, of course, um, uh, ecology, technology, and the environment, and the recognition of the nexus between human rights and, um, and nature rights, nonviolent communication, empathy, love, and compassion, and media are all subsets of positive peace, if we must achieve a positive peace. So, and when I think of conflict transformation, I always um, you know, have the resort to go back to dialogue, thinking about dialogue and the intentional resolve, and uh, to create safe spaces as the vital ingredients of peace building and transforming conflict. So I also think, think of conflict transformation as making positive outcomes of an extant conflict in such a manner that parties involved in such conflicts have their grievances turned into pieces of peace, which is a stepping stone for sustainable peaceful existence. So these are just um, slight pictures of some dialogue that I convened, that organization convened among traditional rulers and among um, you know, um, information information channels in some communities. And the other part of the topic, but just peace, which is talking about um, the presence of justice has to do, uh, I've, I've broken this down and I'll be talking more on nonviolence and nonviolent communication. 
uh, and according to Mahatma Gandhi, which says the world will live in peace only when the individuals composing it make up their minds to do so. Now, do they make up their minds to do so? It is by um, uh, imbibing the, 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 the skills of compassionate integrity and thinking of peace as the system. And when I talk about imbibing uh, peace, uh, the skills of compassionate integrity, I'm, I'm talking about um, imbibing the skills of calming their body and mind, compassion, emotional awareness, impartiality and common humanity, appreciating interdependence, gratitude and forgiveness. These are all important skills for every human being to inculcate if we must live in peace. And uh, of course, I will talk about the system thinking of peace as well and uh, peace education and culture of peace. Of course, we know that the, 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 the peace, if we think of peace as a system, we we'll first need to think of um, you know, a biological system as, um, as, as it is, we know the biological system is interconnected and um, you know, if a part cannot function without the other. So uh, that's how peace should be thought of as well. That peace is a system, it's a structure and every part of it should work hand in hand. And uh, to actually make um, you know, good meaning of this, we need to explore the historical and distance and cultural norms of communities, which actually give us um, you know, where a particular community is coming from, where they are going, why they behave the way they behave, and now we are able to like uh, actually, you know, uh, transform um, their attitudes and um, and uh, and practices. Then uh, we we'll stress the need to address all forms of violence, for direct, cultural, structural, and ecological. We have uh, different uh, forms of violence, and if we're able to address these forms of violence, of course, we we are tending towards a uh, positive peace and sustainable peace. So, and lastly here, we have peace thinking as a structure and process, yeah. Institutional, institutionalizing values of peace, uh, which is the absence of violence and the presence of social justice. Um, this is all I have to say within this uh, short period of time. And um, here I have uh, just, uh, you know, uh, some pictures from um, some of the events we organized in the past. This is the UNESCO culture of peace that says respect all life, reject violence, share with others, listen to understand, preserve the planet, rediscover solidarity. So we now see that peace is a system that has to do with everything that, um, that is on the planet, life, um, you know, um, life of humans and the planet as well. And uh, when some of our participants were asked, what does peace mean to them? And they actually said that peace means a lot of things. And we were able to just put this down, the absence of violence, presence of money, living in harmony, and sort of that. So thank, thank that you, is Michael. Yeah. My end. Thank you very much. Terry yes. Makasi. Terry Makasi and Sama Sama. Thank you so much for your presentation. And you. uh, now, next on my list is Irma, but Irma prefers to do it after lunch. So is um, Adabola, are you okay to go on? Um, Sorry. Adebola, are you okay to present next? No? Okay. Are you okay to present next, Adebola? Yes, oh, thank you. Oh, you are, sorry. You are another person who has, uh, I, I was looking down on my screen and I, Okay, you are above. Good, Adabola, please, please go ahead. What I meant is there are two of you. <laughs> you need to unmute, I think. Yes, I'm not ready for my presentation. Okay. Right? Oh, sorry. Okay. Present by eight. Yeah, three or five. Sorry. Oh, you're not ready. That's fine because we wanted to um, try to go as you know um, to try to complete as many as we can. But if you're not ready, it's fine. Um, can I go down to the next person, uh, Doctor Malay Patel? Are you ready to present? Okay, I'm ready. Can I share my screen? Yeah, please do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay. Can you share, see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah, that's okay. fine. Okay, fine. Uh, I am an, a professor in management. So what I thought was, uh, let me give you some brief about uh, peace and conflict resolution. Uh, a case, small case study from India, uh, a Bhutan movement. And now uh, this is this fellow actually uh, was a master in a uh, non-violent communication. And uh, what he did was <clears throat> he actually converted and uh, convinced a lot of landlords in India to give away their massive lands, uh, particularly to a lot of poor people out there. Uh, and uh, he was a staunch Gandhian, particularly, who believed um, of a rural, uh, sustainable villages, particularly to collect land as a gift to zamindars and rich farmers out there. So the mechanism is uh, he went on foot uh, and pursued the large landowners to donate at least one sixth of the land so the poorest of the poor can be actually accommodated in the mainstream crops. Can you can you speak can you speak up because your uh, voice is uh, somewhat okay. soft. It's, yeah. Okay. Uh, is it okay now? Yeah, it's a it's better, but okay. yeah, that's that's fine. Go ahead, please. Okay. So uh, the target was particularly fifty million acres of land, particularly a pure actually gift. Okay, uh, that is a donation of land. A Bhutan worker would have prepared a deer particularly. Uh, then uh, the first preference was given to the landless uh, agriculture laborers, then to the farmers with insufficient land. The date was fixed, entire village gathered, and the beneficiary families were given land. Uh, those who received the donations were asked to sign the printed application requesting for a land, after which they were presented with certificates of having uh, received land. No fees charged from the beneficiaries, and beneficiaries were accepted to um, expected to cultivate the land for at least ten years, and he should land uh, start within three years of the receipt of land. Uh, the positives were particularly the initial years. The movement achieved a uh, considerable degrees of success, especially in North India, that is in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. And by 1956, uh, receiving over four million acres of land as a donation. And by 1957, 4.5 million acres were being given. This movement helped to reduce the gap in house and have not in the rural areas. Uh, there were some obstacles as well. The process was slow. There was a bribery out there, a donation of bogus land, which is cheap dead land, politization and lack of support. But out and out, they actually were able to do it because uh, there was a strong uh, spiritual support from Mahatma Gandhi, uh, the, the freedom fighter of India. And uh, Bhavi's idea was of the land gift movement was conceived in 1951, walk from village to village, appealing for lands uh, to be distributed among the landless. Okay, so uh, the, the larger idea which he says or shares with this, all revolutions has a spiritual at the source. Uh, all my activities are the sole purpose of achieving the union of hearts. Uh, the purpose of peace building is not to terminate the enemy, but to terminate the conflict. The resolution of conflict requires understanding, tenacity, courage, and strategic skills. It requires a dialogue, talking with the opponent. This method may not always succeed, but nor does the violence. This is what Mahatma Gandhi says about this. Uh, the conflict resolution and transformation and peace building done by Vinoba Bhava had a three techniques out there. One is uh, non-violent communication. He was a very soft-spoken leader, particularly. He convinced people particularly by heart, transforming their heart. Secondly, he had an actually a zeal of a servant leadership. As a leader goes and actually serves the larger community out there as a servant. And finally, a gift economy where he just asked people to give the, the, uh, the large landowners a small piece of land so that there might be a peace in the entire village area. So he wanted to have um, a transformation from transaction to trust. Correct. So this is the case which is actually a, um, a landmark case in India where without no actually legal liabilities, no coercion, just with the negotiation and actually pursuance of the people, he was able to convert particularly uh, um, the landowners to give away their land. And this is actually an achievement in itself. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Malay. And um, 
now what we shall do is we will go for a break um, for about now I need to talk to you about the break too. Would it be possible if it's okay with all of you that we have a shorter uh, break for today? Would that be okay? Sure, no, Professor. So what we shall do is um, we will have a break now. Mas Ari from 12.30 Indonesian time to one o'clock. Yes. Is that okay for all of you? Yes, Professor. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for that. And so we will resume at one o'clock. And, um, and I think we, this will give us some time to end towards the, well, towards the end, uh, we will have some time to talk about future projects and how we can all kind of come together. And um, so far the presentations have been fabulous and there are lots of different ideas that have been presented and I think it'd be good for us to at least have some time to think about those. So I will see you after your break. Um, Alberto, can I have just, uh, just a moment? Yeah, sure. Thank you. I, I just um, wanted to say goodbye to everyone because I am going to bed. <laughs> it's 12.30 for me now and now. It's midnight, mm -hmm. so I, I, we, we ain't seeing each other again, but I just wanted to thank everyone uh, from the group, Alberto, Ari, and all the, the team. It's been a wonderful experience. I've learned a lot, and uh, I'm very happy to have uh, meet you all. I hope we can meet face-to-face -face at some point. Thank you very much to all thank of you. you. Thank yeah. you. Bonas, bonas noches. Buenas Is it correct? No. Bonas Gracias. noches. Buenas noches. <laughs> Adios, Please gracias. take care. Love you. Okay. See, I, I've seen pictures. I, okay, the recording has begun. All right. Um, are you all back? Yes, Professor. Yes, sir. Okay. So we will resume with the presentations and uh, let me just check my the list I have here. So, uh, Deeting, are you okay to go now? Deeting? Uh, yeah, I are think you, I can. <laughs> you can? Sure. Okay. <laughs> are you okay to go? Yes, I think, yeah, I will share my screen. All right, that's wonderful. Thank you. So you can see the slide, I think. Okay, please go ahead, yeah, stop. Mm. Uh, so I'm not going to do any reflections, I think. I'm just uh, simply wants to introduce this uh, Asian Chinese philosopher uh, who's, uh, who was in the Ming Dynasty. And like the first... He was a politician, as the English introdu uh, the introductions that I can find in English was. He was a politician, but in Chinese characters, we use this which means a person who is going to cure or to manage the areas he's going to take them. So I don't like the words of politician, so I was kind of doubt doubting. And there are two aspects that he used during his governance or whatever it comes. Uh, the first one is, comes from the Confucianism, I think, and it caused the Yue Wenhua, which is using a lot of art forms to deepen yourself first, and then you, you will be able to communicate, understand, and build healthy relationships with the unknown. For example, like he used this approach to get close with the ethnic groups 
in the areas. And the second one is the Xiangxian Wenhua, which is to use the local people to help them to deal in the conflict issues themselves. So as to foster the virtues or the goodness within everyone, and so as to create this friendly and healthy space to share. And the second, he was a military general, according to the English introduction, but I really prefer a psychologist or a teacher because when he was you know, handling those kind of conflicting issues, he was using the psychology. Like, like in our ways is conflict analysis, but I don't like it as well. So I see it like, see the needs of the conflicting parties and kind of after that, like take actions to meet the needs of each of them. And this is the Chinese phrases that he used, which is to, he says like, to eat, it is very easy to arm yourself to fight against, but it, it is not easy to see the whole picture of the self and the others and the surroundings. Sorry for the noises. And the second is to uh, which is to bring the teaching of practice, pra pra practicing uh, whenever you go and whatever you are doing. And he also bringing these processes to the battlefield because most of his students was, was enforced to, to enter the war. And the second, uh, the last point is like, he's a philosopher, uh, the English, but I would like to say sage, which the Chinese characters like Shenzhen. And he said that uh, everyone is, or can be a sage since we were all born good. And like, we have this goodness within ourselves and the, the problem is how can you foster, how can you grow, how can you flourish that good, goodness within yourselves through every kinds of practicing and experiencing things. So it's like, I don't like the words peace. <laughs> I, I think it's very much about to see into the inner self and to, to, to be clear, transparent, and to, to keep the virtue that you originally have. And maybe you have to cry because you will saw the dark side of yourself, but it's just okay. And it's like if every living being has a healthy inner self. So I think our relationships with the human beings, the creatures, the nature will be healthy and the space we are sharing will also be healthy. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you. You Thank you. That, that was right on time. Okay, um, well done. Thank you so much, Dating. Now, on my list, I have Alex, but I don't think Alex is here. Um, and is there anyone who would mind or wouldn't mind going next? I can go next, if that's all right. Yes, Rafia is fine. Yeah. You want to so yeah, it's morning, it's still morning in Kashmir. So good morning, everyone. I'm going to present a summary of my reflective paper because my paper is too long and it will take an hour to discuss everything that I've mentioned there. So I, I would start now. So 12 days of rigorous hard work, grit and determination. It has finally enabled, you know, all of us to reach the end of this international course on conflict transformation and peace building. And to be very honest, this program has been very enlightening and it has added to my perspectives towards conflict analysis. Since I'm pursuing my majors uh, in the same subject, it has, you know, it has helped me a lot. It has just polished whatever knowledge I had. And I got to learn a lot, a lot from each one of you. 
so it has you know complemented my knowledge of peace building and widened my horizon to a great extent icctp has been you know instrumental in enabling me to acquire skills for conflict transformation that are a must for any peace builder who is serving his or her community honestly all the sessions have been engaging and productive i don't want to compare them because each session has been unique in its own sense however um the in the initial sessions i was very touched by dr gloria uh, abarka session on peace circles in the especially in the discussion session we shared our individual experiences and i realized how value driven a process it is how it promotes understanding how it helps us to bring multiple perspectives to table and builds on the value of respect honesty truth active listening so on and so forth and how peace circles promote the art of storytelling you know i i strongly believe that everyone has a story to offer and stories help people unite in their common humanity to help them appreciate the depth and beauty of human experience so peace circles they in a way help in bringing people together as equals to have honest exchange about you know difficult issues and painful experiences an atmosphere of respect and concern for everyone is created especially in the breakout rooms you know i i saw people you know with wide and divergent perspectives come together to speak candidly about their experiences of conflict pain anger and you know and leave those conversations feeling good about themselves and about others so uh, it can be said you know that the participants of the peace circle they benefit from the collective wisdom of everyone they are not div uh, divided into givers and receivers because everyone is playing a role you know of, bo of both we are both receivers and givers so yeah it was it was quite an enlightening experience and i think the reading section like after the end of every session we had a certain list of readings i was mostly you know touched by that little book on conflict transformation which is authored by john paul lagerac uh, so yeah when i first read that book you know i read that twice when i read it for the first time the first thing that came to my mind was the analogy was the analogy of the duck because i think that best you know explains the content context and the structure of the lenses that lederach mentions in a very comprehensive manner i just want you all to recall the imagery of a swimming duck in the water it it appears to be so surreal and effortless from the outside you know it it's just pleasing the aesthetics of it but it's only when we take a dip inside the water we get to see the struggle that the duck is having with the water i haven't prepared a presentation but yeah i do have a picture yeah just a second I i'll share my screen is it visible so this is how it looks from the outside you know it's so surreal it's so soothing but what lederach wants us to do is to see beyond what is being presented the struggle that the duck has with the water for its survival am i audible Hey, yes you are yes yes, yes okay <laughs> <laughs> i was like maybe i'm just speaking with myself and the session that we had on decolonizing peace which emphasized you know the importance of reclaiming the indigenous uh, methods of conflict resolution that was also very insightful furthermore this entire program has allowed me to grow personally professionally and it has helped me to be a better version of myself lastly i want to convey my special thanks to my favorite professor and dr alberto gomez director of beat network for his constant support uh, you know because that has helped me you know in you know stimulating my energy and keeping up with the program dr ari paxi mass edam badru zaman after being the student i can proudly say that i've learned from the best in the field i also want to thank all the esteemed presenters who took out time and imparted knowledge to us by sharing their expertise i also want to extend my gratitude to zikri luna sassy zulfran and divya 
for their constant assistance and all my colleagues. I have learned so much from all of you that, you know, I'm going to cherish all the teamwork, all the stories that we shared and the engaging discussions we had, especially in the breakout rooms for the rest of my life. And, you know, the breakout rooms have a story. Since we know it's not being recorded, we had our cameras on and we used to have the most candid conversations. Thank you so much. I think I've, I've just exceeded my time. Thank you so much, everyone. Love you all. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much, Rafia. After all those very gracious things that you have said about us, we just wanted you to have more time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Um, now, is Akbar there? Yes, I'm here. Would you like to go next, Akbar? Uh, yes, can. Uh, hello. Salaam. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Do yes. you call me or do you call me? <laughs> I I called, sorry, um, uh, Anu, Anugra Akbar. Yes, Professor, I am here. Oh, you're there. Would you, would you mind going next? No problem. Uh, uh, let, no problem. Please. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Who is it's speaking? okay, Akbar. You can uh, oh. proceed. Okay. Okay. I I think it's okay, for Professor. I think I can start present mine. That's that's wonderful. Okay, all yours, uh, Akbar. Allow me to share the screen first. Do we call you Akbar? Or do we call you Anugra? Ah, uh, you can call me Akbar, sir, Professor. Is it visible now? Yes, yes it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to, uh, for me to present uh, this and uh, what uh, two weeks that uh, I've uh, already experienced. I, I learned a lot of thing, a lot of stuff that I never learned before and uh, first uh, i would uh, start to uh, explain what icctp mean for me so uh, what i can reflect icctp uh, has provided me such experience to understand the essence of uh, peace and conflict in a broader uh, perspective and a deeper meaning instead of what I've uh, known uh, before I take uh, the course and I learned from the expert uh, but it's not like learning like a student and experts experience but uh, we engage in very active learning and also participants from the various background which allow me to have uh, to get their perspective uh, that I've never uh get before and also i uh, can discuss with a lot of friends as well and uh, the courses also enable the participants i think uh, particularly for me to connect more within uh, what is peace building in more practical way so i would like uh, to uh, highlight the concept of uh, paradigm before i proceed so i think when I uh, talking about peace, it is very important to recognize uh, the power of paradigm because the paradigm is the source of all of the things that uh, will uh, follow uh, all of our actions, what we make. So um, I believe that once we embed uh, the paradigm of peace in our mind, so the peace itself will follow. So the rest will follow. So and next is when i'm talking about uh, the reflection uh, of myself before the uh, before and after the course so i i think i could uh, such a uh, conclude uh, this uh, reflection so beforehand uh, i tend to think that peace is such an utopia thing and defined by singular paradigms and it's a matter of interstate and uh, political range because i think it's also 
uh, influenced by my own identity, who who we are, yeah, and I am an international relations student, so I tend to think that conf conflict is unavoidable and peace it's almost impossible to attain. But after the course, I learned that this actually started within uh, our own self and and um it is such also is uh, such a continuous process which i try to believe that instead of thinking that uh conflict is unavoidable so which is conflict is the center of the attention so i think peace should be the center of the attention which we should uh, uh which we should think that peace is such a continuous uh, process instead of thinking that conflict is uh, such an uh, unavoidable thing and also I started to believe that uh, every one of us could be the, ag the agent of peace and what I've observed that all aspects around us is actually influence uh, the creation of peace which maybe we try we some kind uh, me myself uh, kind of underestimate what uh, things around me which is maybe from the very atomic things is actually influenced uh, the creation of peace which uh, professor alberto gomez also introduced about the ecocentric approach in uh, peace ecology in which uh, we should uh, see more uh, around us particularly in our ecology in our environment and i'm also exposed uh, with the significance of peace mindset because yeah as i explained before that when i have the mindset of peace i believe that uh, i could uh, manage to sustain a peace culture and also i can uh, discover more my, about my identity to understand conflict around me so i believe that peace is started from us so uh, these courses allow me to observe that i, I should have to discover my identity and such as uh, the, co the, the context of politics of location that uh, we have in the lecture uh, presented by Dr. Jennifer Murphy and from that I could uh, understand what uh, the conflicting things uh, around me so I could start to solve it and from all of the courses and the lecture of course I, I have to conclude some things that maybe I could improve personally so i i perceive that i should uh, try to interact with all aspects around me since it influences peace and i need to maintain uh, the peace paradigm in for my peace of mind and for maintain a peace culture and uh i it's it's open my horizon as well that uh, the communication is very important things because communication is un uh, separated and unavoidable uh, for us as a human being to interact so it is very important to manage non-violent communication while we try to uh, share our empathy care and compassion towards the others and also i have i i need to understand uh, the conflict uh, around me and start to face it instead of underestimate uh, the conflict itself even the most atomic one and to conclude uh these two weeks has been worked for the rest of my life i believe and i believe it's also the same for other participants as well and the ictp uh, has restored the way i think about peace and guide me to manage uh, the peace culture and i think the most important one is evoking the sense of humanity inside uh, every one of us so we could develop uh, the peace culture so i think that's all from me uh, professor thank you for the opportunity Terima kasih banyak, oh, yeah. Mas, uh, Mas Akbar. Terima kasih banyak. Thank you, Professor. Yeah. Okay. Um, we now we will uh, go to Salva. Salva, are you ready? Hello, Professor. Yes, I am. Uh, uh, would it be all right for me to share screen? It's not much, but yeah, yeah. Please do. Yes. Uh... All right. Okay, can we, yeah, we can okay. see you, but uh, not your screen. All right, um, I'm sharing my screen right now. Sure, okay. 
So do we call you Salva or do we call me call you Ranita? Uh, Salva would be nice. <laughs> okay, good. Ranita right. is just for formality. <laughs> okay, so we'll call you Salva. All yeah. right. So thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I must first apologize for missing my turn because I just got back home right now, and. I guess there are several things that I'd like to reflect on this course and all of you might be wondering why is my screen a picture of roses and they're also in odd colors such as yellow and blue which is maybe some of you have encountered yellow rose but I don't think any of you have encountered blue rose so flowers has always uh, flowers have always have special meaning to me uh, so let me just explain first the definition of blue rose. So blue rose often being translated as unattainable or something impossible, while yellow rose is something that is always described as positive, uh, the symbol of friendship, love, empathy, and compassion. So why is this picture here? This is exactly how I feel about peace after I was in this course. So the thing about uh, the thing is before joining this course, I was ignorant. I, I always considered myself as a realist, someone that thought peace, world peace is something that is unattainable, impossible. Why would someone work so hard to achieve peace? When I joined this course, I realized there, the answer is one. The reason why peace is so impossible in my point of view is because I never done anything to try to achieve it. So when I saw people here is so dedicated with their study about peace, such as Dr. Surwandono with his proposal, uh, Dr. Jennifer Murphy with the conflict transformation, Dr. Alberto Gomez with uh, his, uh, his lecture about peace ecology, the lecture about love and empathy, I realized that these people here gathered here have done a lot of things to achieve peace. And also the Ruma Bacha by Miss Enas, that leaves a really huge impression in me. So from thinking about peace is something that is impossible to attain, something that should not be achieved, something that cannot be achieved, I started to think that it may be possible for us to work together, to work as a team, to achieve, achieve peace. Maybe not world peace, but even peace in such a smaller state, in smaller area, is still considered as, as something big. So that's where my optimism that perhaps it's, it's possible. The optimism of wanting to do more for people, wanting to achieve something, wanting to give more to people that is far underprivileged than me, those who live in conflicted areas, those who, uh, doesn't, uh, those who doesn't enjoy the same privilege as me. And when I, uh, and I see these people doing that and, this is how I feel from some, from feeling that it's just not going to happen into at least having hope. And I really hope that I can do something big as what people here have, do, uh, have done, like educating us in to be more aware and et cetera. And second, I realized that I've taken everything for granted. My privilege, having good life, having good parents when the lecture about conflicts, about issues, indigenous people and their identity being oppressed. I realized that they didn't get the basic needs that I don't have. And I guess my, uh, I hope that those people who can't be here, who can't have a good education can have better life. They can have better life in the future. And if I could, and I would try to, I'd like to give a better world for these people, like how everyone in this chat room have tr uh, have done their best to give the best life for people around them. So yeah, that concludes my presentation and my reflection. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, Salva. That's that's fantastic, and you kept to the to the time, which is an achievement it, by itself. Okay, <laughs> you're welcome, Professor. <laughs> Thank you. So the next person to present is Najiba, and after Najiba, we have Irma. Uh, so, yes, Najiba, are sure. you ready? I'm ready. Um, so I'm turning on my screen for the first time, I think. Um, so anyone who has not seen me, hi, I'm Najiba. Um, I have just come back from a very important meeting. I'm sorry I could not appear earlier. Um, I would like to share my screen. Uh, my screen. So um, this is uh, basically my reflection from, from the course, um, uh, where I try to capture some very important element um, uh, from, uh, from these uh, few days engagement. Uh, so for me, the most important part of uh, the course was like, there were few tools which, which I particularly uh, like to speak about. Um, uh, which um, includes that uh, I like the concept of this, uh, the peace circle uh, in the storytelling element of uh, it. Um, I felt it, it was very engaging tool, uh, uh, um, which uh, can be incorporated in my own routine work. I, basically, I work with uh, young people so who we call youth, 16 to uh, 25 uh, age old. Uh, despite of the fact that working with peace um, on peace building, I was not very much aware of the concept of uh, of few concepts which were um, uh, discussed in the course, like a positive and negative uh, peace. And this um, uh, this aspect, I'm going to consider while working with young people uh, here in Pakistan. Um, I would like this. This has further advanced my understanding on reading, uh, reflection, and writing. Um, yeah, in the same way, uh, uh, the medicine wheel. Um, um, uh, I must say that uh, it was a, a wonderful tool of reflection and uh, creating. Um, uh, uh, space uh, as a person for me and for people who I work with and uh, the overall society. Um, uh, it, um, there are um, there is another takeaway for from this course for me is like uh, when we uh, the session uh, was on use of social media for uh, peace trans uh, transformation. Um, uh, I, I had an opportunity to reflect that how young people are subjugated to uh, different. Uh, stereotypical uh, behavior here and not letting them use uh, uh, social media. And they actually don't uh, really know that how to use it effectively. So this was very surprising and very enriching uh, element of the, the course that I, I learned that how uh, video games or uh, games can be used to uh, for the conflict transformation. So this aspect was very important uh, one for me. Um, um, it's, it's the same way that the, um, uh, uh, during the course, the conflict theater dialogue, theater or theater dialogue was uh, discussed, and this was uh, very um, uh, uh, connecting for me because we use uh, theater, uh, theater for uh, conflict transformation. But I didn't know theater dialogue. Theater can be um, uh, used as a as a tool for preventing uh, um, violence and. In, escalating uh, conflict. Um, we cannot ignore the importance of um, um, uh, uh, communication or um, uh, nonviolent communication in uh, conflict uh, uh, resolution or transformation. So the nonviolent communi uh, non communication uh, has broadened my understanding uh, uh, um, uh, further. Um, we use these tools uh, with young people and um, I know that how effective this is uh, in my context working in, in, uh, with youth in, uh, from uh, different ethnic and uh, sectarian uh, divides and they, uh, they, they actually do not understand how, uh, how important it is, it is to know about non using nonviolent as a, as a way of connecting with others. Um, 
uh, I also uh, understood the connectors and dividers in co conflict uh, situations and transformation of uh, uh, conflict towards the um, just societies if you want to work with. So um, uh, I also tried whenever I um, uh, try to participate in a, in a course, I try to uh, see um, in every bit, I am more concerned that how I can apply it uh, into my own work. Because if I do not practice what I learned from, uh, from somewhere or from a course, I usually forget it easily. So this is how I, I thought that I can apply a few of the areas from, uh, from the course, like uh, one of it is uh, peace, uh, ecology, um, and the conflict transformation uh, framework um, in specifically other, um, uh, as compared to other uh, tools. So um, working with the um, uh, diverse groups like uh, ethnically or religiously or sectarian, uh, having sectarian divides, I feel that theater dialogue can be an effective tool to give them an opportunity to uh, interact peacefully. I will also be um, developing training session. Uh, I, I do a lot of trainings in, in Pakistan and outside Pakistan. So if uh, I, I also understand that the conflict uh, situation sometimes is very, very similar with young people um, uh, to the Pakistani context. I'll be using a few of the tools um, here. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to the amazing team. You all kept it very organized and my time is over. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Najiba. And uh, I should probably also mention that you and Dilibar uh, run the the empathy circle. How do you say yes. that in Urdu? Oh, we say it uh, hamdardi ka daira. Okay. Yes. Sounds sounds so um, yeah. It, it's it sounds so appealing in Urdu. Yes. Urdu. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, Najiba. Okay, we will move to the next person. Who Irma? Are you ready to go? Uh, yeah, bro. I think I've sent my slide to the team. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, just give me a second. I'll just check with them. Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, shall I start? Hello. <laughs> yes, uh, please go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry. Because my connection is pretty bad, so I'm not sure if oh, you can yeah, hear me clearly. Yeah, that's okay. We can hear uh, you. So, okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Irma Guzman Alonto, and I'm from Sabah, Malaysia. Uh, peace greetings uh, to all of you. So uh, today I'd like to share some of my thoughts uh, from my reflective paper. So uh, for the past uh, few days, I can conclude that I can't help but uh, seeing the relation or connection of the topics that we've learned uh, through the lens of a human security concept. But I will not go through all the details of the concept itself, but I'm just going to elaborate uh, some elements um, that I think is relatable to this course uh, as a whole. So um, next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, first, uh, allow me to introduce uh, briefly about uh, the human security concept. Uh, it is a concept that involves uh, non-traditional uh, security issues uh, that aims to provide uh, security to the society and views uh, the security of an individual at the top of uh, priorities. So as you can see in the slide, there are many uh, small circles that surround the word human security. So actually they are the seven elements of human security, but uh, today I'm just gonna uh, talk briefly about the two elements which 
are uh, community security and personal security, which I think are uh, relatable uh, with the sessions that we've uh, learned uh, throughout this uh, course. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. So um, just briefly, uh, political security is uh, mainly associated with the threat of violence. So the term violence is rather wide and it could be abuse, um, religious conflicts, cross-border terrorism, or any other form of physical violence. But uh, I would also like to add that violence can also be done verbally, especially in, in social media. For example, cyberbullying, uh, as what we've uh, discussed uh, during the session of Dr. Joanne Lim. So I think in order to prevent such uh, violence to exist in our community, in our society, I personally uh, think that the nonviolent communication skills should come into the picture. As Dr. Veda has explained in his session, I think the five uh, basic pillars of uh, the Gandhi's nonviolence, uh, which are respect, understanding, acceptance, appreciation, and compassion, are important to preserve the personal security uh, of the society. So second is uh, the community security. So it is a component uh, of human security, which link uh, to the threats um, on the integrity of cultural diversity, uh, discrimination against indigenous groups and refugees and any other issues that denies the freedom of a community. So actually I came across this element when learning about transformation, especially uh, the sessions from Mas Idham and uh, also uh, Prof Alberto that talk about the indigenous uh, groups in Malaysia and Indonesia. So I myself think that the peace and innocence of the indigenous groups sh should also be preserved, but at the same time, um, their rights uh, should also not be overlooked. So um, last slide. Yeah, that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you for um, all the amazing experience uh, throughout this course. Terima kasih banyak. Thank you so much. Is Irma? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Prof. Okay. So now, um, Adebola, are you ready to go? Or if you're not, we can go on to the next person. Adebola? Okay, let's go to... Uh, Next on my list is Afifa. Are you ready to go, Afifa? Inshallah, uh, prof Professor. You ready to, to present? Inshallah, Professor. Uh, yes, can. Okay. Terima kasih. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Yeah, yeah. Okay, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Uh, and very good day to all of you. My, my reflective view of the course title, Our Peace Aspiration. Basically, the reason I joined this uh, course is due to my curiosity, why we have to endure all the destruction of war, although we are innocent and uh, not the cause of the war. Even we did not know all, at all how it has started. Suddenly we heard the missiles in the air and the intercepting missiles, uh, and terrifying noises, fill our heart with with great terror and trigger existential crisis from the existential threat, which is worsened when the COVID-19 struck. I had experienced post-traumatic syndrome disorder, PTSD myself, in the beginning of my stay here. I remember my neighbors taught us uh, to go under the table if we suddenly heard any loud sound. I never imagined to live in a war zone area. That is how the word conflict buzzed me. I realized more about the conflict, especially in the Middle East, from our weekend recreative treat at the park, 
where gender is segregated by circle as culturally accepted norm. I related the circle I had at the park uh, with my female friends with the circle at Peace Talk uh, Bugloria Gave. It is comprised of the wives of the lecturers here. They originated from Jordan, Palestine, Syria, Yemen, Algeria, Egypt, Sudan, India, Pakistan, Cuba, Russia. Like in the circle piece, we relaxedly discuss about the conflicts we face, either about experiencing war here, new casualties, latest news on the issue, the ongoing or worsening issues in the Middle East, even the conflict occurred in each family. The stories go on and on. We sort of knew the solution, as Boo Gloria said, it will have a magic to present the solution from the circle dialogue. Some solutions are not at our hands. So we just endure like the war here in Syria, in Yemen, in Palestine, or the Arab Spring experience in Egypt, Algeria, or Sudan, even being marginalized like in Cuba and Russia as Muslim minority. Then I began to realize that the circle is not yet into conflict uh, transformation, but resolution in Bujani's talk. She made me realize that I could actually relate the methodology I was exposing in the academic setting outside within the conflict setting with regards to post-colonial, decolonial, or indigenizing, as much as why we need to Islamize, like with the white supremacy here. The core is relevant to the conflict issue and on how we as humans respond to it. The cases study from Indonesia and Philippines uh, are also very revealing, and the Middle East should be educated as well as Pak Gomez and uh, company already promoted. As a Malaysian, we are educated as a peace agent. So I'm already being actively involved in, in peace educating, especially through nonviolent communication within my peace circle in the park. Like uh, when I was asked, why, why, you did, why you did not curse? So I told them that is, uh, it was stemmed from my mom's education, who took it seriously to ethics, especially to say no to cursing and uh, reintroducing back the social ethics to promote social justice from the Surah al hujurat to my circle, which is very relevant in maintaining peace in our peace ecology. Among the recommended ethics are to feel that all humans are our relatives, regardless of any factor. To always try to glue back broken relationships between, between two human beings from a grudge, not to feel superior. Maybe they are better than the ones who feel superior in many ways, like being men over women not to assume, but verify. Also to get to know people as interesting individual, as a person deep within, although from different races, ethnic tribes, countries, continents, because genetically we are related. It goes back to the belief system we have in our mind. Usually human are good. They will avoid to have to deal with their conscience because it will be undesirably distressing. It was a normal thing for us to see child abuse, aggression among children, verbal abuse in the spot cycle, uh, circle, sorry. By the time the unpeaceful acts are lessening, when I exchange experience and scenarios, how we are living in multicultural Malaysia. Also, the longer we are together with the frequent meetings at the park, we've come closer to each other. So feel the love for all of us and missing each other too much other during summer vacation annually. I feel happy to convey a Malay dish of peace peace promotion, tak kenal maka tak cinta. Meaning if you do not get to know someone, it is hardly for you to feel love for them. When you feel love, commonly you will avoid harm and care for their well-being. That is important to maintain peace among humankind. Finally, it dawns on the individual's belief system make up and attitudes that are influenced by it, like being known in the theory of reason action. And academically, I will continue to contribute to promote peace through the Islamic psychology in what fits us as Muslim in resolving the constant dissonance, especially cognitively. We are imposed to experience to accept the colonial way in everything. It is a way to appreciate and return back to our lost legacy at being local in peace building efforts. And thank you all of you for everything. The ecology of this course is a very deep, meaningful event in my life that will eternally mark my individual self-growth chart. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alaikum salam yeah. Thank you so much, Afifa. Terima kasih banyak. Um, and now, uh, Mas Ari will take over.
Okay. Uh, we continue to the next presenter, Fawaz. Is Fawaz here? Let me check in the participant list. I can see Fawaz. Fawaz? Maybe we go to, to Moji. Moji, are you okay to present next? Moji? Can I present next? Okay. Uh, yeah. Because my light went off and my mobile phone is not charged enough, so I have a doubt that I cannot be able to do it with after five minutes. So may I? Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when I started this course two weeks ago, I have a very doubtful uh, means definition about peace so now when i after these two weeks uh, life go on i think peace is a phenomenon which is hard to define but we know what it is when we see it. when we see someone in the peace we know that person or that state or that community in the peace we cannot define the peace at that way that elimination of a war is a peace or everyone is happy in the in your circle is at peace because everyone is struggling their own efforts and their own point worries at that time so for me peace is a thing we can enjoy when we see and we can define it when we see it. as a pakistani as a muslim girl and and luckily we have a very opportunities in my life i have very different location politics about peace or politics location of peace so when i see my neighboring state like afghanistan i think elimination of the war is peace for them yes elimination of the war is a peace but for my society as a pakistani that we are not in war but we don't have peace so we can in the situation of Pakistan, we can easily assume what is negative peace and what is positive peace. During this session, we realized that during this session, as a student of IR, we realized that peace is a thing that comes from inside, not from outside. If, uh, as a student of IR, we say that UNO do that, UNO will do that, or other states will do that. IGOs have these duties, NGOs have these duties, MNCs can produce a piece, but it is not possible, uh, which I realize that I can come to rest after this course and this efforts of your Dr. Alberto. So that when the piece is inside from you, you can automatically learn the active listening from correct communication. Someone is. Am I? Uh, when peace comes inside from from you, so we can know what is the active listening, what is the non violent communication, real meaning of dialogue, peace educate, peace education, peace ecology, philosophy, importance of local values can also be justified and also be appreciated during the peace system peace circles uh, as a doctor glorious session of peace circles i am very big fan of that session and ma'am gloria about peace circles and how can we transform conflict and spread peace from one person to another person because of these peace circles we can give our inner energy inner peace to the other person through the active listening and so only with the justice that I am here with for you. I am listening to you. I am here for you. And that can bring peace to the other conflictual person. That is a very good and very big phenomena for the world. And, and as an student of international nature, so I want international peace. So I come to know that inner peace can transform to the society and social peace can transform to the nation and national national peace can transform to the international peace and we can 
live in that we can wish for that international peace in a long live in the long lifetime but we can pursue with the one person to another with not only with the conflict transformation but transformation of peace to one to another person and at the end i want to appreciate the uh, indonesian government and indonesian government's way of conflict resolution because it is giving hope to me that we can resolve our issues we can be radicalized our population our tribe or our issue, uh, conflicts around and other states can also uh, transform their conflicts to the peaceful version and last but not the least i want to appreciate the efforts of dr alberto gon and mas eri mas idham sasha aisha bubakar and divya and so many people i have i haven't come to know that active team who can actively participating as a participant or as a secretary to resolving every issue and transforming peace through their project and i love icccp at the end thank you so much thank you tuba for the sweet word and then for your comments regarding the sscdv program and your reflective uh, ideas about the uh, you know presentation of the presenters okay thank you uh, so much master we stay blessed yeah stay blessed we continue to uh next presenter prof andrew um professor yes yes okay this is moji maybe if i can come in okay 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 you can go moji okay thank you very much professor uh i would like to share my screen Yes, please. Okay. Um, I'm trying to do that. Okay. Okay. Can Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes, I can see. Okay. Um, I want to first start by saying that. Uh, this course has really uh, broadened my mindset and uh, opened me to new perspective on conflict transformation and peace building. I have learned a lot from different uh, professionals and I've also widened my network through this uh, uh, course. And I can really say that I'm so privileged to be part of, the, of this training. And I really thank you, Professor, for giving us the opportunity. Um, I, have, I am a young uh, peace builder from Nigeria. And um, I, ha I have a youth organization that I am promoting uh, uh, peace education uh, and, and peace building, uh, looking at it from the uh, women, young women involvement. Uh, and and um, most, mostly I, I, I engage in uh, facilitation, you know, training of young people and uh, and I, I really find this uh, course to have you know, equipped me with a lot of uh, skills that will help me to do my facilitation. And uh, uh, for the past one week that uh, we've, been, we've been having this uh, training, I've, I've learned new things, new words. And one of the most striking one is uh, uh, I find very, very, very important in my, in my peace building facilitation is the, is the peace, uh, peace circle. Uh, um, I, really, I really like the peace circle because it's, uh, it talks about how to create a safe space you know, for, for conflict transformation and for peace building. Uh, it talks about how to bring, you know, diverse people together, maybe uh, having people who are having uh, kind of disagreements or disputes, or just to even create conversation among, among uh, a diverse group of people. And if you look at the context of Nigeria, we have uh, a lot of people, different ethnic groups, tribes, religious groups. And, uh, and, and I know that peace building is one thing that talks about everybody coming together to, 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 to be as one. So I find the, the, the peace circle as, as something that is going to be very useful for me. 
in 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 my in my work as a peace builder uh i love the idea that the the, the peace circle talks about creating a conversation that is based on dignity equality uh, i i love i love that so much and it's also talking about uh uh solution you know uh people-led solution creating people-led solution and and i find that's also very important you know in my peace building work and um I, I, as a facilitator or uh, peace building facilitator i also you know love the idea of deep listening active listening creating uh 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 atmosphere where people listen to each and everyone uh i find that the peace circle is going to really uh promote my work in that aspect so I, i'm going to be taking home uh some few some few techniques that i have learned through this piece uh circle i'm going to be taking it home with me um uh, i now understand you know through this uh training that uh, i can work as a keeper you know as a peace circle, in the peace circle, uh, the, there is someone who works as a keeper, and that person has the responsibility, you know, of creating a safe space, of maintaining conversation that is respectful, of creating responsibility, having the responsibility of of getting the attention of everyone, you know, to contribute to con conversation, and to also ensure the quality of the uh, of the of the of the conversation. Uh, and I feel like it, this is kind of the work that I do. I'm going to be positioning myself as a keeper going forward in my in my facilitations, in different uh, grassroots trainings that I'm going to be organizing. I'm now seeing myself more as someone that can you know control an atmosphere where everybody is respecting each other. You know, creating that kind of safe space for conversation. Another thing I'll be taking home is uh, using uh. Uh, the the circle sitting, you know, in setting uh, 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 the room. So, for instance, um, you know, usually when I want to organize my uh, training, my peace building training, I mostly do it in a way that you know people sit, you know, the way they want. But now I understand the importance of people sitting in a circle. You know, it creates that connect connectivity, it grips that connectivity. It makes. Uh, that sense of equality gives sense of equality, and it also ensures that the body language people are able to see the body language, and there is also a focus that a circle gives when people sit down in circle. So it's something I'm going to be taking home with me. Also, um, I understand the importance of using prompt questions. You know, in starting my facilitation, there are key ways to get people to talk to start uh, communication among themselves. So I'm going to be using the prompt question and also the talking piece. I think that's very useful to me in, in, in ensuring that uh, in controlling the, the dialogue that happens you know, among diverse group of people so that to prevent interruption and to ensure active listening among participants. So I really see this peace circle as it's very useful uh, very useful for me in my facilitation technique. And I'm going to be taking that home amongst all every other things that I've learned. I, I, I really thank you all for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I, I hope to you know take it home and also teach other young people what I have learned from this training. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Moji, for the presentation to share us a few points of your reflective uh, paper. So, uh, for the next, can I ask if Adebola or Fawas is ready to be the next presenter? Hello. Hello. Yes, I am ready. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Anxious. Take in this mass Ari. Uh, I was deeply fascinated at the onset by the introduction given by the iconic and erudite uh, scholar, Park Professor Dr. Alberto Gomez. I say in Indonesia that Terima Kashil Aya. Thank you <laughs> indeed. I have learned a lot in the course of this, uh, and I wonder whether it was specifically designed for me. Uh, because both in theory and practice, 
have actually benefited immensely. Uh, to start with, the peace circle is a new tenet for me, which I have learned, especially how it has uh, the necessity to improve uh, relationship. And I've also broadened my knowledge about conflict transformations as an inner outlook or outer continent, you know, for, uh, 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 for, for structural changes. Though I was expecting the presenter to talk much about the, you know, uh, 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 transformations about the, that is actor transformation, issue transformations, rules transformation, and the structural transformation. But notwithstanding, I've learned a lot. The case study of Indonesia has added to my academic uh, effrontery to challenge some inclinations about conflict transformation. That is, some theories and practices of conflict transformations. What I have learned in the course of Indonesia case studies has opened my eyes to know more theoretically and even to have some theoretical propositions to challenge existing theories about uh, you know, what I just said about conflict transformations. Yes, dialogue module, which was delivered by Dr. Michael, uh, made me to know that <clears throat> the world would be better if we draw draw more than World War. And uh, this is regardless of our you know, race and uh, primordial affinity. Our quality belief in peace education is one of the areas I've been trying to <clears throat> have actually made use of. Uh, I believe in peace education as a new paradigm to attain positive peace globally. And especially if you can inculcate this into academic uh, syllabus, right from the kindergarten to university, uh, because if students are compelled indeed to pass compulsory courses, essential subjects that lead to higher studies, why not peace education also as a compulsory subject in our you know, institutions? Uh, what I'm only trying to say here is that what? It will inculcate the value of peace right from the onset, right from kindergarten, right from infantry. And uh, if you are taught peace education, actually, you are bound to live an acculturate in peace. The lectures on nonviolent communication is a masterpiece by Dr. Kundu. And as a chartered mediator, I've added to my conflict resolution skills based on what he delivered. Yes, I need to say thank you once again to Dr. Albatu for what you have given us about peace ecology. Peace and ecology are indeed intertwined. I really agree with that. And it is on the basis of it that empathy, love, and tolerance, they are the basic ingredient of peaceability. According to Dr. Gomez, on the 2nd of August, 2001, I have even taxed my students, especially my undergraduate students at the university, to engage and research more about the connectivity between ecology and peace. Uh, they are doing their research work concerning this. Uh, peace building has equally learned is the entire spectrum of activities to promote sustainable peace. It is therefore imperative for us to foster the culture of peace at all levels of humanity, especially by deploying the theme of world anthropology and enhance, and also an enhanced sort of you know, uh, uh, media as an agent of mass communication for global peace. Uh, from all inclinations, much efforts into teaching, into research, and into practice in human security is therefore very germane, personally from my own perspective, is germane because the contemporary paradigm emphasizes much on the seventh strand of human security. And if you look at this critically, if you can sustain this, if you can enthrall this, I can bear to that, you know, it will be a shortcut to global peace. Uh, I therefore want to conclude on a good note that I have been benefited immensely, uh, at both in, in the realms of academic and also as a practitioner. Uh, we must not forget that what conflicts generally are becoming global. There are global tentacles about conflicts. There are global attitudes about conflict. We must therefore not forget that what these are global problems. Therefore, it's or they require global solutions. I thank you indeed for accepting me to be a participant in this program. I have learned immensely, and you have actually extended the residual of my knowledge 
uh, my, my data bank about peace and conflict studies, conflict transformation, peace building, violent conflict, peace ecology, and so on, have been so enhanced. I want to appreciate you, and I wish to participate in a forum like this. It is an enlightenment, and it is a lifelong, you know, uh, 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 thing that I'm so pleased with. Thank you indeed to the team, and thank you especially to Pa Albert Gomez. I wish you all, I believe, uh, we shall still meet in the course of the struggle to have peace and truth in the whole world. Thank you. That's my submission. Thank you, Pa Debola. <laughs> Terima kasih. Okay. Uh, uh, can I ask uh, Alex if you want to go for the next uh, presentation? Yes. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. All right. Um, so yeah, I thought that uh, for me personally, um, five minutes are too short to discuss a new topic. I'm not going to share a presentation. Um, so, uh, or to bring up any new knowledge. So we'll use this time to um, share my reflections on what has been presented in the past two weeks and what um, stuck to my mind most. Um, first of all, I'm very grateful for the experience and the community of this course. And um, although I had to watch the morning sessions later in the day due to my current situation, I found it very enjoyable and um, had a lot of things that I was taking away with me for me yeah, and for my uh, further learning and reflection. So for me, um, reflection and knowledge creation um, and knowledge sharing is also strongly related to my personal positioning. So if I would situate myself, um, I would uh, situate myself as a white German woman and I do have a lot of privileges, of course. And I know that, for, for instance, I have never um, personally experienced armed conflicts um, or situations of intense violence. So I have to consider that in my thoughts and my reflection. Um, and from the, the past days, I personally could connect a lot with the methodologies of peace education and the idea of the peace circle, um, because I'm interested in being an educator and a facilitator, especially on topics related to politics. And so these topics really inspired me. And when we talked about um, decolonial thought um, and decolonizing peace, I realized that I'm learning um, a very colonial education system and I'm actually part of one. Uh, so right now I ask myself, how can I like decolonize education and especially the one that I want to engage in? And I also realized that topics like gender and racism, uh, which we also talked about, are often um, treated as just like one part of peace studies or generally like one part of academia. But I believe that they are omnipresent and they should be constantly reflected as they influence all theoretical and also practical processes um, yeah, inside and outside of academia. And lately I had, um, it just reminded me of a debate that I had with my family um, on feminism. And um, it was a specific topic. I, I think we were talking about everyday sexism or something. And one family member told me, you don't always have to make everything about politics. And I told them, now this is not like a jacket that I can take on and take off. So in that sense, my whole being becomes political or is politicized. And I'm now still in a very privileged position and for sure um, can't and don't want to speak for anyone else at this point. But of course, um, this also shows that um, certain topics should also become omnipresent in our discussions or in our reflections. And in this course, um, like at one point, we talked about how to make peace studies more practical and accessible to people outside of academia. And for me, a very practical way here is, for instance, activism um, to, to bridge between academia and um, yeah, the, um, the world. And um, yeah, another useful tool also, as mentioned already, of course, is outside school education. So I think. Um, my in my reflection i take that as something very important that i also want to break down these complex academic topics 
um, and make them accessible for everyone. And what I'm trying to say is that um, issues regarding um, gender and racism, especially because that's what I'm, I'm especially interested in, are not only like an add-on or like a token in academia, but they should be part of a like deep self-reflection um, in any sector of peace and conflict studies, according to my opinion. And um, because if it was seen as an add-on, an alternative, um, or like an alternative knowledge, it would again confirm and like reinforce the the white cis male as as a standard that that we actually find in a lot of academic fields, but also in everyday life. So yeah, so those were my um, my thoughts on the last days. And in conclusion, I can say that um, I could take a lot of learnings uh, from the speakers here, um, from the teachers, from the classmates, and I enjoyed hearing various opinions and perspectives. And one of my big takeaways from this course is to engage more deeply in critical self-reflection without getting lost in identity questions. And yeah, and I hope to meet many of you again on that journey. Thank you so much. And thanks for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Alec, for your sharing, for your points. Uh, can I ask uh, Nikita to be the next presenter? And if you guys are okay, we can can we take a break after Nikita's presentation for ten minutes? Is that okay for all of you? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So Nikita, time is yours. Good morning, everyone. Is it okay if I can share? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, I can see your presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, I would first like to um, thank everyone. Today is a wonderful opportunity to be part of such a diverse grouping of people committed to bringing about peace in our respective, in your respective communities. And I am from Barbados. I am a gender practitioner, a gender advocate, a scholar, and a PhD student here at the University of Jaume Premier. And I am dedicated to bringing about peace, equality, and justice. And without further ado, I will go to my presentation, my brief presentation. And for those who know me, know that I'm usually very uh, dynamic, a very dynamic person presenter and very interactive, but I will try to keep it as engaging and yet concise as possible. So I am from the beautiful Caribbean region. And when you hear about the Caribbean, what comes to your mind? So can you just unmute? I'm sorry for asking. Um, if you want to unmute yourself and just say, what comes to your mind when you hear about the Caribbean? The pirates? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think beautiful islands, beautiful people. Okay, thank you. Buddha Tarango? Oh, yes, yes, very good. So yes, um, and for those who haven't spoken, you probably would have said, Paradise, vacation, beautiful beaches, and yes, wow. you are. And no, I am not a uh, mind reader. Yes, I see people singing and dancing, but this is a dominant narrative that has been pushed about the Caribbean. Um, wow. Let me tell you the Caribbean is indeed a beautiful area. We do have wonderful people. But it will be remiss of me if I did not tell you about the colonial history of the Caribbean. 
This history is rooted in colonialism, racism, slavery, and exploitation of people and of the land. Scholars have re scholars research have assessed the long lasting legacy that our past has had on our economic, environmental, social, and political systems. However, I want to say that we are indeed a resilient people and we have used peace in our own way and we have built our societies that you, have, that you can see today. So today my presentation focuses on the concepts that were of interest to me. And I captured it in this acronym called PIECES. And let us go to the first one. So P stands for the principles. This is these principles of love, compassion, respect, freedom, equality, and justice. This is representative of the values that we foster. What, and I would like to use an analogy because I'm a very visual person. When you see an ice, let's imagine that you're on an ocean and you see an iceberg. You see about, let's say, 20% above the surface. But what is below the surface? What are those principles that you are taking time to nurture and, and value? The E for me stands for empathy. Empathy, um, which provides the deep, which creates a space for deep ability to understand the feeling of others. And I sat down last night and I I thought about an empathy circle that maybe if some of us are still trained to learn how to foster empathy within our own lives. So I created just a five, five area, five points that maybe we can try to um, reflect on. And th the first one is connecting with your emotions, connecting with emotions of yours for yourself and with others, developing the right mindset being present in the moment when you're speaking to someone are you distant what are you thinking about but just reflecting on what that person is saying listening to them deeply being attentive and practicing non-violent communication whether it be in your gestures or in the way or the language that you use and then also connecting this allows us to connect with others through a shared concept of humanity the next one, the A, was very, um, this was the acronym that I pondered a lot on, A, for active listening. And then I remembered at the beginning of the course, when the facilitators, the organizers asked us to provide that brief paragraph. And I remember at the end of my summary, I said, how beautiful will the place, how beautiful will earth be if we just took the time to listen? And this ties into the other aspects of the course where um, Gloria and Jennifer Murphy, where they were talking about listening. And I wanted to just ask you, because I think like for my reflection, as part of this deconstructive exercise, it's also to get you as well thinking. Um, so I just wanted to ask you, do you really take the time to listen to your heart, your neighbors? your family members, your politicians. And active listening is very important, a very important for, uh, form of conflict transformation because it allows us to develop that transformative space for action and change. And it allows us to deepen our awareness of people and our communities. And the C, C Sorry, Nikita, the time. The time is all uh, is finished. Can you make it quick, your presentation, please? Quickly yeah. Wrap. yeah. Can you yeah, make it quick, your presentation? Okay, so quick. So the C stands for conflict and peace. And um, we are all united despite our differences. And then dialogue is that bridge that allows us to collect to connect the cultures of peace. And then quickly, the E which stands for ecology, which, con which concept conceptualizes peace through ecological principles and concepts. 
And I wanted to highlight feminist ecology is an organic female-centered vision of nature, which aims at transforming the patriarchal and mechanistic order around the exploitation of natural resources. And finally, the F stands for critical awareness of your location in, around, outside, and below conflict. Do you perpetuate conflict directly or, or indirectly? Where's your position? And then we have to question our assumptions, question our entrenched biases. And now I end with looking at the man and woman in the mirror. And I know this um, to some of you might point, might refer to Michael Jackson's song, looking at the man in the mirror. But how do you feel? What, when you look at your reflection, so there's a mirror right here on the screen. And I just would like you to imagine that this is a mirror that you can see your reflection. What do you see looking back at you? What do you feel? What do you know? And what do you think? And finally, um, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you for listening and taking your time to listen to me. And I did this um, comment to honor all of you. Um, I tried to pick the most important aspects that you guys would have said, peace circles, deconstructing your mind, dialogue, practice, practice and I'm sorry I couldn't do a, a, a character for each one of you but this is just a, my small token of appreciation to the organizers to the participants and yes the person in the green shirt is Professor Alberto um, but thank you all very <laughs> very much thank you thank you Nikita it's a wonderful picture <laughs> so guys uh Shall we have a break for 10 minutes? Uh, so now it's 2.25 p.m. Indonesian time. So we can come back here uh, again, 2.35. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you. On my list is Okay, the next person on my list is um, Andrew. Are you are you ready, Andrew? Andrew, are you there? Okay, if Andrew is not there, Tabby, are you ready to go? Do, do you mean Tabby or? Tabby, yes. Uh, me? Yes, yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, can I have one minute, please? Sure, sure, of course. Um, okay. And I shall share my screen, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm, okay. Okay, all yours, Debbie. Thank you. So um, I will keep it sh short and simple. I, I wrote a small poem because um, I really like this activity when we had class with Jijo, Eugene and Jenny. So um, I hope I'm not offending anyone with this. Um, this is my poem um, about the conflict transformation and peace building course here we have uh, just uh, my reflection on some topics and not all okay um, I have listened and observed in a circle a piece where people from another part of the world promise one another non-judgment and respect although they've never met. Why can't we even do it with the neighbors of our own? My thorn, I'm trapped between academic and practical worlds, 
and you are anchoring me down. Thank you. My rose, I'm trying to give up my ego or the art of not giving a fuck. And thank you, Lederach, for suggesting how we unnumb a person by the vibration of empathy. What about nonviolence communication inside my own body? Freire gently reminds me that education is not a competition of grades, but somehow children are still discarded as garbage if they fail to fit in a box labeled submissive enough to save the world, to serve the world. And we keep saying we must, they have to, they should. Are we not colonizing others with our narrow perception? Please make sure you're not stuffing your children with knowledge, yet forgetting to tell them that kindness matters too, so that they are well equipped with depression and a closed heart, ready for society that judges humans based on how fat their wallet is. Oh, and the word humans, um, one that seems normal and harmless, yet indeed so problematic with its endless violence and iniquitous breach that not to once upon a time ago, people still thought skin colors made them a better creature than someone else. But then the UNESCO said it was a myth, um, a delusion that prevented humans from their normal development. But what is normal de development if not according to Western standards? Again, European US, top of the game, south of the equator, still got much to learn. Building ego is a life purpose, but respecting nature is not the way forward. And don't even ask why I hate the word sub and turn. And love, the word that stays stuck in my throat, unable to get out, as we were taught that without the acknowledgement of a man, a girl would just be another wasted doll, that somehow love is more of a contract where women exchange a whole life of unpaid labor to their own development, an insurance for whichever wife who can produce an heir to her husband. And if your children don't succeed, it's because the mothers fail to teach them, but fathers always take the credit if a child makes it to med school. Romanticism and masculinity are toxic, but who cares if you're still in the possession of a man? So how do I answer my professor? What is love in your culture? What would I tell him? But let's not collapse under the weight of the pedagogy of fear, for there are still individuals who are giving their best to share little but substantial spots as our network of deep. And shall we bear in mind the wise words of Nelson Mandela? May our choices reflect our hope and not how afraid we are. So, yeah, I think that's my poem. Uh, and thank you for listening and for sharing a lot of your thoughts and wisdom in this course with me from everyone. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Tabby. That's beautiful. As uh, Ayla has just said in the chat. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Um, yeah. Who do we have next? And Tabby uh, Kafil says that you are, that was amazing. Thank you. I, I'm reading uh, in the chat from everyone. Thank you so much for your, Okay. yes, for your heart. <laughs> okay, we have uh, Thomas, are you there? Let me just double check. Okay, we don't have Fawaz there. Um, Andrew, are you there? Okay, no Andrew either. Uh, Simra? Yes, I'm here. Okay, do you want to go next? Yeah, sure. Okay, wonderful. Excuse me. 
Hi, sorry, I didn't have time to make a presentation, so I hope that's okay. You are, you are making a presentation now. No, I mean, oh, <laughs> <laughs> presentation. <laughs> um, all right, um, so I guess we can start the timer. Yes, you may. <laughs> um, so first of all, I actually did not introduce myself um, in the beginning of the So, you know, a bit of a shyness there. But firstly, I would like to just express how grateful I am to be part of this course. I think being in a community of people who have achieved so much, you know, compared to me, I'm still in my undergraduate. Um, I think it was very inspiring to even learn from the professors we had in this lecture, um, in all the lectures that we've had. Um, so to keep it plain and simple, what I have reflected on or what that has impacted me more from this course, I think is the part about nonviolent communication um, being a new age of conflict resolution. So how I intend to use this um, to, to look at the world in a more, um, to, to just have more peace in the world, I think instead of just using nonviolent communication between individuals, I think I would use this in a way to extend it on how we can improve international relations between countries. Oh dear, we have internet connection problem. Wample Ukraine and Russia are at war. So how then participants from these countries can come together to talk about, you know, how do they handle the relations between these countries? So another example would be the Syrian and Palestinian war. How would nonviolent communication impact this war? So this would look like, for example, sitting at a negotiation table and learning to exercise um, empathy and we can actually then possibly resolve the conflict um, between these countries. And we, we also understand that conflict is inevitable between countries, but when we talk, there's always other mechanisms to resolve conflict rather than go to war. So we can always exercise a give and take situation and things like that. Currently in the world, there are over 69 countries that are involved in wars and even uh, even in the 21st century other uh, and but in any war but any war like conflict ends with negotiation so that is one of the biggest things i have learned from this course and something that i would try to work on and try to do more research in on how we can use um nonviolent communication as a mechanism um, not only among individuals, but also as a mechanism in international relations and expand the whole notion of nonviolent communication that way. So that is all from me. Thank you so much. Do you, can I call you uh, Simra or is that, is you there another? Just, you can just call me Sim, plain and simple. Sim, okay. That's great, yeah. And uh, thank you for keeping to the time as well. So we will, yeah, we will go to the next uh, presenter. Now, Toshi, uh, because we are a bit confused because I think you may have signed up under a number, so. Yeah, I, I can, yes, I can speak uh, if it's my next turn. Yeah, would that be okay, Toshi? Sure, yeah, I will. Okay, I'll share the screen. So, um, my name is Toshi. I am um, interested in um, the conflict transformation 
Um, I myself is a mediator, the, um, the neighbor dispute mediator. I was always interested in how people understand each other and how the mediator can help this, um, the process of understanding each other. Um, Jennifer um, introduced uh, Ledrock um, to us. And then I actually read very carefully um, the books she introduced in the class. I, I read all chapters and I just wanted to find out something to add. So th this is my presentation. So Ledrock, um, as uh, Jennifer said, the, he takes conflict as an opportunity for a change in our way of thinking. Okay, and in such change are seen in four dimensions, according to Red Rock, personal, relational, structural, and cultural. The goals of conflict transformation is to minimize destructive effects of social conflict at the personal level and maximize understanding of each other. Um, goal number three is promote non-violent mechanism to reduce confrontation by maximizing people's participation in decision making. I believe this is uh, connected to structural and cultural violences. Um, in, in, the, in, in the book, uh, Ledrock speaks more about personal and uh, re relational level. So uh, my, presentation, my presentation will focus on these two dimensions. Um, sorry, yeah. So um, Red Rock says people in conflict face fears and uncertainty, okay? And then the challenges for conflict resolution is um, to minimize the level of reactivity and blame, blame on others, reactivity over reaction to the other. And another challenge is to maximize the capacity, the individual capacity to, to express a clear sense of self and place. Um, how do we do this? How do we overcome these challenges? The three guiding principles that Redrug suggests are honesty, interactive learning, and appropriate exchange. <laughs> honesty is um, probably we know already. So the people who are deeply honest with themselves and the others, where they feel safe. And this is why safe environment is very important for conflict resolution. Um, Redrock says honesty reveals identity. So uh, honesty reveals who she is, who he is, who they are. Such honesty is not coming out of um, coming through in a reflection. Uh, Redrock asserts for interactive learning. So um, rather than self reflection only, um, he says interaction with the other is equally important. <clears throat> the third, third point is appropriate exchange, um, an exchange between people beyond dialogue, so such as music, um, dance, arts, rituals, sport, or even fun and laughter. And um, Redrock says these um, aspects are equally important. Um, he's saying this because um, when we speak about um, conflict transformation, we are most likely to say, oh, it's dialogue. But Rajra is suggesting it's not just dialogue. Um, dialogue is not the, not the ultimate um, solution. We can sometimes choose music, arts, rituals, um, and other forms of conflict trans trans transformation. All right, that's my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Toshi. Now, this is supposed to be a peer review, but uh, unfortunately, uh, your name did not appear on the list. So yeah, I was just trying yeah. to check. Yeah, I couldn't I find it. To, I couldn't find it. <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to check with uh, the AC, uh, ICCTP uh, uh, secretariat. So, uh, participants, if if it's okay with you, um, can you just 
I do not know whether you can maybe just send the ICCTP. Um, just send them a message. Okay. With, it with, says uh, I'm on it. It says I'm on it. It says you're on it? Yeah, latest WhatsApp <laughs> message says it's I'm on it's it. It's already there, Alberto. All right, okay, so good. So they are, they were working behind the scenes while I was here. Thank presenting. you. So thank you, okay. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much. And uh, we proceed with uh, the next person on our list. Um, now, is uh, Inas, are you ready to go, Nora Safina? Well, myself, I finish it up, right? Or else <laughs> I, can't, I can't be sleeping the whole night. <laughs> okay. No, okay, please go ahead. Can I share the, the screen? Okay, let me check. Uh, can you share now? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Hi, I'm Inas. Today, I'm going to talk about Rumah Baca or Asli. Well, um, first of all, I would like to thank the everyone here, especially to Pa Albert, yeah, for convincing me to participate in this course. Yeah, um, and to the rest, yeah, the committees and uh, fellow participants, yeah. I really enjoyed this, uh, this journey with you all. Okay, let me go on with this uh, Roma Bacha, yeah. Roma Bacha is something uh, I'm passionate about it, yeah. So what happened is that, you know, when I want to create a Roma Bacha, normally I'll go down you know, to the kampong, to the village, you know, get to know the kampong people, you know, be with them, you know, build a report, and um, that's how it started, yeah. And you can see in the picture, you know, we have meetings, and then we go out to the jungle and gathered all the bamboos or whatever material that we needed, yeah. And and also, you know, there's a lot of uh, things involved here, you know. the Everyone in the kampong comes in, you know, participate. To, to be part of it, you know, and from what I gather in uh, these uh, sessions, you know, this course, you know, whatever topics that we learn actually applies in whatever I'm doing, you know, it's just that maybe, you know, I have yet to learn how to write like you guys better, you know, so this is how we started the Roma Bacha. You know, I make sure that, you know, everyone are participated, you know, I, I make sure the kids especially involved, you know, and um, we built the Roma Bacha from scratch, you know, we make use of whatever we have there, you know, like one kampong here, we use the old shop house and we convert it into this uh, newly look uh, home. And um, where's the other one? And uh, this one is in Royal Bloom, my baby. Um, I set up the bamboo homes and um, voila, we went to the jungle, to the forest and pick up all the materials and we built together uh, for almost one month. We completed this house, yeah. And there's so many people are involved in this. Yeah, the local especially. And look at the children, you know. They are involved, they are involved in everything, you know. I let them do, I let them paint, I let them, you know, repair their work. I, I let them do anything they want to do and explore. You know, I just observe and watch them. This is part, you know, how, you know, I want them to explore and learn and relearn, you know. And immediately if they make mistakes, you know, don't correct them and teach them the right manner, yeah. And this is how it looks like, you know, most of the Roma Bacha, uh, built with a pre loves items. These are all the pre loves yeah, I must say. Um, and the teachers are all local teachers. They are orang asli. Yeah, like in this picture, this is Kat Rose. She is from the Jaha Adam, uh, Kinta, Kinta tribe, yeah, in uh, Hulu Perak. And this, I love this picture. You know, it makes me laugh. See how these kids, do you feel the happiness, the love? 
gosh, I miss all of them. You know, they're so warm. They're so, they're so innocent. You know, they're, they're just, you know, they're open to learn anything that we, we want to teach them, you know. And well, I hope the pandemic is over soon that I can visit them. Look, Peace Media. Wow, this is the greatness of Peace Media. I myself don't believe that actually I've already done this for the last two years, you know, from doing for the Orang Asli up to the Sabahans, you know, and even a few other projects, you know. Oh, I'm blessed that, you know, through media, I get to know people that I don't know. And they are the ones who come up, you know, approach me and assist me. These are, these are none, none of my friends and they come up to me and approach me and they say they want to do something for me. They want to collaborate and I'm blessed. Thank you so much. So why not, you know, why not we share our love, our joy and happiness, you know, so that, you know, everyone have a better place, you know, to live on this earth, you know, why not we, we share our peace, you know, and let's start building our peace tribe. That's about all from me. Thank you so much, yeah, everyone. Keep in touch. So. Thank you, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Inas. And for the participants who are wondering, Inas is, her uh, official name is Nor Safina. Okay, and Thank uh, you. and uh, her nickname is Inas, so I keep referring to her as Inas, but um, she is Nord Safina. Thank you so much, uh, Inas, and we will go on to the next. Now, Andrew, are you there? No, Andrew is not there. Uh, Fawaz? No. Okay, Julius? Uh, yes, Professor. Okay, would you like to go next, Julius? Uh, with all pleasure. Thank you. Uh, greetings to everyone according to your time and zone. My presentation is a summary for my reflective paper, and it is entitled, My Understanding and Takeaway After the ICCTP Course. Prior to this course, I perceived conflict transformation and peace building in two actions. Stop the conflict and let there be peace. However, Little did I know that there are many factors involved in conflict transformation. And little did I know that peace building is a process over a period of time or even years to accomplish. This, indi this indicates that United Nations and other stakeholders in peacekeeping had played vital role in creating peace and trying to make the world a better place by investing their time, resources, and bringing together experts from different parts of the world to work together for peace building. During this course, I began to understand the factors that contribute, that contribute to the conflict transformation and peace building are enormous, are enormous, ranging from anthropological point of view to history to human psychology, peace psychology, and peace ecology. Why embracing peace, circle, conflict transformation, dialogue, peace education, non-violent communication, race and decolonization, empathy, love, and compassion, peace, culture, and culture of peace are knowledge required for peace process and conflict prevention. Hence, I have come to the knowledge and to consider this aforementioned as factor for conflict transformation and peace 
formation process. This factor indicated that peace is a process that needs to be initiated by peacemakers and agreed upon by other factors. Looking at the word peace circle, which has its roots in the Asian tribes of the Native Americans, based on the presentation by Dr. Gloria Abaka. It is being introduced to our modern way of community life. This shows that the elements of style of making peace had been with us for decades or even centuries. As it is identified that the main objective of a peace circle is to create a sacred space that will lift barrier between people, opening fresh possibilities for connection, collaboration, and create mutual understanding. I also identify the use of dialogue where all participants have the opportunity to share common values, create a safe space to keep a genuine, meaningful, inspired, and restorative conversation. By coming to this understanding of peace, the importance of peace circle and the use of talking peace as a token for a control, I have come to the conclusion that in conflict transformation and peace building, everyone has a voice and the ability to listen actively and, and deeply share their thoughts by using objects which connote a symbol to make sure that everyone has a chance to speak while the rest actively do the listening. It's an effective process towards peace. Therefore, I will admit that the fact that peace circle and dialogue play a leading role in conflict transformation and peace building, according to the lecture given by Dr. Gloria Abaka, and Dr. Michaelis Michael. However, I have witnessed a case, mostly in the traditional African setting, where only leaders in the community speaks, and the opinion of the youth and others are not welcome. In my personal experience, I wasn't welcome to contribute to the dialogue for peace because I was considered to be too young to be involved. And if I do without being authorized, then it will be considered as rudeness. Understanding conflict transformation is not only to resolve conflict, but also to transform actors in harm conflict into developing effective dialogues. Maintain non-violence communication during dialogues, which I believe would be possible through peace education, which I came to understand by the lecture given by Dr. Sophia arero Rico. I remember when I was in the voluntary service with a non-governmental organization, I saw the effect of dialogue and non-violent communication played some pivotal role in bringing the farmers together and they finally worked in harmony afterwards. During this land fragmentation, I do not really understand how dialogue and non-violence communication was used to achieve peace among these farmers. However, this course has enlightened me to appreciate the use of dialogue in peace building, and it, is, it has changed my perception and to humbly accept and drop down all egocentric. I could now have a reflection that conflict can be good for organization change because it encourages open-mindedness and help build a stronger relationship to avoid future occurrence. Although many others may consider conflicts as an exciting opportunity for personal gain and growth. And I also try to do my best. In my own analysis, I see conflicts as a way forward. If the actor could develop and establish peace culture, and peace and culture of peace. During the presentation by Dr. Alexander Postman, I began to gain an in-depth knowledge. Julia, Julia, sorry, the time is up, but 
uh, are you about to finish? Yes. Okay. Sorry. So no, no. In, in conclusion, this course has accorded me the opportunity to one identify the dynamics of conflicts and different approaches of addressing conflicts. Two, understanding the need of addressing conflict as its possible aspect. Three, understanding the concept of peace and peace building. And four, understanding the different approaches and level of peace building. So I would like to thank you all for listening. I wish to thank all the committee from UMY for providing this course without issue and also the course lecturers. Thank you all and have a wonderful day. Thank, thank you, you so much, Julius. Thank you. Um, and sorry to have rushed you, but uh, we just have a few more people to go uh, through before we finish off. So once again, is Andrew there? Fawaz? Uh, Ijaz, would you like to go next? Ijaz, are you there? No? Um, Okay, is there anyone who hasn't uh, presented this uh, yet? Anyone who is yet to present? Ross? Yes. Yeah, according to the notes uh, here, uh, those who haven't presented, Dr. Neha, is that correct? Fawaz Kamis, Fawaz Kamis, Andrew, okay. Amselia, uh, Ijaz Ahmad, Muhammad Yasin, and, Dr. Muhammad Yasin, and Irfan Khan. Okay. Uh, any of you here in, in, the, in the Zoom meeting? Yes, I don't see them, uh, Mas, you know? Okay. So I just want to begin by, uh, this is the, the last uh, session before we say our goodbyes and see you later. So I just want to, to say how much I enjoyed all the presentations. It, it was just absolutely superb and, um, and must must Ari, what what do you say? No, I'm, I'm, you know, to be honest, bro, very very honest. This is the first time in my life having a discussion, such such a long discussion, yeah, a day discussion, involving participants from all over the world, and they are consistently engaged, you know, active, and then become such a lovely family, you know. <laughs> So I'm really happy, you know, it's, more, it's really an honor for me to involve in this ICCTP, you know. And as what we have discussed, mentioned yesterday in the small room, that, you know, this, you know, program becomes a positive, uh, how can I, uh, uh, arena or like, you know, a facilitator where, you know, all the peace builder you know, meet and share the ideas and then charge their energy of peace so that they become again and again confident you know to spread you know all the positive things about peace so it is really really again an honor for me so thank you all of the person bapa ibu mas ba you know so it's unforgettable memory for me for having this ICCTP, bro. Thank you, uh, Mas Ari. Now, before I forget, I, uh, uh, Jenny Murphy, who is uh, on her family holiday, she sends me a message uh, to say that she really wanted to be here to say uh, 
goodbye and listen to all your presentations, but uh, she was unable to leave her family um, holiday. So she says, um, she wants, wants me to express her, her thank you to, to all of you for being such a wonderful group. And so she said that she would hope that she'll be able to keep in touch with all of you. And I also just received a, a message from Joanne uh, Lim saying how much she has thoroughly enjoyed uh, engagement interactions with, with all of you. And she has also expressed uh, you know, her, her desire to keep in touch with, uh, with all of you. So now this does not mean that the other presenters uh, do not care about all of you, but they have had uh, quite, quite a bit of, uh, you know, they, they have been engaged in, in a range of different, and I'm sure they share the, the sentiments of both uh, Jenny and, and Joanne. So then the last uh, few minutes that we have, and oh, sorry, I should also say, uh, Aisha, do you, want to, do you want to say something? Bu Aisha? Yes, there you are. <laughs> yeah. uh, hi, everybody. Hello, Bu. Yeah, uh, now I cannot see myself. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you see me? Yeah, we can see oh, you. You can <laughs> see me. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm very much impressed. Yeah, I'm very much impressed with the, uh, with the reflections of the students. So I think this program is on the right track. It, it's great to know that uh, many of the students really pick up a very important lessons from this. Thank you very much, uh, Bu Aisha. And uh, Bu Priska, are you there? Bu Priska? The, the few Javanese words I know, Mongo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my God. All right. Now, we, we do have, um, we want to open up uh, to, to all of you uh, for a kind of a, a joint uh, reflections and also to think about future uh, projects, you know, where you want to go with what you've done and the connections that you have made. And uh, perhaps uh, to start this off, uh, if I can, uh, you know, I don't like talking about myself, but I suppose in, in a way that it would uh, give you an idea of where I'm coming from. So I spent almost my whole life uh, in a university. I joined as an undergraduate student in 1974, uh, but my first year of university was not in any way involved in any kind of scholarship. I spend most of my time uh, with either, you know, playing sports. I played uh, hockey for the university uh, or, you know, drinking with my mates in the pubs around the U University of Malaya or being involved in student politics. And um, for those Malaysians here, uh, I have, I, I would like to express very proudly that I was uh, selected as one of the runners in the student demonstration. And my role was to run up, grab hold of the tear gas canisters that the, the Federal Reserve Police would shoot, and then run towards the police and throw the canisters back at them. So that was my, my role. I was, of course, terribly scared for what I, I did. But then when I got back, when I got into university, I found that there was a there was a disconnect between what was happening in academia and what was happening outside the world. So a lot of my fellow academics, they sat in the ivory tower, they uh, wrote a lot of papers that only collected dust in the libraries, they wrote books, uh, they wrote papers, and I always found it very uh, discomforting. And so from a very early uh, in my career as, as a lecturer, I always found it uh, quite uh, difficult to engage in that. For those of you who are Malaysians, uh, you will also 
know that from a very early stage, I started to be an environmental activist. Uh, I was one of four uh, various uh, people in Malaysia that tried to stop the largest bank in Malaysia from building its headquarters in May Bank, you know, up um, and, and we got a campaign. So that was always where my heart lay. But then as an academic, I was always pushed into writing papers, publishing, and I lasted, what was it like, you know, 30 over years in academia, but always found finding it so difficult because my heart was not into just publishing papers that no one actually read. Or, but then I realized that one thing that the university did for me was they unleashed me every week to face four to 500 introductory anthropology students. And I felt that this was an opportunity for me to mold the thinking. And uh, to put it very crudely, uh, one of the things I said to my students uh, in, in Australia, and I say very crudely, I come into class teaching them anthropology and I say to them, this course is about trying, this course I would refer to as flushing. And so the students look at it thinking, what am I talking about? And I said, the, the issue that we have in this society of ours is all of you have walked into this room and you've got lots of shit in your head. So anthropology is all about flushing that shit out and uh, you know, hopefully cleaning uh, what's in your mind. So it's a very crude way of describing what we, we did. But one thing that always stayed with me was Karl Marx's 11th thesis to pure about. So he wrote all these theses, they're all very short, but he wanted uh, to challenge some of the kinds of philosophical thinking. So as philosophers, we always believe that we have to stay aloof from society. We philosophize, we write about society and we analyze it, but that's it. And what Karl Marx, in fact, uh, in his 11th thesis says, philosophers have heated or interpreted the world in various ways. The point is to change it. So the 11th thesis has always guided me because why do we all do our studies, our analysis, our talking, our writing and publications. Why do we do this? And if it is not to change society, then I feel that as academics, we have failed miserably. And the reason that many of my fellow academics are not so kind of connected to the real life or real world is because of the neoliberalization of universities where we have been pushed very much into publishing our own individual sort of work. And there is no more what we call public intellectuals, anyone that's willing to step up and take, you know, take charge. So one person that actually I am, you may have never heard of him, but the person that I have a tremendous uh, respect and have drawn quite a lot of inspiration from his work is David Graeber. And David Graeber sadly passed away last year. But David Graeber, who has published a number of fantastic intellectual books like The Debts and 5,000 Year History. But one thing that David Graeber did was, do you know that he was the person who inspired the Occupy movement? So he was the person who was behind uh, intellectuals that played a very important role in challenging uh, the, the problems, uh, challenging you know, the power in society but also highlighting the problems and trying to make a difference in the world that we live in. So David Graeber in the Occupy movement, there are a number of scholars now who are involved in ex Extinction Rebellion. Many of my friends who are involved in that. So when, I, when the university was beginning to push me into more and more senior roles and, and administrative roles, and I said, this is not me, and I decided to quit. So in 2014, uh, I opted to take early retirement from my, uh, you know, from uh, from my professional, uh, pro from my professor's position, and and I did, and and what I did felt was that every year uh, I go to Castellón, and every year I meet at least about 15 to 20 amazing people from right around the world, 
and Castellon is where the Juami Premo University is located. And every year I go and, and then I, I kept track with, with uh, what they do. So like Nikita was my former student, Ari, Idam, you know, and I kept track as to where they went and what they did. And then I realized yeah. that many of them, in fact, got uh, involved in peace, uh, you know, in peace organizations. And the sad thing is this, from my observation, many of the of the peace organizations that be, that are found right around the world, they promote and advocate peace, and they are driven by the uh, peace philosophy. But actually, there's hardly anything peaceful that goes on within those organizations. They're competing one another. They're trying, you know, to there is a great deal of competition, and there is also jealousy and envy, and so. These were the kinds of issues that were going on in those peace organizations. So I got together a number of my friends and I said, look, let's try to look at ways of how we can create a space, a create a kind of a framework uh, to, to invite uh, students to um, our former students, alumni, to come and join us and to make a difference in this world. But there are certain things that we wanted to focus on. One is that the organization that we're going to set up is inspired by indigenous wisdom. Two, it has to be connected to ecology. So when you look at the deep network, it is uh, driven you know, and guided by indigenous philosophy, indigenous wisdom, indigenous knowledges. It is also uh, very strongly inspired by ecology and nature. So if you start looking at it, you will see that. Our, our symbol is the tree of life. But if you look through the, the icon, you will see back. create this space. But there are certain other things that we wanted to focus on. One is that the organization would be among equals. So uh, there is no organization, but we do not want people to volunteer by giving us money because our currency is time, not money. So we don't want money. And I always say that um, if anything that we need to spend on, uh, let me pay for it. So, you know, the web page and those kinds of things is what is my contribution, financial contribution. However, if you're young, uh, I'm lucky to have worked all, you know, quite a bit of my life. So I actually don't need the money and what are you going to do with the money even if you keep um in, you know and when i gave up my salary as a professor and you know people thought i was nuts you know why do you give up all this money and and i believe that what what purpose is there you know how much money more you know, how much more money do you need but what we need is the time and we need in fact not just the time but also the generosity and contribution of you know um of the various kinds of, you know, like the, the passion that we have, the compassion, the empathy, those are important parts. However, if you're young, yeah, after that, I would say this seemingly very impressive organization, and we, we, we persuade uh, all the young people who are involved, use it. Yeah, I can use the fancy title that I have. So we write wonderful references for various uh, of our deep members. And, and uh, then they go off and they get grants and they get positions elsewhere. And sometimes uh, there are rich people who really do not know what to do with their money. So instead of building lovely rockets to take them out to space, maybe we can try to persuade them to contribute some money to peace building. But we don't want any of your money. Okay, All we want is your time. 
And if you, and time is our currency, if you feel that you can devote your time. And why we want this time is there's not an empire building uh, project. Okay? We're not creating a network so that we all be great and wonderful. Uh, the late Vicente uh, Martinez Guzman, one day when I met him in Barcelona, you know, we, when he was alive, we, I used to make it a point to sit down and have a coffee with him. And so Vicente once said to me, oh, you know, Alberto, I like, I like your, your network that you have created. And I corrected him. I said, uh, Vicente, this is not my network. It is our network. So I don't own it. And this is an indigenous idea, okay? We, nature does not belong to us. We belong to nature. Deep, deep does not belong to me. I belong to deep. And everyone belongs to deep equally. So this is the kind of thing that we want to, to promote, you know, in, in this. So one of the projects of deep is to organize such kinds of workshops because we believe that once again, by inviting volunteers, all the people who are presenting uh, here, they're all volunteers. And, and as you probably have realized, they're all friends of mine, because I believe that what is friendship for if you can't twist the arm to do something for you? So, but which means that, uh, you know, my life is really hectic because if I, uh, if Mas Ari does something for me, I feel that I have to do something for him because this is the kind of reciprocity that we have. So I'm very busy uh, having to give talks because at the same time, through that reciprocal relationship, I can turn to them and say, okay, can you please help me with this? And so this is how we have worked. And very soon, I think I, I have given a uh, keynote to almost all the different religious universities in, in, in Indonesia. And uh, in, I think next month, I have to give a keynote to the Hindu University of Indonesia in Bali. And I've given keynote to the Christian University, to Muhammadiyah, to NU. And so religiously, you know, I believe that we, we have to be open to all the different kinds of religious groups. So anyway, yes, I've been to China uh, dating. I've been to, uh, to Beijing a few times. And in fact, uh, the people in Beijing, they, um, they considered me, uh, I'm, I'm married to a Chinese and a Malaysian you know, Chinese. So when I went to Beijing, um, they, treated, they, they treated me amazingly. The hospitality was just absolutely superb. So I was sitting in the at a at a you know lunch uh, with the university you know senior university administration at the Minzu University in Beijing, and the the vice rector who was sitting next to me, she she turns to me very politely and she says, "So Professor Gomez, I see that there are chopsticks here. Are you able to use chopsticks?" And then uh, someone across at the other end of the table uttered something in Mandarin. And then she turns to me and she said, uh, oh, I just realized that you're married to Chinese, so you should be able to use chopsticks. And I said, yes. I said, I've been using chopsticks because I grew up in Malaysia. When I was five years old, I learned how to use chopsticks. And so anyway, um, then when it was my turn to toast at the end, when we've all stood up and toasted. So what I said was that, uh, thank you very much for your hospitality and for treating me so well. And I just want to raise a toast to all of you and say, newfound family, that we are all now, you know, members of the same family. So this is the idea of the Binsu and the kind of connections that we have with everyone in this world. So, uh, so the, the point I want to make here is that, uh, we, we have to, you know, we, we have to transcend. We have to not allow those divides, that the walls that have been created, a lot of people, whether it's to do with race, to do with ethnicity, to do with religion, uh, any kind of walls, walls that are built. And I should also add sexuality, okay? Because uh, we find that, you know, this, this is an issue where 
in, in many cases, many of my very close friends are, you know, gay and lesbian, and and with sexuality, disability, all these things that are used to divide people, to use to kind of separate people. I think all of us have to work very hard that it does not really matter what your sexual orientation is, what your, you know, whether, uh, you know, whether you are African or Indian or Pakistani, it doesn't really matter, okay? What really matters is the fact that as all of us, as humans, uh, we share the fundamental um, connection. And this fundamental connection is that we are all connected to nature. And when uh, Karl Marx, when he writes about nature, he uses the concept of metabolism. In other words, our nature, as that's why sometimes we say human nature, our nature is actually connected to the what we refer to as mother nature. So many indigenous peoples have recognized this fact, and they have, in fact, not just recognize it, they embrace it in their own living and life. But we have lost that. And once we lose this very important aspect of losing connection, not only to mother nature, but to our own human nature, this is where the problem has emerged because we have been alienated from each other. We've been alienated from nature. We have been alienated from the products of our labor. We have been alienated, most importantly, to ourselves. So we don't even know who our, we, we are. And I think this is where it is extremely important. And I think this course, when I must, Ari contacted me and say, he, he keeps calling me prof and I keep telling him don'ts, you know, but I've given up this, you know, <laughs> this struggle that I have with him. But Mas Ari, who is, you know, like a brother, younger brother to me, uh, when he contacted me and he said, prof, uh, how about we, we do a course? Uh, can you do it? And I said, yeah, it'd be my pleasure. So we started working on this. And last year we were supposed to have this course um, in C2 in, in Jogjakarta, and we started planning everything. We plan, and sorry, I'm going on talking about this, but this is a story that I want to tell you. We plan to, to have like field trips. And one of the field trips was going to be to a village very close to Jogjakarta called Turi. Now, the story of Turi, um, in 2013, I was in Jogjakarta attending uh, the Mahate Global Peace School as one of the presenters. And at that school, I met a young Indonesian by the name of Bella. And very sadly, uh, Bella, who is only like 26 years old, lost her battle with cancer and she, she passed away. So Bella, I was actually one of the first few people that Bella told me when she was diagnosed with cancer. And I said to her, look, you're young, you will win this battle, you know, stay strong. But sadly, you know, she, she passed away. And I still remember communicating with her, even when she was in hospital and when she was about to pass away. So when she passed away, uh, she was uh, one of the active members of D. So I wrote, uh, uh, you know, I wrote a kind of like, a kind of a eulogy to honor uh, Bella as, as a young person who was actively involved. Very jovial, I think, uh, Mas Idam, you remember, right? And so, so when Bella uh, passed away, and then I received an, uh, a message from Bella's mother, uh, Boo Multi. And Boo Multi said to me, she said, you know, I saw that, that thing that you've written, the eulogy uh, in honor of Bella. And she said to me, you know, when you come to Jogjakarta again, can you please spare me, uh, you know, half an hour, I want to meet you. And then I said, sure, you know, I will contact you as soon as I get to Jogjakarta. So I contacted uh, Multi in the morning when I arrived. And then she said to me, you know, uh, Prof, I know you're very busy. Can you please give us one hour? And I said, it's okay. I said, I have a few hours because my next meeting is in the, in the afternoon, uh, later in the evening. So she said, I want to take you to the, to the cemetery. I want to take you to the grave of where Bella was buried. And I went there and I was so emotionally, you know, it was 
uh, it was a very difficult moment for me because the last time I saw Bella, she was live and so bubbly. And then there she, I saw, you know, I stood and uh, put flowers on her grave. And then uh, the mother said to me, uh, Bella is, uh, you know, Bella is, is uh, Muslim, right? And then so the mother says to me, uh, we buried Bella next to her grandfather. So I turned to the grave next to where Bella was buried. And I noticed that the grave had a cross. And so I asked, uh, the multi, I think, noticed that I was focused on the cross on the, on the grave um, tombstone. And so Bella's, uh, so Bella's mother, um, you know, multi, uh, said to me, oh, um, didn't Bella tell you that her grandparents are uh, Catholic and Christian? I said, no, she didn't tell. I said, I all the time assumed that, uh, and then that she's Muslim. And then he, she said, Do you, Bella's father is, is Christian. So then she, uh, then uh, Multi then said to me, the uh, Bella's mother, uh, grandmother wants to meet you. Can you please, uh, is it okay? I know, and she kept on saying, I know you're very busy. And I said, it would be my pleasure. So I go over to the house uh, and, and the mother was um, at church, the grandmother, sorry, and the grandmother comes back and then greets me. And I see in that house, you know, you have all the Virgin Mary, the sacred heart. It's, uh, you know, it's a typical Christian. And so it got me interested. So I started asking questions. Turi is a place where Christians and Muslims live next to each other alongside. They celebrate each other's uh, festivals. And whenever it's, uh, you know, Eid, during the Eid, uh, after, you know, uh, Ramadan, they, in fact, the Christians go and help with the cooking and they then celebrate Eid together. Christmas, the Muslims do the same thing. They work together in the fields. And then when I got um, that evening, I was so excited and I spoke, spoke to my Indonesian friend, Pak Purbo. I said, this is amazing. This is fantastic. And I said, we should do a documentary on this. And then Purbo looked at me and he said, why? I said, this, this is amazing. You know, Christians and Muslims living together. And Purvo said, uh, you know, what, what's so amazing about it? And then I said to him, you know, deep, we want to get filmmakers, we want to do a project, I'll help to write the script. And then uh, Purvo says to me, but this is common. And this is what we have to try to keep that. Our focus has always been on the uncommon things. And we think, you know, of those things that happen we think about violence, violence is uncommon. We think about killing, killing is actually uncommon. When we look at the disproportionate me attention given to media, we think that it is common. Peace is the norm. In fact, more people right around the world live in peace with one another, but yet we stand to focus on the you know, aberration, the things that, that are uncommon in human society. So war is sexy. People write about killing. They write about murder. They write about all the forms of violence that happen. But let's focus on what actually happens far more frequently, more commonly, but yet uh, are neglected. And once we do this, I think in the media reporting, in the focus on our talks, and then we are able to convince and persuade more people that peace is the way. And in fact, peace has always been the way. Uh, as an anthropologist, if you go back to the history of humanity, we find that, and if you plot it in the history, out of the 100% of human history, humans have only fought for roughly around 1%. So for 99% of human history, humans have lived in harmony with one another. So I think it is really important that we, we stress this fact. And when we are you know, giving our talks, when we're working, 
let's focus on the fact that it is not, uh, it is, you know, we are not doing something unusual, untypical, or we are not doing something that does not really happen, but we're actually working on something that is the common denominator in all human society. And all we have to do is turn to our indigenous brothers and sisters, and then we should be able to get lessons from them in order to build peace. So my friends, you know, I call you my friends. When I started this course, I only have a few friends here. So in us, as you know, is someone I've known for a number of years, Mas Idam and Mas Ari, yes, of course. Uh, I've known Nikita, I've known for a few years. So there are a number of you who are here who are friends like Conchita earlier, but now I feel that I have a lot more friends. So I hope you would you know, consider that kind of connections that we have made and let's work together wherever we are. Um, any part of the world we are, any part of the stage of our lives we are located and let's just focus on working together. So what do you get? What do you think? I, Anyone? I, I stopped. I stopped. Roji, raise your hand. Oh, Roji, please go ahead. And let's make this open. I just wanted to make the opening remarks, but I want you to add to it and enhance what we have just, oh. you know. Roger, thank yes. You so Go much. Ahead. Uh, thank you so much, Pat Alberto, uh, for the story you have shared and what your life had been through. And it was it's very amazing to hear such kind of stories. And I, I was curious to know that uh, uh, because we have been doing this course for like 14 days and I don't consider uh, my fellow met and of course, uh, Pat Alberto as a stranger. So <laughs> I feel like a family. Uh, so, uh, so I was asking to share to uh, maybe I know a picture, a family picture of. You know, can we have a family picture of uh, you? And I mean, like we get, we, we would like to see it. Okay, I will send you. I'll send you. Yeah, uh, I will... for us to know that uh, sure. my daughter has lived in India and has lived in Australia and Malaysia and then married yeah. to a Malaysian lady. Um, it was very nice for us. Yeah, yeah the and picture also. <laughs> that's right. Because when I was growing up in Malaysia, uh, people will often say things like, oh, you're Indian or, and, you know, people are Chinese. So I decided let's create, you know, let, let me work towards creating my own ethnic group or race. So my kids are Chindian, <laughs> Chinese, Indian. Indian. And oh. I had to write, uh, uh, you know, some time ago, this is another story. Some time ago, when I was a professor at University of Helsinki, I had a Mexican team that came to visit the university. And when they saw my name, they came into my office and they said, you know, rattle off in Spanish. And that time I, my, I had hardly any word in Spanish. So I just turned to them and said, me no comprendo español. <laughs> Which was I don't even awful. get it. <laughs> it was it was absolutely awful. But then uh, then the person said to me, "But you have got a, a Spanish name and you look Mexican. So what are you?" So I started to be playful and I said, "I'm a Manchi." And then she asked me, um, "So what is a Manchi?" And I created my own identity because I'm Malaysian born. That's the M, Australian which is my nationality, my citizenship. G is for Goan, which is my ethnic group in India. And I is India. And then I said that my, I'm married to a Malaysian Chinese, so my kids are magic. All we can say that we are from Africa. Yes, yes of course, I'm Afro, I'm, we all are from Africa. From Africa. Yes. That's right. And that's why, you know, Julius and Ade, Adebola, they all, uh, you know, you are closer to to my ancestors as I am, but yes. we are all brothers. Yeah, after yeah. All. very very true. And, and yeah, I will also... I will remember to send. And uh, my three granddaughters were here. Uh, that's oh. why I had to turn off my 
my sound quite a bit because they were coming in and out of the room. And my three granddaughters are even, my son is married to, uh, my son is married to an Australian of Scottish background. My daughter is married to an Australian of, of Italian background. So they are as mixed. Like a whole world in a family. Multicultural, that's right. It's multicultural. Yes, and uh, yeah, so we, and it's all kind of very mixed. So, so I think we have to embrace that, you know? So when I'm having Indian food, I use my fingers. When I'm having Chinese food, I use my chopsticks. When I'm having Western meal, I use my fork and knife. So utensils are there for you to use and uh, for any kind of food that you, you know, that you have. Okay, less of my, of my, my personal life, but I want to hear from you. So Roji. Yes. And if yes, any yes. one of you, can I just say, if any one of you want to be part of the deep network, we are an of inclusive. Course, of course, we are. Yeah, we are like to. Yeah. Uh, I like to have a part in the deep network because it's very. Yes, yeah. and, certainly. Uh, you yeah. can contact me, and I'm, I think everybody you, wants it. Yes. No, I know, but this is not. You know, I, sometimes you use the word recruits. I don't use the word recruits because yes. recruit is used in military. So we are not in the business of recruiting people, but we are. We have an open invitation. So any one of you would like to be part. We are an inclusive group, and to be part of. And this is not. We're not. You know, it's not a marketing exercise. We we believe very strongly that uh, this is the role that we can play in terms of imparting some of the knowledges that we have in terms of our respective fields. And from almost all the ones who presented in, with a few exceptions, they are members of the DEEP network. So Gloria is the deputy director. Jenny was one of the founding members. Mikalas is you know, uh, also an active member. Joanne is a member as well, not as active, but you know we have almost everyone, Gigio, uh, Jenny and Jenny and Carlos, they run a circle called the Decolonial Peace Circle. So, you know, they're all, and I think, uh, are you also, uh, Sarah, are you part of the? I can't. Uh, I joined in June, but I can't go to any. No, I, yeah, I can't remember who is in the group with Rene. Savi, Savi. I wanted to join again on September. Okay, okay, good. So I know that there are a number of you who belong to the, to the, how do you pronounce it? Sem, how do you pronounce seed in? Semillero. 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 Okay. Anyone else? Um, Ayesha, do you want to to say something? It's okay, uh, Alberto, I already wrote in the chat box just right. some things that I'd like to share to everybody. Sure. And, and uh, in terms of uh, keeping yourself, you know, putting bread uh, on the table or roti or whatever you have, you know, chapati, if you, if you are concerned about that in terms of the financial aspects of it, uh, go and look for someone who is who has lots of money and just do not know what to do with the money. Yeah. You know, talk to Christina because Christina has- <laughs> No, it's supposed to make money. <laughs> yeah, talk, talk to, Christina has got lots of contacts with the corporate world, so, you know. <laughs> I have tried very, very hard to get out of that world and I promised myself not to go back. But if I cannot just stay in the field, I have to go back and that actually will be my misery. So I hope you'll tell me to get in the field and never to, leave, to go back. Don't go back to the field, but just get those people who are in the field to come to us. Don't you worry, that's what I will do. 
Huh? Okay, anyone yeah. else would like Adebola to say? Adebola and Irfan, please. Okay, Adebola, please. Yeah, thank you, Prof. We continue to appreciate you. But I want to ask you one very simple question. Do you have plan to visit Africa? I have big plans. I because I must I must confess another thing. I've never been to Africa. And mm. what happened was uh, when I was in the university, I organized uh, uh, I can't remember the exact. I think it was Congo for Africa. Uh, no, Cong Conga for Africa. So what we did was, uh, no, sorry, it was Conga for Congo. Because at that time, there were problems in Congo. And what happened uh, in Australia, there is this very negative uh, image of Africans. So uh, I organized, I used to, I got a group of university students and we organized this project, which was called, you know, Conga for Congo, and then we held a conga dance around the university just to, uh, you know, to kind of educate the and and to challenge the prevailing image that people had of Africans. But when I was a director of the Center for Dialogue, I organized a, a project that was called the African Dialogue, and the whole idea was to have invite uh, African communities within uh, Australia and to to you know to organize sort of dialogues with governments in and once again is to challenge the the image that people have and the images that um, that people have of Africa that it's a poor continent and they show you know Africans uh, especially like World Vision and all these organizations they show starving African kids in order to you know in order to get money for their own projects right so what I wanted to do was to challenge those images and I say that, you know, Africa is, is mm -hmm. not a country of poverty. In fact, in, uh, Africa is a very rich country that has been impo impoverished. And, you know, Walter Rodney's work, I always talk about this, how Europe under, <laughs> underdeveloped Africa. And so this is, you know, what we do is we try to challenge those kinds of images. But I was sitting, uh, you know, since I was the organizer, I was sitting next to several of the African uh, high commissioners and ambassadors when we organized this. And we invited um, the former prime minister of Australia, Kevin Rudd, to, to launch the African dialogues. So Kevin Rudd comes and then one week later, he becomes the prime minister again. So I was sitting with Kevin Rudd and we were sitting with an amb ambassadors and then so the, the Ghanaian ambassador asked me, so uh, Professor Gomez, uh, you know, have you been to Ghana? And then so I said, I just smiled at him and said, actually, I've never been to any country in Africa. So he turns to the, uh, he turns to his uh, staff and he said, you have to do something to get this man to come to, to Ghana. But I've never had the opportunity. So I hope. But having said that, uh, Adebola, Bola, I don't have to go to Africa okay. uh, because I don't have to go to Africa because I have people like you and Julius and uh, in these courses. <laughs> Thank you. And, and, and in this world of ours, you know, through at the moment yeah. online, um, there is, you know, no, there is not really necessary, but I, I would love to go just because mm -hmm. uh, I feel that I'm very much in touch with Africa. Thank one you, of my cousins, you. one of my cousins, is a novelist, and he grew up in in Kenya. Sorry, he grew up in Uganda, and he has published a number of novels. And one of it was to it was entitled "The General Is Up," and he forecasted the rise of he forecasted the rise of Idi Amin before my cousin Peter Nazareth got kicked out or Uganda ended up in Britain and then subsequently now it's in the US. So we we have that African connection. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Uh, notwithstanding, we hope to see you one of these uh, days and uh, you'll be giving Chief Stancy title. It's an honor to be giving Chief Stancy title in Africa. 
many head of state would like to receive you, communities, leaders, and so on and so forth. We do really appreciate yeah. you. Please, factor this in your plan. Yeah. <laughs> Adebola, if I go yes, to sir. Africa, if I go to Africa, it's not for me to impart my knowledge, but it's for me yes. to learn. Okay. Because okay. I, yes, there sir. is a lot I have to yes, learn sir. about Africa, and, and yes, sir. Ne never fails to never fails to surprise me every time I read something about Africa. How rich the culture and the and you know the the knowledge and the epistemologies is just incredible. So there's yeah. so much that I still uh -huh. have. Oh. Very good. Yes. Because African is often portrayed as the citadel of conflict all over the world. All yeah, there is. <laughs> yeah, I know there is conflict. But however, we also have to stress the fact that uh, a lot of people in Africa live in peace with one another. You know, so let's, yes, uh, let's not just gloss over the conflict and, and be blinded to it. But um, we also have to focus on the, the fact that there is, you know, this wonderful aspect of, of Africa. Okay. The song and Thank the you, sir. dance, okay. the song and Thank the you, dance prof. is just incredible, yeah? Thank you, Prof. As, uh, I said most... Tarima Kasi Aya again. <laughs> <laughs> summer, summer. And uh, yes, Masari? Yeah, there are some uh, participants that would like to present, Prof. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yes. Yeah, Irfan Khan, I see. Okay, do you want to present Irfan? Yes, uh, thanks, Dr. Gomez. I was uh, listening to your last story, which was very in, 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 uh, influential. I mean, and there was a lot of lesson learned for everyone. So we're just waiting for that time. So yes, I'm ready to present. So if okay. uh, please, the team, please, if, go if, 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 please, uh, uh, Ari, could you please just share that screen, uh, share the screen of my presentation, please? Sigri, Idaf, do you have the file? You send it to the organizer. Yeah. Yes, please, yes. Sir. Wait a moment, sir. Okay. <clears throat> okay, uh, should I start right now? Yes, please. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, uh, my presentation there is, is in two uh, portion. Uh, the one is that the title where I will be reflecting my, uh, I mean, in the paper, all the uh, presenters who have uh, taught us and all the participants who have given insights uh, based on uh, their uh, uh, lesson learned. So I will be presenting that, uh, but before that I wish to uh, show some of the facts and history of the area where the local communities and the conflicts that are perpetuating from last three decades. So the topic that I propose for the upcoming uh, reflection, uh, cultivating culture of peace among the youth through nonviolent communication, peace education, and engaging in dialogue process to strengthen social cohesion. Next, please. Yes, so in terms of if I can define a peace, so peace cannot be maintained through force. It can only be established through mutual understanding, respect. A uh, few questions, uh, it's uh, self-explanatory. How can we cultivate the seed of peace for a future generation at grassroots level? How important are engagement of the various stakeholders living in conflicted communities? And what are the roles that can religious leader, teacher, and community representative play in setting a benchmark to achieve this long-lasting objective? Next, please. Uh, so there are factors that perpetuating the local conflict, especially in our newly merged tribal districts, previously known as part of federally administered tribal areas. So the history is that, uh, that Pakistan basically being in a geographical location where the area has already already and in the past attracted by the major power to extend their sphere of influence like Red Britain, USA, Russia, China in relation to their national interest abroad. So uh, let me share a few of the uh, defects. Successive imperial powers have used their launching passport expedition in the Afghan hinterland. USA so seed of using religion as a whole to, to the Russians, that was the case when uh, they, they were in the 
Cold War era, and uh, they were trying to, I mean, like uh, maintain and uh, dominate the region. Uh, and because of that, uh, Afghan Jihad War back in 1979, when Russia, the former USSR were disintegrated, this whole idea of uh, indoctrination of the uh, jihad, that, that, that has a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, like results. The chicken that has flawed experiment has come to rule in the shape of religious extremism, which they face conflict in the tribal district of Pakistan and beyond. Conflict and religious extremism uh, in Pashtun society have global political rules that can be traced back to the colonial legacy. Next, please. A uh, major factor that is responsible, that responsible for conflict perpetuation in this area. So I have split that in uh, two. A lead trigger, that is the bad leaders, the state level. I mean, that the state policy and doctrines, world system theory, human error and their decision. Uh, like the like world system theory, we say that foreign periphery, Washington dictate plan about to do more war on terror and different things. In the past, they used to uh, utilize Pakistan as a transit state to war against the uh, fight against the Russians through uh, Mujahideen. Uh, bad neighborhood that unfortunately, these are the terms which I have taken from one of the book written by uh, Michael Edward Brown, uh, International Dimension of Internal Conflicts. So Iran, India, and Afghanistan, we have that uh, neighborhood. Uh, the second thing is the mass trigger. The trust deficit with neighbors, migration and flux, breakup of the positive negotiation channel, uh, uh, whether it is Iran, Af Afghanistan, or India. And unfortunately, we do have that bad domestic problem in our country in, a so in our tribal district, like social inequality, injustice, disparity, lack of opportunity, and the most important is religious intolerance, which is one of the offshoots of the uh, Afghan Jihad War. Uh, next, please. My understanding from uh, this course, uh, I mean, like, which I will be applying all the, uh, the concept that I have uh, learned uh, to replicate in the reflective paper based on the same topic. So some of so the things that I want to do uh, for this uh, communal level conflict, especially in the tribal belt, uh, where the Sunni Shia and the Christ uh, Sunni Shia, uh, Sikh and Hindu, they are living side by side. So. The first thing will be an institutional building that increased institutional capacity to supply conflict sensitive and peace education. That is very important to understand at the institutional level. Then the second one is the individual capacity development, increased capacity of the children from a very, I mean, childhood, parents, teachers, community members to uh, peace, psychology, peace psychological tools like inner, inner peace, how we can engage people so that they can have uh, all those uh, um, uh, important things to know, uh, empathy, love, care, effective and positive use of media, which is a very important thing in our culture because it really transforms the minds. It creates images of people about, I mean, uh, any issue. So that is very important uh, for, for a reason to prevent, reduce and cope with conflict and uh, promote peace. Um, it's yes. uh, already five minutes. Can you make quick your presentation, please? Sorry. Can I? What? Yeah, it's already five minutes. Uh, oh. Can you quick make a quick your presentation? Okay, please. please. Uh, languages development at the role of religion leadership to promote the interfaith harmony. Next, please. The last slide. The last slide. It's delay on the internet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Peace can only last when human rights are respected, where people are fit and where individuals are, nations are free. It is one of the Dalai Lama, Tibetan spiritual leader quote. So uh, let's talk peace, listen to peace and discuss peace. I extend my gratitude to the ICCTP team, as Alberto Gomez, professor, and all the invited presenter and the participant that has enriched uh, our understanding and their, through their variable uh, comments. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you so much, uh, Irfan, for the presentation. Pa Irfan. Okay. Uh, shall we go to the next presenter, Rob? Uh, Please do. Uh, the next one from, let me check. Dr. Mohammed Yassin. Yeah, yeah Dr. Dr. Mohammed Yassin. Yassin.
Hello? Is Dr. Muhammad Yasin here? He must be praying. He's not in right now. Okay. Or oh, anyone uh, else that has not presented yet want to, like, you know, to use the time to present the reflective paper summary? Maybe we can open open up for yeah while well, while well waiting more, if yeah, yeah. Any, any more comments from anyone. I just wanted to say to everyone, thank you kindly. Um, it has been a pleasure sharing with you all of these beautiful examples of peace. And I just wanted to briefly say, if you ever want to come to the Caribbean, um, that I will offer it to a second home. You can visit anytime. And I thank you all. Thank you, Professor Alberto. He knows he's one of the best professors I've ever had. He's very, 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 I can say as many very as I would like to, but he's a very, <laughs> he's an excellent professor. And his deconstructive analysis and the way how he engages with topics and constructs, it is to be commendable. And I do thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Nikita. Thank you so much for that. Anyone wants to say anything? Uh, yes, sir. Go on, go on. Someone is here. It's Christina, yes. I think someone is back. I just wanted to say, when are we going to meet again? When is uh, ICCT, the August 2021, going to meet up again? Um, any, anyone? We, we hope that, uh, well, the, the plan is to, to hold ICCTP again uh, next year. So we, we are just, that's, that's the plan. Um, and after this year, uh, with the wonderful participants that we have had in this course, um, I think it has inspired us to, to look at uh, running ICCTP again next year. But we hope that, uh, we really hope, you know, that the, this crazy, perilous, you know, perilous times of the COVID pandemic ends soon. Uh, not just for us, but I'm talking more of the, sadly, the people who have suffered, you know, the consequences of the pandemic. So, uh, if that happens next next year, uh, we we'll probably look into organizing ICCTP in Indonesia. So that's that's our our plan. Uh, but you know we cannot these days plan in advance. Um, now the other thing is that uh, we I think uh, Masari is probably gone to pray as well, but when he comes back. But there are a few things, um, administration that we need to sort out. So next week, as we talked about, you'll receive uh, a Google form for the various things that we talked about, you know, if you recall. Uh, and we also would, uh, we are also in the process of we, we felt that we should also evaluate this course so that uh, to give you the opportunity to, to provide you know, feedback to us. Uh, if you're going to offer this course next year, um, we, we have to look into the mistakes that we have made and the errors and how we can 
improve from th on them and how we can you know offer uh, a better course next year so that's one uh, so the evaluation be sent out uh, but not just the negative aspects of the course so if you've got anything positive to say please do so because we want to use the the positive remarks the feedback from all of you uh, to persuade the the people with with money to support uh, uh, to support this this course next year, not not for us, but the money is so that we can provide like scholarships and airfares and you know things accommodation like that for the participants. Yes, Inas. Albert, would you consider of um, having a course for youth? Yes. Yeah. You know, like Isaac's yeah. age, you know, the high schools, yeah. you know, the teenagers. Certainly. You know, you should focus on the, the teens group, you know. Mm. You know, to create more so that we have more bigger peace tribe, you know. You know, because we are oh. in this era and they are the new era. So this could be your project in us. And huh? uh, <laughs> 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 you can, you can, uh, you can start a kind of a project for the youth. And um, we will all help out in any way we can in terms of supporting. It's so where's my that, tribes? <laughs> it's just the yeah the, the the issue that we have is because there's so much time in the in the day for us to be you know, and there are so many things that I wish I can organize, but unfortunately, uh, I have to be realistic as well. Um, and because I want them to be more proactive, you know, towards the real thing. Sure. You know, I think the, yeah, I think the youth, they, like the camp that we organized, uh, the Indonesian youth camp, it was just amazing. All these young uh, school kids, we brought them together in the camp and we, we actually went through, we taught them various things like the importance of dialogue and and non nonviolent communication. So we provided all these kinds of of training sort of courses. So yes, of course it is. Uh, you know, any one of you can can organize it. And if, if you need assistance with the resources or pointing you to direct to the direction of what might be some of the. Uh, I, I should also say that you know when when we design this course, it's not just like taking what is the conventional course. So that's why I said that in this course, we wanted it to be in many ways like cutting edge. So in many of the peace studies courses, you will not find uh, a session on love, for example. You will not find a session on decolonizing peace. You will not find a session on peace ecology, for example. Like peace ecology is, is you know, new. It's just like, fresh out of the oven, as it were, you know? So you, you'll find that a lot of the things that we have covered, um, and because it's, uh, it's a course that's offered in Indonesia, you will not find, uh, you know, Mas Idam talking about the, his, his research, or you won't find, uh, you know, Bu Aisha talking about the work that she has, the, the marvelous work that she has done in, in Mindanao and you know Aceh, so that's why you know I think we we wanted to ensure that we move away from the the typical sort of topics that are being covered. So like nonviolent communication, peace education, conflict transformation, uh, peace circles. These are all very common in peace studies courses, but the others aren't. And I think very few peace studies courses. I can't think of any that you would have got uh, Joanne Lim, you know, giving an approach that is very different. So that's what we wanted to also aim for, you know. We wanted to, in a sense, that was our goal. We wanted to provide a kind of like cutting edge approach to, to peace study. To make, to make us different, eh? distinguish from a distinction from the other courses that they offer. 
Anyone wants to say anything? One thing, Prof. Yeah. Of course, you can. Yeah, this is open. It's open. One of the participant asked about submitting reflective paper, Prof. Oh yes, of course. Uh, so actually, uh, if you go to my class and you go to our uh, page at the bottom, there is this session sixteen. We have already uh, prepared a reflective paper submission. So let me just go here. Yes. So if you can see these options here, you just need to click it. And then, uh, oh, because this is my, uh, because I'm the presenters here, you can see uh, some option, you know, to submit your uh, paper. Okay. Or if you have any difficulties, just let us know. You can send even through email. If there is any, like, you know, um, difficulties on your side. Okay. Just let us know that we will be happy to assist. Okay. And it will be on the 13th, you know, the deadline, August. Yeah. Are there any more questions about administrative stuff or? Yes. Uh, not a question, just a comment. Um, first of all, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, your team has been wonderful. The cooperation sort of, you know, you, the entire team has been very prompt. First of all, I would like to say thank you to each one of you for having patience with us. You know, all of us would shoot questions, you know, queries, and everything would be uh, tackled in such a smooth way. And, you know, and uh, humble plus uh, sort of engaging. You know, it's, it was one of the most interesting courses over the years I have, um, you know, done. I am feeling as if uh, I enjoyed my kindergarten, that I'm back in the kindergarten with my favorite teacher because the kindergarten was the most engaging time. You know, it was not that we are just at the receiving and we're just monotonously listening. Each of the resource person ensured that we are learning, we are indulged, we are not just passive listeners. So thank you, all of you, for organizing such engaging sessions. And I would say that each one of you are, have takeaways from her. You know, it was not just a lecture series or another webinar or workshop or course, which we did just for the hype of it. So we all are connecting and how, you know, I'm already sort of feeling it's a circle. We circle already, we have connected amongst each other. So thank you. All the participants also, they've been very cooperative, you know, encouraging for each other. Plus one thing I would like to definitely associate myself, if not full-time, because I'm already in a full-time profession. So maybe as a volunteer or part-time on some projects, whatever comes away anyway, or I can help anybody. So I'm always there. So it was very, very happy learning, I would say. You know, I had so much to think about it, we think, you know, it's learning is about the learning also, especially I will never forget how you said that sustainable development has to really be really, um, you know, thought over again and how I have to now sort of take this to the budding journalist. That would be my task and challenge, how I can use these things and actually practically imbibe them in my lessons and uh, projects and field work which we are doing. So thank you uh, everyone. On the behalf of participants, we would like to congratulate each one of you from the organizing team. Thank you. That's all I wanted to say and I'll be happy to connect ever. You know, personally, as friends, as uh, scholars, as researchers, as peace builders, whatsoever. So, thank you. Thank you so much for those very kind comments. Prof, I can see Irfan Khan raise his hand. Oh, okay. Yes. Please, yeah. Please go thank ahead. You. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, very quick. Two short questions and one comment. Uh, Please, if you could uh, consider these two topics, the social cohesion and uh, interfaith harmony. 
This is very important because living in a Muslim country and we have a diverse religious sectarian um, uh, groups. So that will be very uh, important so that one can reflect and at the same time understand new things uh, uh, in other from other countries. Secondly, um, I have no idea whether do we have to mark for this uh, peer assessment form, evaluation form for everyone because during break and the uh, prayer break, we miss a lot and early in the morning, we just a yeah. couple of months. So that's the, lastly, uh, I would uh, like to thank you for your uh, time, uh, professional insights, and uh, all the presenters there have really enriched our understanding on these various topics. And we do hope that the pandemic uh, ends and next year, inshallah, when we all hopefully alive and we meet face to face. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Irfan. Yeah. Is anyone else here? And, and thank you for your, your suggestion is on uh, cohesion and harmony, inter, especially interreligious uh, harmony. I think it's important to keep in uh, mind. Prof, I just want to hear the voices from Blakang Tabi. The voices from where, sorry? Blakang Tabi. Tabe, the organizing. Oh, sorry. Okay. I, I, yeah, Tabe, which is, uh, you should explain what it means. Organizing committee. Is this? <laughs> okay. Is there anyone else? Um, uh, the, 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 word is, Hello? the word is salute. May I, uh, Afifa wants to salute. Yes, please go ahead, Tuba. Uh, uh, I'm feeling very sorry about myself because last one hour my light went off and you're all talking and you're all speeches. I'm not there to listen to it because of electricity issue. I will listen to it in the recording. But uh, Mr. Fansan was saying that interfaith harmony. So in Pakistan, me, under the organization of Awam in Faisalabad and under the organization of Peace and Education Foundation, PEC, we are doing uh, interfaith, interfaith harmony. It is uh, like uh, between uh, making bridge between Madrasa students and university students. We create a space for their dialogue about democracy about peace, about Islamic way of government and Western way of government. We did so many projects like this. So I want to share this. If anyone wants to contribute from Pakistan on these type of bridges between university students and Madrasa students to de-radicalize both sides because university students are also radicalized about the Madrasa students and Madrasa students are also about radicalized about the way of thinking of university students. So we are making bridges and we are trying to making bridges between two different schools of thoughts in Pakistan. So I'm there for any assistance if you need and anyone needs. And I'm really happy to have you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? I have raised my end, so I was please, trying uh, to. Dilam, please, <laughs> Dilamar, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking what to say. Uh, I guess uh, most of the participants have already uh, say thank you to the ICCTP, but I would say uh, uh, we are welcome to ICCTP again and again instead of thank you. And I hope ICCTP and the all organizer committee will be looking. To, towards every participant in the similar way. So I, 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 uh, I, I have been thinking of uh, being a part of the development sector, which is, uh, which is of course, uh, is uh, despite of the fact that it is a kind of distraction in one mean, uh, we have to deconstruct, but as per my understanding uh, that what has been pinching me from last few years, uh, that that was that uh, I have been working in development sector almost for 14 years 
right now but from uh, uh, when i completed my 9 to 10 years in development sector then i i try to uh, questioning myself uh, despite of having any big academic background uh, uh, good academic background on the critical perspective because unfortunately we we i i guess uh, the friends in south asia will agree with me we do not have a, a rich content in our education system which made us critical towards thing that is around us even the actions that we do in our daily life we we live in the society where in the capital you might any one of you might have heard in, in, in during the eid days the one of the lady it was beheaded just because she regretted uh, to get married with the the boy so we we live in a, a such a, a, a maybe i i might i might be a, some people might feel it bad but a brutal uh, and inhuman society so these these are not uh, for me it was not just a course to listen few people and to take one two three tools and then apply it in my professional life and that is more than enough and then i should say thank you and i i also expect someone to thank me because i have applied but it is beyond it because i i i don't uh, i don't know for how long i will be living but these these uh, these are something like that refresh my memory that i have to be human being i have to be not to be violent i have to respect women i have to 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 communicate uh, with decency with people because we uh, we it is not just a pakistani society but it might be the entire world where the capitalism and imperialism has it uh, grounded their roots and they have made everything uh, uh, they have consciously made conflicts around the communities that they can based on those, those conflicts which exist in the society that the capitalism can grow up more and more and more so for me it was something beyond uh, course but uh, more uh, toward that i i i i uh, challenge my behavior and i i i try to more uh, to to be in, to be human that i can uh, be good with nature um, uh, in the in this all uh, 14 years of my development sector i have never heard about uh, the the stuff that was related to the ecological aspect of uh, the nature but it is i i should also pay thank you to my wife so she she is the one who when i when i got married she she tried to to teach me that it is not the only human being who are living in the in, the, in on the on the planet there are something more i should reflect on that as well so then we started planting trees and we 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 in every aspect of our own uh, uh, circle of influence whatever we do we try to do something which is not harmful to the nature as well and neither to the human being so uh, we are welcome again to icctp and see you all any time anywhere in the world because uh, despite of virtual world thank you thank you so much uh, dilabar and i sh- i keep repeating myself but dilabar is one of the deep members and he and and najiba they they run the empathy uh, circle and uh so dilawar i want to invite you to you know to set up a new sector rather than development sector call it the regeneration sector uh, i i have been in the pain from last few years <laughs> so that's what that was one of the reason that i reconnected myself to school the academic uh, perspective yeah. uh, so now from last one and a half year i i have been trying to to read books and to go for the courses that i can uh, i can reconnect myself to the critical perspective Excellent. so i would love to be part of this uh, uh, world that's wonderful sorry okay. for, yeah sorry for uh, i can see here that dr mohammad yasin is already yeah. here for presentation so that that would be our last presentation yeah right? and also if it is okay maybe like we can also give like one minute to meet for our organizing team to say something <laughs> luna and of course yeah. of course we want them to right, say okay. something that was that's on our agenda okay <laughs> good <laughs> uh 
Dr. Muhammad Yasin, are you here? On your uh, yes, yes. Uh, yes uh, uh, I am sorry. Okay. I am here. Uh, I have to travel about 400 kilometers uh, to reach uh, my residence. I am just coming in after the uh, Juma prayer. I join it now. And I am sorry that uh, you have to uh, wait for it. Uh, should I uh, start? Uh, you can start now. Thank you. Okay, I am uh, sharing my screen. Uh, just a minute, sir. I'm going to uh, share the screen. As I just uh, read stuff from the yeah. oh. but it will take just a few seconds. It will take just a few seconds for sharing the screen. Okay. <laughs> While it's opening, uh, I just may say uh, just short introduction until it's open. As I, uh, my name is Dr. Muhammad Yasin. I am assistant professor in Islamic studies and head academic outreach National Textile University, Faisalabad. And I am going to present. My topic is the role of media. in peace building. As we know, as we know, that media play a very important role in every aspects of life, especially in peace building. At first stage, we can say that media is basically a hidden power behind any issue. It can play a positive role and also a negative role in peace building or destroying any nation. The present day is known I think there is some issue. Yes, and uh, screen sharing is not uh, I'm trying. Yes. Okay. At first step, then we can say that media can play a very positive or negative role in building peace or destroying it. The present age is known as the media age and this presentation will highlight some role of the media in peace building. 
first of all i will clear that what is media several medium or channels used in an organized fashion to communicate information to groups of people as a service to the public it is said by howard and what is peace building peace building attempt to encourage development of structural condition attitude ban modes of political behavior that may permit peaceful stable and ultimately prosperous social nation and there are some aspects which are used especially by media for peace building the first one is that it analyzes the conflict which is present in any country or in any area then the face saving and constant building is created among the people and then counteracting misperception if there is found in any way it is removed and then the confidence is built among the nation and then a channel is communicate between different parties if they are creating some hurdles or some problems at any place and then the issues identifying and try to find out its solution and after that the media encourage the balance and the power and then frame and define the conflict and ultimately they find out a solution for it and what is the challenges which a media especially we can say that in conflict prevention and peace building first of all the media create link between freedom and human rights and then it create fragile the democracies and remove the poverty ethnic differences and then the it play a very important role for the building and a good political environment okay thank you because it's a very uh, limited time and it's very difficult for me to uh, develop all these points in uh, five minutes okay thank you dr yasin for your presentation we really appreciate that uh, prof gomez shall we hear like you know one two sure uh, okay from the scatter yeah. area no yeah let's <laughs> let's go things. yeah one two yeah. point okay luna devia you want to say something luna devia zul zikri these are the people behind the skin but they did many things so that this program can be like you now implemented or running well <laughs> okay let me so let me introduce each one of them and i before i do that i want to say that this is perhaps the best team that i've ever worked with they are absolutely incredible so it's been a pleasure such a pleasure working with every one of them so let me start with uh, luna do you want to say something luna uh, i'm mute hello everyone my name is luna uh, i just want to tell you guys that i hope you everyone here enjoy these sessions all of the sessions until today and I do really hope that we can meet someday offline, like directly, and things should get better next time. I think that's all. 
So good luck, everyone. Terima kasih, Luna. Now, Zikri, okay, who is it, next? Um, Zikri. Zikri is next to Luna. Yeah. Okay, sir. Um, actually, not much. Uh, but um, we would like to uh, clarify and say that uh, as a organi uh, as a committee and organizer, we do listen to you guys and we do listen to the speakers too because yeah. uh, we need to um, be ready and prepare in case Dr. Uh, Prof. Gomez or Pak Ari or Mas Idam need to make a breakout rooms or prepare a break, uh, break session and in order to do that, we need to listen every single of the speakers, per se. <laughs> and we do learn something too, actually, in the in these courses. Every 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 course we listen to. And um, actually, the interesting part is, uh, uh, besides of the um, um, on uh, pandemics issues, well, in this Zoom meeting, we do feel like uh, closer than uh, it used to be. Uh, uh, I think that's all. Am I too much talking? No. <laughs> uh, and no. Thank you for you guys. I think Zikri is the IT man, bro. We, we IT man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Zik Zikri is the one that takes care of all the technical aspects. The time differences. <laughs> so, yeah, we are. Okay. Sorry. Then we have uh, at the bottom screen. We have Sasha. <laughs> Sasha, silakan. Hey. Hello everyone, my name is Sasha and um, I get so many uh, knowledge from the speakers and also the participants and I hope you also enjoy this course for the past two weeks and I hope that we can stay safe and stay healthy so that um, in the future maybe we can meet offline uh, whether it is in Indonesia or in your country. And yeah, that's all from me. Terima kasih, Sasha. And then next is Sasha, is Davia. <laughs> yeah, hello everyone, my name is Davia. And I'm the person behind of the WhatsApp group and also the email, as usual. And, um, I just really like your enthusiasm in this course because like everyone can join the Zoom even if you are in different time zone. But uh, yeah, I like your effort. Thank you. Thank you so much, Davia. And then uh, Zulfan. So, hey, hello, guys. Uh, Nice to see you. Uh, my name is Ulfan, and the music man was Zikri. <laughs> so Zikri was the, the full man operator for all this uh, bit uh, this wonderful week. And I also would, would like to say thank you to all the participants, to Mr. Uh, Professor Alberto, to Mas Idam, to Bari, and all participants. Because okay, <laughs> Zikri, you have a lot of love from the participants because playing the very good music along this week. And uh, I'm really uh, happy to see you guys and. I will call you today. See? Okay. Now Zikri have a lot of friends. And uh, this has been being a really good, wonderful week for, for the ICCDB. I'm really grateful having a good team. Also, all my friends, uh, my lecturers, uh, my professor, and all of you, we hope can be good friends in the next futures. And uh, I know I have no something that to, to say, but uh, you are wonderful. You are amazing. And uh, we hope we could be better uh we have uh, another better meeting in the next day thank you so much thank you and masari i've said something about when it no is that's it right yeah we don't have any more mm. so the final thing i want to say is that uh I couldn't think of any better team, as I mentioned, uh, to work with in this running this um, project. Uh, but you know, working with with Mas Mas Ari you know, is amazing, and as well as working with Mas Idam, because uh, Idam and and I we have worked together for quite a while. Uh, I should also point out to all your uh, to all the participants, uh, Idam's close friend is Johan Galto. 
So when Galtung was in, in Indonesia, uh, I was there as well because I, I knew Galtung from previously. And, and uh, yeah, so it was, we won't say anything more, but it was good fun um, with, you know, Idam and, and, and Galtung and I on our trip to the museum. One one thing, uh, you know, Idam and I, uh, Idam and I are working this university, and then you know, just feel free if you have in, like no initiation, if you have any ideas, you know, as long as long as we can support you in any way possible, then we will be lovely. Mm. This is this is for the participants. Eh? Yeah. Okay, and and finally, uh, I just want to say. You know, all all of you have been absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, and you you have made this whole course what it is, and you know it has been such a joy and a privilege and a pleasure to be uh, for the last two weeks to be. It has gone quickly, uh, but it was, uh, you know, it, it was something for us to treasure. So thank you so much for being amazing fantastic uh, participant. So on that note... Uh, for lifting sorry. up our energy levels every time. Sorry? I'm saying thanks to you for lifting up our energy levels every time. Yeah. You didn't let the, you know, you didn't let the aura go down. Thank you so much for that. No, you're most, yeah, most welcome. So on that note, uh, we won't say goodbye. We will just say See you later wherever we are, but please do keep in touch. You have my email address. You also have my WhatsApp and just let's, you know, keep in touch. And I wish you all the very best. Take care, be safe, especially at these times of our lives. And, um, and till we meet again. Can we play this song, please? Before we go, can we play Yeah, sorry, Christina, you wanted to say something.